five and then say, say it again, Jay. Say it again. I think that we're the greatest people of all time. It's not as funny. Wow, you're context. so vain. It's not as funny Ooh, without the context that That's made the point. The context is, that I decided to say. You asked Jay oh, there to is say context. It again, set him up. To be like, the context oh, is how... us and all of time. And yes. I, th I think that's enough context. True. That, that's true, actually. Hmm. That's a good point, Rex. Right? Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. We're pretty yeah. great. It's, yeah, I mean, apparently. There's two people saying that now, and the seem to agree. So if all three of you think it's true, then it's probably true. That's a sample size of three. Yeah. Yeah, but that's 100% win rate. I was about to say 100% yeah. out of 100% of the 100% of people. That's a lot of percents. Yeah. It's basically yeah. an objective fact. I would say so, yeah. At that point, yeah, like, it's, it's kind of inarguable. Yeah, without any level of erring, it is representative of reality, that's true. My, um, my Black Widow video got demonetized, apparently, for using slurs, but I don't remember using any slurs in that video. Um, uh, neurodivergence is not a slur yet, right? <laughs> it will be, probably, but... And, and, then... And you just replace it with the next one that'll become a slur. I, feel like I said someone was a wombo time. brain, but I don't know if that counts. Uh, wombo is not an officially recognized <laughs> slur. I hope it not. Sound right at all? I don't want wombo to go. Yeah. It's actually pretty offensive that it would be considered a slur. That that says more about the person who calls it a slur than the than the person who said it. You know. I agree. I mean, what's your what's your problem with wombo? You know, fucking hell. Wombo people deserve representation Wombo. and um, yeah, I mean, elimination. They've suffered ah. enough, all right. Elimination, no Rex, please. No, not elimination. That's an extermination. God damn it! What are you doing? Stop it! One... No, we're committing Wombo like side. This? No, off it. They were gonna. It's gonna be the the new Wombo cost. No. I'm terrified and scared and all of the other things too. Can you... Can you appeal that uh, decision, or is that <coughs> just done? Not if you're a Wumbo. Because no, <laughs> you'll sorry. have bias. Yeah. yeah, you will be biased <laughs> if you're a Wumbo. We need to get a Wombo third party. Bias. Alrighty. Um, I guess here we go. Um. All right. Let's yeah. Go. Who knows what we're in for? Hello, all my massive N words. Praiseth be the chickeneth. Also, high ranks. Hello. Yes, praise of B. Hey there. Just finished the Unbridled Catastrophe. Congrats on 150 as well. Also, have you guys talked about Invincible? I've been out of the loop. No, we haven't. No. So we still have haven't seen it. Any of us watched that? <laughs> no. Mm. I don't want to, really. And, and to this day, people are battling over whether or not it should be considered good. And we're just sitting here like, you well, guys, you guys go, go ahead. I feel like more people were saying it was good before... Now more people saying it's average to bad. Yeah, yes. I've been noticing that trend developing as that. well. And so what are we to make of this? Hmm. I feel like that means it's probably bad, but... Uh-oh. Right. It used to be the greatest, most amazing, incredible superhero material that's, uh, yeah. that, that's been made. And now, slowly but surely... Hmm. Yeah. Now we're not so sure, yeah. Oh, very interesting. Um, I'm so down for ceiling tile reviews. I think that you referenced that right that. at the beginning yeah, we... of 150, yeah. Yeah, well, it must be, because if, if this is where we're starting, yeah. But I do re I do recall the ceiling tile reviews. I feel I could decently review ceiling tiles. Yeah, if if, if you both are interested, we, we could get that going. I, I don't see why not. I mean, you're a big fan of ceiling tiles, right? I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm a big fan. But, you know, mm. I, I, I dabble in ceiling tile uh, connoisseurie. connoisseurie. Uh, let me ask you this, though. Are you a big fan of big fans? Mm. Um, Are you a what, ceiling like tile of big fans? Giant fans? I go, I, I like I like big ceiling fans. They're really useful in keeping things cool without using too much energy. We're, we're environmentally conscious in, in the green, in the world of green. Now lines up. I've, the word green gets associated with, uh, with with environmentally aware stuff a lot of the time, so I can see yeah, how that Because yeah. mm -hmm. grass, that's right. Because grass is green, and the the grass is the environment. I mean, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Can't mold be green too and snot? 
Uh, and algae. Well, I guess algae, you know, it serves a purpose, right? In this yeah, yeah. It actually, it does. I don't even know why I brought up algae. Algae is incredibly important to the <laughs> environment. It's really important. Three years already. Damn. Thanks for providing the best content on YouTube and here's for another 50 episodes. Love you mutually, Fringled, and High Rags. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Um, happy 150, boys. Been watching since the Captain Marvel saga, and even though I tried to save those for my work week, I've always had a good time. Well, yeah, hopefully we can uh, make the work week a little better. Yeah. And already, we have ones from this stream coming in that I'm now going to bop, bop between. <laughs> the first one is, um... Everyone enjoying Smud Boy's Bizarre Adventure? <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, if enjoy is an is a word that you can use to describe it, you know. Fascinating feels like a more. I'm still not 100% clear on how it started. What was it, Jay? What what did what what did the thing? So, um, the the, the quartering made a tweet, being like, oh, I don't know who she is. She's shitting on the fans of Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. Bebop right? mm -hmm. the, the um, plays the person, yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that she brought up was like, um, oh, I'm sorry that like I don't have tits as big as the anime, right? Right. And I'm like, hmm, I think that's a fairly reasonable reason to shit on people, if, if they're saying that. Were people yep. saying that? That her tits weren't big enough? I imagine that, that probably someone said that. Somebody, I, yeah, I, I, I could imagine somebody said people, it, but yeah, I, I, can I can't see it yeah, being yeah, a common okay. sentiment that people are like, yeah, yes, this is Yeah, because I've well. seen the pictures and she just doesn't really look like But of course, anyway, adaptation, um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Smudboy quote tweets it with like, um, it's fine to critique the proportions of someone. Because, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm really, um, my brain is fuzzy. I've just been vaccinated. Um, and then, so, he, he, like, fundamentally, the thing is, okay, so he claims, like, for one thing, that he never said anything about, like, oh, he, he never said that it's okay to say, the actress is a bad decision because her breasts are too small. But like, I can distinctly show you a tweet where I say to him, um, I don't think it's okay for like, I don't think it's a valid criticism that an actress's breasts are too small. And he he says, I disagree. And I'm like, it's, it's, it's all like, um, it, it's just all like, okay, like maybe, the, maybe that's not what you meant point, to say, but it's what you said. Maybe if the point of the character was like that she had really big mommy milkers, just oh, big yeah, old yeah, fucking yeah, like, tits. There's you know, always, and that was like, the potential that something's important. Well, yeah, and if, and if your point is strictly they are smaller than they are in the original content, therefore adapted differently from what they were or whatever, it's just like, I guess you can say that. But the second you say, like, that's a flaw, you'd be like, uh oh. <laughs> uh, and he, he kept saying shit like, um, acting is optional when compared to, like, looking like the character. Oh. And the thing is, the example he used as well was, um, like, he never. He never said, like, for fucking ages, he never said, well, it's not, like, boobs, you know, that that doesn't really matter. But, like, you know, you gotta look at least something like the character. Like, he, he kept saying, like, I kept saying, like, so it's okay for, like, so you think it's okay for someone to be, like, critiquing someone because their boobs too small? And he's just like, well, yeah. But then he w always went on, was like, I never said anything about boobs. I'm like, yeah, you never said anything yourself about boobs, but you disagreed with people when they said that it's, that's a bad criticism. He went, no, it's not. So it's like, oh. it, it was just a that wild adventure, really you know? Well, wait, but how did it get to rage? <laughs> oh yeah, so how, oh yeah, right, that's that's the whole other part of this. Uh, so someone brings up, like, um, saying, okay, so appearance isn't that important when compared to characterization. In, uh, when, oh, when you, no. Right? <laughs> uh, and, he, and they say, they just use, as a classic example, just a perfectly reasonable example, is like, if they cast a white guy to play Nick Fury, he would still be the same character, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's true. We're all, we all in agreement that that is true. I don't see, well, it would be up to the writers, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they could choose yeah, to, I mean, I mean, eventually they'd probably choose to write him differently because he's got a different actor playing him and they'd work off the talents well, of that actor specifically, but you know. To give you an you example, in Winter Soldier, when the police look at him weird, I think he said, doesn't he like make a comment that's, um, like he's aware that he's black sort of thing? I would hope he's aware he's black. My point is that um, if you had a white guy 
then that dialogue might but, be you know, different. That, 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 I guess that one line would have changed. Yeah, no, I, I'm say, I'm not saying anything would absolutely at all need to change, but um, yeah. Um, but if and, anything changed, it would be on the basis of character writing, not anything to do with their immutable characteristics. Yeah, so the thing is that you can... There are loads of ways you can take that if you disagree and be like, well, yeah, no, the character wouldn't change, but, like, um, his appearance is still an important aspect of the work or whatever, you know? There are loads of places you can take that if, mm -hmm. you, if you want to... If you want to still argue that imper no appearance is really important, it's really important to get it spot on, or it's uh, it's like it's a bad, it's a flaw if you don't. Instead, he just uh, he responds to this person saying, you know, Nick Fury would be um, same character if he was white. He goes, hmm, interesting. So you think that a person's? Well, hang on, no, let me find the quote. <laughs> oh, you would you wouldn't want a straw man. Smudge. No, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to get this wrong. No, you wouldn't want to accidentally assume he said something far better than what he actually said. <laughs> uh, let's have a look here. Um, These 150 uh, Super Jack Ketchups are going great. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Rags. Where is it gone? I can't find it. Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, here it is. So he said, uh, in response, he said, So a character's race says nothing about their behavior? Oof. Okay, then, we're done here. Oh, Oof. Oh, oh, my goodness. Uh, so, that's so. Not, oh, that's not that's something really you say bad. on Twitter.com or anywhere. It's not something you say anywhere, just in the world. Oh, no. <laughs> is, Don't uh, say that's, that. That's one of those a, you desperately you are like. Lost. Explain what you mean, explain what you mean, and make it better than what you just said. <laughs> that was a we that sure was a weird autocorrect your phone did there. Ha 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 ha. He kept bringing stuff up about culture, and he's like, he kept bringing up stuff like, well, you know, Italian people, they speak Italian. So oh. that's, you know, something. They're like, well, okay, so. <laughs> There are people who are Italian who are different there are races. There are people who to aren't white who speak Italian. Like, yeah, Italian is not a race. <laughs> Italian is a, is a nationality. Well, he, he comes like, and he contradicts himself so many times. As then he's like saying, "Well, you know, it's culture. It's not specifically race." But then he was like, "You know, but race. You know, like you've got to. I mean, but someone's race does say stuff about their behavior." No, like, no, one, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. He, he like he can't separate the. Um, but then, oh. then there's uh, the final part. Um, the the quote. Where, um, this is this, this is a fun quote as well. Oh, so that last tweet had 130 quote tweets, uh, but I went and found it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this one also has 100 quote tweets. Someone says to him, uh, actually they say this to someone else, but he's also in the conversation. They say. Um, you can't you um you can't use race as a hint of someone's character, let alone in a work of fiction. Um, platonic, uh, hang on, la laughing my ass off at platonic idealism as a justification for uh, random bigotry on the internet. XD, right? Uh huh. To which Smudboy responds to this person saying you can't use race as a hint of someone's character. He says, "Boy, you're going to love the IQ test results when grouped by race." No. Oh, no. 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 No, you need no, the, no, you need no, the Mario no. death sound. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do it, Smud. Yeah. No. <laughs> Stop it. So oh, that's, well. um, that's the short version of the Smud Boy saga. He went after a lot of different stuff as well in that. But, you know, that's the, that's the highlights, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> you upset me. Bring, Bring it and realize you get up, upset so easily. Jeez. Oh, 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 and all I think I responded to with the, that first one was uh, feels cringe, man. It's like this <laughs> <laughs> the apt expression for that. Well, is it worth it's mentioning why, in case there are some um, oh. further further to a particular what, team? To people in chat. What, like, I guarantee you there's at least one person in chat right now listening to us like, so what? The truth hurts? Is that what you guys are saying? 
So, so the, the first point is, why are you bringing up these statistics with me? Will always be the first question. Like, well, why we have why. In that context, he well, was bringing it up specifically have... to prove that it makes a difference to your character. Yeah, which is, that's the big bad that's right there. Oof. You're not meant to do that. That's, uh, that's what we a call prejudice. Idiot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the thing that I, I thought we all agreed is, like, not right. But, yeah, um, there's always the question of, why did you bring that up? But also, you don't want to open up that can of worms. No. Once you start trying to judge people based on their immutable characteristics, based on the statistical breakdown of what certain groups more often do, like, you just, that's, you don't want to do that. That's, uh, yeah, you're going to find not... some part that you don't like, and it's oh, you, uh, yes, yes, not good. Absolutely. There are, there Plus, are a lot it's of, way yeah. more complicated than you think it is. It's absolutely more complicated because there's all these other factors that are <laughs> pretty much absolutely more relevant than the immutable characteristics of people, which they can't control or change, oh, and they're irrelevant. Someone to actually super chat asking why it's not a good thing to say. Okay, oh, well, that, no. was, that was your answer. Well, D don't do it. Don't bring it up. Yeah. And plus, um, even if it was true, like, it doesn't change who they are or how you should value them as a person. Absolutely. So it's well, not yeah, what if, relevant. What if it turned out that your five favorite people in the world were all actually stupider than five people you despise, like IQ wise? So what does that what does, what that, does that mean to you? Sense? Yeah. Yeah. And turns and out they're what, all black too. IQ? Oh no. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's. In your life, it is not very meaningful to you what people's IQ is. It just isn't. No. I would like Smud Boy to take an IQ test. <laughs> well, again, it always feels like that awkward thing where it's like, man... It, oh, it's just fucking cringe. Like, and don't, yeah, don't if, do that. If, you're, uh, if you go down that road too hard, you'll start being like, Hey, statistically, blah blah blah, therefore blah blah blah, and you're like, no, no stop. Don't conclude fuck all from that. You will, you will eventually yeah. find a statistic that isn't too flattering for your arbitrarily chosen group, and so... Mm. Yep. And these are all arbitrary, like, distinctions. I mean, so, like, Smud Boy is a man, right? So do we want to bring up some, some man crime right, statistics? Right, exactly. Man statistics for, like, just violent crimes. Well, you know, men... It's, it's, uh... We get rid of all the men, violent crime will go down significantly. <laughs> I'm sure there's I'm sure there's someone like saying in chat as well like, oh you know your straw man expert boy he didn't actually say that like we need to act on these statistics like yeah we know we know he didn't say I that I know he didn't say that, but why would you bring it up? Well, if it's just like what, do you want us to just to chew chew over these numbers? Just think about it amongst <laughs> well, yourselves. Again, I feel like we have the context. Like, what's the difference yeah. between a person who is a, is black and isn't or different? skin colors and you're like oh well nothing necessarily and then they're like oh yeah well you should look at the statistics like wow why would i look at <laughs> why <laughs> why <laughs> that's yeah that's some hmm you don't want to go down that road okay, well, you know, the thing, the thi well the thing is he, he, he kept bringing stuff up like well you know uh, race indicates culture and it's not a one-to-one -one relationship with culture but it, it does indicate it, and you're like, well, okay, so what you're arguing there for is that culture determines stuff about your, your, well, the, your behavior. The and best the race, you could do with this know, statement is to be like, if you see someone who looks Hispanic, you could, maybe they're more likely to have Hispanic culture? Well, yeah, you know, like if most, you see someone... Just... It's still not it's useful enough, like, is it? Like, but, well, yeah, but that's like the most you could possibly do with it. Like, if but, you were gambling on a weird gambling game yeah. or whatever. But like, I, like, that's a very strange strange like, game. But that's the big thing. You don't know because you don't know who they are. Well, yeah, then when you that's take the, the argument, important part. I mean, first of all, he also, like, while saying that, he also at the same time disagreed with people saying, well, you know, it doesn't inherently change your behavior. And he's like, well, no. But then he would say stuff like, well, you know, it doesn't. He, he contradicted himself a lot, essentially. He disagreed with people who seemed to agree with him. Uh, well, who, who agreed with, like, the tame version of what he was saying, but not with the um, less tame version. Uh, and there, oh, there was something else as well. <laughs> um, hang on. Brain. Brain engage. Ah, fuck. Um, well, yeah, so, okay, the, the, and the reason he was bringing this up, this up was he was arguing that it's important to get a character's race right when you're um, adapting a work of fiction. It's like, 
Well, no, that's not how that works. Like, because the the implication is, well, a white Nick Fury wouldn't have done that. Well, yeah, those are the great examples of like. <laughs> it's like what? If you panic about a certain character being adapted with the wrong race, it's like. You could call that, uh, you know, a concern in terms of how faithful it's going to be, but at the same time, it's like, this could still be the best adaptation of this character, for all we know. Yeah, it's entirely possible. I guess it depends on your context, right? Like, if you were adapting, like... I, I guess it always feels like, what what do you... what do you? Tr it, it, but it's all in text, isn't it? Like, if you're telling a story that's meant to be about, like, a, a black guy living in, I don't know, like, 1960s America and having issues, but he's white, it's like... I yeah, don't yeah. understand. You'd just be confused, right? You, 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 like, you wouldn't understand what's happening. So yeah. it wouldn't be an adaptation argument, it would be an internal consistency argument. Yeah, there are always situations where whatever attribute of a character can be important to a story that they're in. And like, like you know, when you're working with... I mean, when you're working with, like, imagine a sci-fi set, like, 10,000 years in the future. Um, where, like, okay, someone's race at that point is going to be based in, on entirely different culture to what we have today, so like literally nothing will apply and people will still make these same arguments, right? No, there are no, like, pre-understood notions about like, who of what color comes from like what countries as a general rule, but not as an, like, an inherent rule. You don't rule. know. That's the, 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 that's the big thing is you don't actually know. Well, you don't people know made these complaints about they're from. People made these complaints about The Force Awakens. It was like, Black Stormtrooper. I don't remember what the complaints, complaints were specifically now, but I'm like, man, literally a completely, like, they completely divorced from Earth culture. Like, there's no... I, I don't even know, like, I don't even you know... You have what no point of reference be. to... So yeah, like, there's I guess, no point of reference to that. I guess if, like, if Star Wars was like, just a, a set on Earth, like, 30 years from now, then maybe you could argue that, like, oh, yeah, Finn should have experiences, like, as a black person living on Earth, because that, you know, whatever... Uh, there are experiences that you have as a certain race that you don't have as other races. But, like, you know, when it's completely divorced setting, there are literally At no... At that point, you have to develop your own rules for that universe. Yeah, yeah you I mean, have so to figure out what is the culture tell... in this world. Do, we care... do people in this world care about the races of species, or do they just care about species? Yeah, you know, yeah like, like, as, far, you, as, far as, as far as we can tell in Star Wars, people do not care about, like, your human, like, skin color. People it care, like, what species totally you are. It, it seems to be completely irrelevant in the Star Wars universe, which makes sense to me. Like, I um, imagine that if we got to the point with aliens, that would that would start to become the thing we wouldn't care about. Someone said, uh, right. so what's your opinion on Black Anne Boleyn, then? That's hilarious that they chose to do Black that. Black Anne Boleyn? Yeah, what, the, what the, is, that's a thing they did Anne in, uh, Bur over in Britain. Black Anne... Anne Boleyn is like, oh, um... Anne Boleyn. Oh, 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 the historical thing, I remember yeah. that, yeah. So it's hilarious to make her black. At the same time... A story could still be good, <laughs> like really it good. It could be a good story. That's it just could. fucking weird. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't weird. be historically oh. accurate. It would be. It would be weird. Yeah. So she's yeah, a real sure. person who was white. At the same right, time, so I don't yeah. know enough about that period of British history to be able to tell you that uh, but, Henry VIII would not have married what? a black person and that this could never but, have happened. Yeah. You know? If but you I mean, could have complications like that, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't know enough about the history of that period to be able to say. The story wouldn't have gone the same way if she was if she was black. I mean, I assume there would have been certain differences to how stuff would have gone, because I don't imagine that no one cared in any way, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, at that period in time, yeah, no way. Like that wouldn't have been. But again, it is the it, that has to be the adaptation or like alt history or just different, you know, world, different things. Yeah, like, like if they wanted to tell the same story but simultaneously say, well, black and white makes no difference at that point in their version. Like everybody was you know, all in harmony skin color-wise, then, uh, you can still make- there's yeah. gonna be a lot of good points to gain from that storyline, uh, even if you remove the race element. I feel like if we don't look at it like that, then a lot of alt history gets, like- Absolutely, like, what, yeah. What do we do with that? What happens with Wolfenstein and Inglorious Bastards with, and, and a whole host of stories? With a- with a Jeb pilled on that one, for you, I swear to god, like- We are- Yes, Jeb pilled on adaptation to old history and historical. We're trying to rescue inglorious bastards from yeah. you crazy people. We don't need yeah, to kill it. I don't want to live in. I don't want to live in the world where inglorious bastards is flawed because it's not accurate to what happened in history. Like that's, that's uh, I don't. I don't like that. Yeah, same for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood too. Yes, so and it, uh, yeah, a lot of stories. Assassin's Creed. So here's the thing. I want to. I want to see chat. Um, I want to see how many people are. Um, are mad about Black Anne Boleyn, or, or people who think that, that that shouldn't have been done, right? I want to see 
uh, like a little one in chat if you think that that's that was a bad thing to do. Um, right. Okay. Let's give them a second to type. Oh, okay. Mean, well, like, don't you want reasons bad. though? Like. Also, rather... like no, yeah. No, I'm just I... Like, I mean, so if you think that that's um, I don't know, going to result in a bad work, and like a two if you think no, that's fine. Right. If you think... I mean, I don't even know if I would describe it as fine. It is super fucking weird. I don't know the. Uh, yeah, yeah like, I like. Well, I here's hate the thing. It. Right, here's the thing. For people who said one in chat, I now want to see you put like an A or a B in the chat. Put an A if you've seen this piece of work, and a B if you've not. I doubt any of them have seen oh, it. Not a... Well, yeah, because <laughs> it's like, man, there could be like this could literally just be an alt history story. This could be so many fucking things. I've um, seen a few Bs. I'm seeing a decent number of Bs. I can't remember which one I said was which. <laughs> I think you said A was you've watched it and B isn't you've watched, is that you haven't watched it. Uh, no, sorry, A is you haven't watched it, B is you've watched it, I think. Is that a fair I... people watch wait, this? Wait, am I... No, someone in chat, was it... What was it? Was it A that you haven't watched it or B that you have And B that Hang you... On, someone oh said, my god. Someone said, imagine making Martin Luther King white. Okay, so the difference there Do is it. his race was very important to like... I imagine the, the story, story of telling of, of... related to Martin Luther King is gonna be about his civil rights... He the was impact really of civil a pathetic rights. white person who... He, oh, make it like a crossover between uh, MLK and The Jerk. What's The Jerk? The movie okay, with, so... um... Uh, the, oh, what's his name? Oh, I forget his name. He did the, um, Steve Martin? Oh, yeah. Is that his name? The comedian? Mm -hmm. That's a funny movie. He was raised oh, by black people, but he was a white guy. Okay. By the way, the chat's clarified B meant you hadn't seen it, so most people hadn't seen it. Right. So it was in, like, there are so many things that that could be. Well, so, I mean... Well, it, yeah, that's an interesting um, thought, isn't it? It could be great, and... You wouldn't know it, right? And yeah, that that person's like, say, so Martin Luther King's like, yep, yeah, Anne Boleyn. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I, I I studied her in like when I was a child, uh, in like a unit in school. Mm -hmm. right? I don't know much about Anne Boleyn, but I do not, to my understanding, believe that it's culturally significant that she was a white person. I guess I can't confirm that. I don't remember. I well, what time was she alive in? What what era? When was Henry the Eighth a thing? Wasn't he like the 17th century? Um, or my, or the, sorry, was he, he was 18th century, right? So the 1700s. That No, I thought, I think he was earlier than that. I think he was the he, you 1400s, might right. I want to say. Or the uh, 1500s? Yeah. Early 1500s, people are saying. Oh, no, people are saying, okay, so apparently Henry was 1597. So yeah, 1500s. Okay, so it was a lot earlier than I thought, jeez. I just, I just knew that she was queen, uh, that she, he was Queen Elizabeth I's father, um, and that she was on the throne in the time of Shakespeare, and that Shakespeare was 1500s. That's, that was my logic called deduction. Right. Nice deduction, power. bruh. Thank you. Jolly Got more cool. super chats in than we've managed to catch up on. We, well, we do, yeah. But, um, you know, I, I find the, the, the conversation interesteroni, uh, and just, just where, where are lines drawn exactly, you know. I saw someone say, like, the way that they look like in terms of the character is going to be the most important thing for adaptation. I was like, I would, if I had a, to break it into two brackets of they will look just like them or they will be just like them, the comparison like the to make would be a Resident Evil movie that they have Leon in it. He looks pretty good, as does a lot of the stuff in the Paul W.S. Anderson movies in terms of comparison to the game, but they have nothing to do with the games at all. And so, is that even worth it? Like, what? I would say that it is an aesthetic thing, which is, that's fine, but I, if I was more interested in, like, an adaptation, I wanted it to be more like the thing I liked, I'd care a lot more that it was like that substantively. I mean, I assume that I'm invested in the character because of the character, yeah. not because I really like the way they look. Yeah, because it's Even like someone who looks like them and has their name. I mean, yeah, you know, but, like, there are Mandalorian fans. <laughs> yeah, but they're dumb. <laughs> Jay, can't say that. <clears throat> it's very rude. Just make Lincoln black. I mean, uh... Do it. Let's, uh, I, I want to see that, actually. He had rap career before he, um... Became president. <coughs> MC Lincoln? 
Yeah, he had a, it was an illustrious career. Visuals matter in a visual medium, for fuck's sake. Man, remember when Fringy said visuals don't matter in a visual medium, and then Jay agreed, and Rags agreed, and I agreed? <laughs> what? It's, it's really, I, I always get a bit, because I occasionally see like, oh, that's a straw man thing. It's like, so first of all, like when we're talking about a subject and I'm not addressing any one specific argument directly, it's not a straw man. I'm bringing up a point and then trying to refute that specific. But also, man, unshowered ability right there. Jesus. Mm, none of us said it, so like, I just, I don't yeah. take it seriously. I'm like, you have fun with whatever you're, you're fighting ghosts whatever over there. You invented the, <laughs> fighting specters, all right? <laughs> Die, specter. <laughs> Um, that, that sounds like the kind of person who would unironically argue that, like, they forgot to put color in Schindler's List. <laughs> what do you mean? They I had red. I thought it was just, like, budgetary concerns. It's like Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, the technology wasn't available yet in 1994. 19... 3. 2? 3. I think it was 3. You gotta get those jokes accurate, right? What if, what if you... What if, like... So what if someone has different visual priorities to you? What if someone, what You're if wrong. someone think, so what if someone literally thinks they've, they've cast the most visually appealing person to play the well, role, now... but they look different from, uh, from the adaptation, you know, the thing they're adapting. Well, think about the, um, the, the examples we actually have. A lot of superhero stuff, when it gets adapted, they change the costumes because they think the costumes look too silly. X-Men. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, that's, about that's it. not, that's, that's not visuals not mattering. That's visuals being treated with different sensibilities to yours in this universe. Yeah. yeah. And so, and what if we all agreed on it? What if we were like, yeah, that thing does actually look pretty goofy. So I'm glad they changed it to this. It's like, what happens then? That was, that was bad. That was not faithful to the adaptation, right? Well, and some of the chat mentioned they can't claim to be historically accurate. It's like, yeah, sure. I don't think many movies do. <laughs> like sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, okay, okay. So, did the Black and Berlin show go, this is historically accurate, and Berlin well, was black? Well, I, I feel like this is interesting, because Battlefield Five annoyed the hell out of me. Like, I'm not going to lie, that, that pissed me off. Hell I don't lie. Like... Out of... yeah. What did they like, do in Battlefield Five? What didn't so, they do in Battlefield Five? Cyborg British women with, like, a prosthetic <laughs> arm on the battlefield in, Fran in, like, in the Netherlands. It's like, dude, this is... So the problem there is it's like, so could you criticize that, you know, objectively in terms of this game? It's like, no, it's just, I don't like that. I, I actually do like it when you're trying to be accurate in, in, in like a story. Well, I think if, story. if they committed to it, you'd probably be okay sense. with it. If it was like a Wolfenstein. If it was an alt history. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if it was full alt history, thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If it was full alt history and we were just doing a totally different thing, then I, I think I even said at the time, like, I'd be totally cool with that. But like, you're almost trying to tread this line where it's like, no, we're being authentic. It's like, I, it's, hmm. That's Plus, interesting... a lot of people really wanted a World War II Battlefield game again, and they yeah. were like, they felt like, and reasonably so, that it was kind of being ruined. Like, you finally went back to World War II for a Battlefield game, and it doesn't... the roots of yeah. the series, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Well, and, it, and, and I remember the thing is, is because people are like, Battlefield's not realistic in terms of its physics and gameplay. It's like, now, I, yeah. I think it was something that I, I like Total Biscuit said, there's like a difference between realism and authenticity. Realism is trying very hard to directly emulate um, Real this life? particular environment, this game. Yeah, like you're trying, the guns are realistic, the sounds are very realistic, and that authentic is, it feels like it's real, but yeah, it's, it's really Battlefield enhanced. 1 is a great example. You've changed it. It's very authentic. Is yeah. It's not that realistic, is not but it's authentic. Authenticity is just a big subjective category then? Yeah, no, kind I of. I would it. say like, that you... Oh. Well, I I would say that there's definitely a lot of objective uh, uh, statements you can make about authenticity when it comes to the items inside of it, and when those items did or did not exist. And Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Being like, able to trace them is, back. Like, is it like, authentic? this place, was there a battle at this place? Isn't that a, yeah. isn't that a question of realism then? And you have to well, subjectively no. decide what parts realism of realism... would be the... Now, realism would be more the application. So, for instance, in Battlefield 1, there are prototype weapons that were never actually used in the war. However, the, at least one did exist and was, it, it did exist on the Earth during that time. It is authentic to the time period that it existed. But it's not realistic. But it is not realistic that, yeah. to, to see it and to use it and to use it in battles and stuff like that. So like you're capturing you're capturing something from that period of time and representing it in a way that is true to what it was, but you're not making a meaningful effort to 
like because battlefield one was realistic the gameplay would be all right you're going over the top and then you run over the top and you just get shot and killed like that would be the or that would be the realistic battlefield world war sometimes one yeah game whereas this is it would just be all artillery be like, and yes yeah we're trying to evoke the vibe or the the atmosphere the the feeling of this particular place and these weapons and these people but this is not this is we're not trying to be realistic you don't yeah, have to worry and... about your weapons jamming you don't have to worry about being deaf because it's so loud that you can't hear anything it's they would do things consistent. like how they balance bayonet charges as a mechanic and cavalry yeah. and there's a lot of really nifty stuff um but i would say it's pretty authentic but it's not at all realistic yeah and so, and so basically all I was saying on that point is, I just didn't like that choice for Battlefield Five. I didn't like it. Um, which is, I feel like that's a different thing to say than it's like, well, this is bad. It's like, well, they can do this if they want, and it could, and it could have like great art assets and it could work totally fine. It's like, but that's not what I wanted from Battlefield Five. See, someone said, if you're making a historically based drama, historical accuracy would be a requirement. It's like, what about alt history? No. The whole genre. It's historically yeah. based. So there are always going to be things that are not historically accurate in your historical drama. Like that's well, classic drama. Yeah, and then well, some people would be like, "Well, you got to get you got to get the important things right." And then it's like, "Well, what if I'm deliberately changing the important things because I want to explore what would happen?" I'm doing a what if, a Marvel's what if Hitler oh didn't my die. Goodness, I feel like you could apply. What if T'Challa like... convinced Hitler no. that Holocaust <laughs> wasn't the answer? Well, it's. I mean, you could apply it to things like, well, why are the why are all these Romans speaking English? They didn't speak English. They should be speaking Latin. Why are they speaking English? That's not historically accurate. And be and like, well, that's a language barrier. It's like, ah, so there are reasons why you would make changes then, it, depending on what objectives you have. Yeah, that, like, that's just a practical. People understand what's being said. That's well, just a, like imagine, like well, imagine the thing. Imagine well, the... no, no, I <laughs> wouldn't say that it's, it's it's practical in a certain sense, but I mean. There are certain. I'm pretty sure there is like a, a German show that is um that is set in that period where like the Germans are speaking German, but the Italians are speaking Latin instead of uh, German. I believe. Well, as in that like exists. it's a it is a it is it serves a particular practical purpose. Is my point to to translate yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure, definitely. And the same way that like, <clears throat> okay, so if you if you had like a a group doing a, a historical drama about Anne Boleyn. And they don't have like they're like they're a very limited oh, team. Got... They're a very small group of people. Three hyper cringe have... comments in a row. I have to address. Holy shit! Yeah, if you make an historical drama, you should keep it historically accurate. But what if it wasn't a historical drama? Come on, Mola, that's another genre. So keep everything the same, everything to real life except one thing. Is, is so is it is it binary? It can only be historically accurate or not, and therefore. As soon as you are slightly inaccurate, you are no longer an historical drama. Well, I mean, what does that even I, mean? I, I feel like a good. I feel like a good example would be: what if you tell a World War II story where the main character didn't necessarily exist, but they are in a place where a bunch well, of well, not a historical drama yeah. anymore. Yeah. Like that's a fucking dumbass right. way to do Anyone. it, and you know so. Then you go. It's so fun to hear Mola advocate for the new Star Wars trilogy. Where are you? <laughs> What what planet it's not are you authentic. on? It's not Dude, it's not somebody, historically accurate. I, I heard the same I remember the same stuff when we were talking about the adaptation thing where we were talking about like the changes you make and people were like, Oh, so you're okay with the new Lord of the Rings. It's like, well that show could be bad, but not for the reasons you're giving. And then like, to tip it all off, then it's not a historically based drama, is it, Mauler? Okay, I guess Inglorious Bastards isn't a drama. I'm I'm glad we've achieved this. It's it's not historically I, based. I do love this. I, all I love this is historically genre. based. Well, I was about to say, *Inglorious Bastards* has to be historically based. There's nothing else you could call it, and it's a drama. But rip that based because it's not 100% accurate. What a stupid standard. Assassin's Creed isn't historical drama, even though it is all about history. Like I know there's a lot of Wombo brains in chat about this topic, and we have to deal with them every once in a while. But like, my God, guys, you got to get you got to open up the the brain tubes on this one. So like 1917, that, so, that, those events didn't literally happen, but it's still a historical mm -hmm. drama. Absolutely. So, and this is the thing, most of us don't even know what the inaccuracies are in a lot of movies that really do it well. Like, you know, Saving Private Ryan, well, I, it's like you're going to need someone oh, to tell you what the fucking inaccuracies oh, are in that. No, 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 no. Historical drama with mistakes isn't an alt history, uh, what? history <laughs> drama. What? What if they? What not if mistakes. they aren't mistakes? What if they were yeah. on purpose? No, I don't think they accidentally cast a black person to play. I don't think they the accidentally way. killed Dude, Hitler in Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> These were conscious decisions that were made. 
Uh, and like, what does it even matter if we're changing the definitions? Dr the genre that you were in does not define how good or bad you are as a story. That, yeah, that's I true. Yeah, I hate genre talk. Yep. Not it doesn't lie. matter. It does not matter whether you say it's alt history or it's historical drama. It doesn't change whether or not it is actually good. Whether or not you like it, whether or not you would want to watch it because it's historically accurate or not, totally different. That's totally fine. Just say you don't like it. That's fine. Yeah, and, and what I'm trying to put out here, because the, the people trying to like obviously point out to me is like, well then, well, that's the difference between alt history and historical drama. I'm like, you decide this once you are told the details. Most, if not all, movies that are historical based are going to have to be considered alt history now. Because I have no idea what the line is for historical inaccuracy, of which all of these films will have. And what you'll find is most of them do it because of the fact that the story doesn't work if they stick to the accuracies for pacing reasons, or for the events, like, as they unfold, just don't, like, run properly. Or different people in what different places. What does it places. even matter if we're changing the definitions? Well done, Fringer, that was stupid. I don't even know what you're responding to. The <laughs> point is that whatever you define it as being doesn't change what it is in terms of its quality. Whether, like, if you, if you, if you were looking at Star Wars, you're like, that's science fiction, no, that's science fantasy, no, that's just pure fantasy. What difference does it make, meaningfully, to your experience of watching it? Yeah. Holy well, if they, if they call, well, here's the thing, if they call it historical drama, then they get to say it's bad because this thing isn't accurate to well, history. I mean, Whereas you if could it's say old history, they don't get to say that. I don't think they want an excuse to be able to call it bad. I don't think they they'll be happy, though, because if we simply say the Anne Boleyn thing, it's like all you can say about that is it's, it's alt history. They'd be like, well, mm, no, it's bad, though. <laughs> can you be like, ah. and, and then at that point, it's like, ah, okay, you just don't like it. That's fine. It's the thing I want to see. I, I love alt history stuff. It's fun. I, I like alt history a lot. Yeah. I, I, I can hop on the stream expecting to spend like a good <laughs> half hour defending the prospect of Black Hand Boleyn. Yeah, I, no. I want to see the you alt got, history where dude, uh, Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. You got, that it doesn't matter, Ray can use the force to heal. You are so lost. You've like, you've ran oh, off into the you, woods. Where do you think what? you are? <laughs> what is happening? What, I, what did. Uh, so the equivalent with Star Wars is if someone adapted it into a TV show and redid it all, and then said everyone could use Force Heal. There's nothing that we would complain about if that was a that was no. a constant. Yeah. That'd be fine. So what you're talking about there is internal consistency with itself. So like if yes. in one scene Anne Boleyn was black, and then in the next scene she was white, <laughs> that would be the equivalent there. She's transracial. I'm glad that you guys figured out what that argument was because. Like I couldn't have done. I couldn't have. I couldn't have spotted the connection there. Feels weird because like we've been advocating for this for so long, like internal consistency. Uh. But they're like, if it, if it, if you don't respect everything that has happened in history, then that's bad. And I'm just sitting here like, man, so many fucking movies getting getting shat on without them realizing it. Bad standard. Go away. Nobody likes you. Mhm. Mm um. Yeah, I, uh, I'm just a radical. I'd be like, if someone was like, they're gonna make the Emperor a woman in the new Star Wars TV show adaptation, I'd be like, alright, see how it goes. It. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> but fundamentally, people, like, I, I, I see, like, a world, like, I, I think that just the, the fucking well has been poisoned on this shit. Um, everyone at this point sees a change to, um, like, a character's race or gender as, like, a political move. When yeah. if we lived in a world without any of that context, like I don't think anyone would give a shit. I don't think anyone would like, like you live, you live in like you know we have like a just a cultural reset, and someone's like yeah making and you don't have like you know you don't have any of the any of the the existing biases that you go into like some some artists that you know you think oh they've done some good work before it's like yeah I'm doing a Star Wars remake, uh, with Empress Palpatine, you wouldn't care. Like and the only like the like the closest reason that you would care is like oh I don't like. Maybe it's, it might feel different if uh, if Palpatine's a woman. Like that's the extent that you that it will go. Someone in chat just said Jay is a leftist. <laughs> <laughs> How did they figure that out? I thought you kept that secret. Well, it's like define leftist. Yeah, like, that's true. Well, I, mean, um, I think I think my favorite part was how just before that same person said you just avoided the whole thing with straw man. I'm out from this stupidity. I <laughs> straw man is the most oversighted logical fallacy. You yeah, gotta stop. You, you I just, an, just well. free just as you said that. I just read someone say nice straw man wall, and no one said historical yeah. fiction is bad. It's like, um, dude, what? So funnily Stop. enough, there's gonna be people who say that. 
hundred percent. There will be people. Any but that. any kind of historical fiction is bad because it takes away from the real events. Someone can make that argument. There's, there's no way that that's not a thing. Um, Someone who's got so Jay is left-handed. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Shit. Calm down. Jay, get the fuck out of here. Now see. Someone else with Jay is a deconstructionist. Can you can you define that for me, scapegoat? Can you can you deconstruct that for me? Well, I mean, yeah, can, you, can, can you deconstruct that for me? <laughs> it only... We're gonna explore what it truly means to be a deconstructionist. Yes. Yeah. Nice straw man. Let me follow it up with an obvious straw man. <laughs> That's how Storm, it feels. Please stop. Please stop using straw man. I implore you, stop. It's so oversighted. There are so many to like. If you, here's a good clarifying one. If you ask someone a question and you don't like that question because it makes it difficult for you to answer, that's not a straw man. That's just a good question. Yeah. On the um, on the thought of um, if only there was less cringe in terms of, especially statements from like writers and directors making it clear exactly what their goals are, and then we see the results and we're like, you. If only we we're in a world where we had more examples of Nick Fury. We were just like, oh, the content you really like, that's actually an adaptation where the character was race swapped slash gender swapped slash whatever, and turns out it all worked just fine. Everyone was fine with it. And you're like, oh shit, okay, cool. So it is, like, if we had loads of good examples of that, we'd be much further along in this conversation, but we're still stuck all the way back at, like, the content will automatically be boycotted the second they don't ad adapt it, like, faithfully, um, I'll, which sucks. Well, I'll, I'll throw my bone a bit. I will say that the like it, it like i totally understand why people instantly are super like jaded and cynical about all these things because of how like the the politi uh, the obvious political messaging that companies and stuff do when they do stuff like this yeah my... so it makes them reasonably believe that quality isn't the key so when we see stuff like this happening we think oh well you're just doing it for political reasons not because of an actual passion and you're not putting you know quality first you're trying to put messaging so first so what i said at the beginning of the whole thing was if only we weren't in the world we're in where it's so clear yeah, that no. they do it all for those reasons you yeah, know so that's it's I, just um, yeah it's it's yeah i i think it's just uh, it's just i hate this current like landscape <laughs> like it's so so divisive and shit. Abraham Lincoln so Vampire Hunter is. was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, um, yeah. most if not all movies, I don't think they would be qualified as like, in any way, like a documentary. They can be educational for sure, but like, man, because oh, they're I movies, mean, they change a lot about the thing that they're I mean, covering. Isn't an interesting part though about even if you're presenting a documentary, the information you choose to present yep. changes people's perception of that particular event. Like, you, I feel like the easy one would be if you played a, a wildlife documentary and you played really serene music to like a polar bear laying waste to a, a seal. It's like that gives a different interpretation than if you played really evil, ominous music, despite the fact that it is entirely neutral in terms of like the process that's happening. Like a morality and thing, And that applies yeah. to... Yeah, exactly. And that... It's the whole idea of, like, your interpretation is what makes it good or bad. It's indifference, like, on a, on a, on a flat level. But these are the these are the decisions that need to be made when you're creating a documentary. You've got to present something. And kind of the same with a story as well that's based in history. Whose POV are you telling it from? Are you telling it from, like, the commanders or the, or the soldiers or the civilians? And from which country... In which, what do they think about this particular issue? There's there's a whole lot that sort of factors into how people will perceive the messaging of, of that story. But you have to make these decisions, even if you're trying to do something that's historically accurate. The POV that you present it from will change how people interpret the clinical facts. It's kind of the same with like statistics. Yeah. Again, the statistics are true, but which ones you're looking at, how you frame them. All of these affect people's interpretations of those statistics. Someone said um, race is a big thing to change. That really depends on the context in which you're changing. Like, it depends on the character and the, and the story as well. Yeah, because surely people would have said, like, it's going to change a lot to... I don't know. Ch theoretically, what if Wolverine was black? I feel like you could keep everything the same for the most part. Yeah, it's like, what if Nick Fury was white or Indian or Asian? It's like, oh... Same story, pretty much. Well, I mean, or the interesting one, what if you had a story where there are people of different races, but you just totally flip them backwards? Like, everything is just flipped. 
the white people are black and the black people are white in this historical drama. And then it just plays out exactly the same. And you just change the words out. Yeah, so like, it really, I mean, so like, yeah, so like if you, if you wrote Black Hitler, then yeah, you've got a, that's a big thing that you've changed. And you probably need to account for that in, in your story. If he was uh, the only um, black person oh, in the third no. <laughs> Oh no, chat. <laughs> Uh, you forget that people don't care about pacing characters or plot. What matters is theme and the theme is history. Now, I hope that what? you're, like, memeing. Theme I hope that you're memeing. I hope you're memeing because people say the same Stop thing about memeing. TLJ. All right? People say the same exact thing. It's about the theme. The internal consistency, the plot, and the characters. That's not... It's what matters is the message that you're trying to get across. So, I hope that you were just, like, joking <laughs> and you didn't mean that. Well, if Nick Fury was white and had a similar personality, yes. Oh, yeah, that. So yeah, if he was, if he had a different personality, then that would be the change. That would be, that would be different. Change. Like, yeah. It's like, th like at that point, it would still be a big change if you didn't change his race. It's like, if you changed, if you change someone's race, it's a big change. Well, what if it isn't a big change? Well, if you change something else big, it is. Um, yeah, I don't disagree. Isn't wait. I just, somebody brought up Hamilton as an example. What what exactly is the deal with Hamilton? Isn't Hamilton like a very good example of this exact thing at play? It's just, like a really yeah, everyone's black, I guess. Well, I guess that's that's the interesting thing, right? Is like I always hear that that musical is excellent, just from all of the production standpoint, the acting, the music, and everything. It's not historically accurate, though. Yeah, but is you that know they didn't actually relevant? sing in history like that? Or, or rap? Is yeah, like they a did. rap musical? <laughs> Take they back. absolutely did. They uh, The Founding Fathers had musicals going on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the original Constitution was written in verse. It rhymes, actually. I, I like the idea that while they were writing it and trying to figure out how to amend it and everything, they were singing as well. It's like, should we include this specific line? It's like, can you rewrite that? And it's all in song. It was like, it'd be a really amusing... <laughs> I've seen a chat that's like, I don't, I, I feel like this, this person is trying to satirize something, but I don't understand. I don't understand what, what, what angle you're coming at this from, what... Small brain what, like, So they say, um, gee, it's 2021, mate. The Black Hitler movie could happen, but Brie <laughs> La and Brie Larson would be cast to what? play Hitler. What? <laughs> Brie Larson plays Black Hitler? She plays a black female Hitler? Do it. Man, that's, uh, again, Fucking that do feels it. like... I'm on board. In internet <laughs> film discourse. Yeah, that's. If uh, I saw the trailer, go. Brie Larson is Black Hitler. I would probably watch that <laughs> film. I would. I would watch the shit out of that. I don't care how bad it's. Uh, ten out of ten. Well, don't even need to see it. That's gonna be a funny bad film. <laughs> like, it's a Zen out of Zen. There's no way that that isn't just gonna be an engaging experience in some way. It's like Iron Sky. <laughs> Have any? Has anyone here seen Iron Sky? I have not. Which one? Who's I in that? Um, is it Jude Law? Who's in it? Um, or am I thinking maybe? Something else? Uh, let's see. It's the one about Nazis living under the moon. Oh, I have not seen that. Oh, so it's so, a historical film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a historical film. Um, Iron Sky, I remember just seeing the trailer for it uh, and thinking, whatever kind, however this film ends up going, this is going to be a thoroughly engaging watch because you just see the trailer and it's like, it starts, it starts, it's like the main character is like the Sarah Palin stand-in. Um, and it's like, and she's talking about how there are Nazis living on the moon. And then it cuts to like Nazi UFOs coming down to Earth from the moon. And they're like, I don't care what actually happens in this film. It's going to be entertaining. Like there's no way that like, I can get to the end of this film and go, well, that was boring. Oh, someone. I think there's a, uh, oh, uh, I'm thinking of Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. That's true. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a film. It was. I wonder if it's, what, it's probably, what, they, what I, were they saying about that film? Just that that's what I was thinking of, and they're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be worth a rewatch someday. It's a weird one, but sure. It's an odd one. That's why. That's the you thing. You've movies. Yes. But Iron Sky, that sounds like a, that sounds like a ride. Is there any famous people in that? I don't think so. Right, let's have a look. That's the I show don't think any famous people, people wanted to touch that, honestly. Um, that could be an EFAP movies. Right there, Iron Sky. Well, some people brought up uh, the black Superman that are on their way. And it's like, the thing is, if they 100% adapted your favorite Superman story, but only changed the skin color, and the skin color obviously of the cans, I guess, at that point. Like, 
I could still yeah, work, I mean, right? Is it secret that the Kents adopted him? Because like then. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it, it wouldn't matter if the Kents are white or black. True. Then again, oh well. I mean, I guess you could say like, yeah, it might be hard for them to explain it if. He's in... adopted. <laughs> like, fuck it. We can just make him black. Whatever. It helps my point. I think if if they're black as well. That's not yeah. Superman. No, the analogy is: what if it was just Clark Kent? Like everything you know to be Clark Kent's the same. characteristics yeah. are in this character, except he's also black. Because the problem is, if you think that's an impossibility or whatever, it's like we we get into dangerous territory. Mm hmm. Um. Because you know it could... so that is not a different character. That is a different actor playing the same character, and like. Unless you actually start bringing in things where, like, his race impacts him in his life. No, we're not talking like, about Val Zod. We're talking about literally it's Clark Kent, and it's an I'm not even, a perfect adaptation of All Star Superman or something. But I haven't even Black, made a it. statement as to whether or not like it, it sounds to me then that their conclusion is okay. Yes, it would be good, but he's not Clark Kent, which gets back to the whole Spider Man shit. So I'm even just like, though, mm. uh, mm. but that's an arbitrary line you're drawing. I feel like, like that okay, doesn't. So if, that's almost a different conversation, swap, though. That's the adaptation then. stuff versus the whether or not you can race swap. Um, it's like, okay, okay. So what if what if he's not black? He's blonde, right? Superman isn't blonde in the comics. Is he still? Or does that, he still or not, does that not matter? Yeah, that's. Okay, what if he's five point. seven? Mm. Uh, what if he's got no teeth? Does that matter? <laughs> he's got dentures. He has super guns. He has super, super guns. guns. It's never yeah, mentioned he, in the he, film. It's just the actor playing him has no teeth, and you can sort of see it in a couple of shots. This is the thing. We'll never be able to fucking have these conversations because that movie's probably going to be bad anyway, right? It's probably going to be poorly written regardless. And uh, what is this film? It's it's J J Abrams is making a black Superman movie. As far as I know. Which I believe it's meant oh, to be not Abrams. Val Zod or whatever. Yeah, there's, there's also Apple Val Zod Superman. coming out. Yes, on HBO Max. I think that's Michael B. Jordan attached to it. Imagine telling black people their blackness isn't a part of them. Um, Man, what, that's no that, part that of like, them. It's, uh, what, what do you... I, I, you're, I'm not even sure what I'm meant to do with that. Like, <laughs> You should of, tell black people just the same as every other race that their race doesn't define who they are. They do. Why would? Are you saying that as if you don't think that there's anybody in the world who doesn't let? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Rai, what, why race swap? I'm asking in good faith. I agree with you. I don't. Uh, you. You. This. You. You really find a reason that you needed to do that. But if you found an incredible actor. And he's yeah, just yeah. a different race. Like, well, he's just the right fit, though. He does it so well, or something like that. It's true. Idris Elba is not a echidna. <laughs> yeah, so like, that's true. If um, like if I'm casting fucking Bond, and my options are, I don't know, I've 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 got like, fucking, uh, fucking, it, what? What's, I'm I'm blanking on the name of this actor. What's the the Lex Luthor from? Uh, BVS. Oh, Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg. Eisenberg. Eisenberg? Yeah. Jesse, okay, so you've got your casting Bond, uh, and the people who are interested in, like, you know, so, well, well, the people who are interested in this role that you can uh, feasibly get within your budget are Jesse Eisenberg, Michael Cera, <laughs> and, like, Idris Elba. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Who are you like, picking? Okay, so, like, I, 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 I raise you your why race swap, like, point with, like, why uh, avoid doing it? Like, there's no function to uh, unless it, unless a character's race is important to that character. Like, not only the story like, that you want to tell. Specifically. Yeah, to the story that you want to tell. Then there is no reason not to cast someone of a different race to play that character. Like, just play. Like, just just you know, look at all the actors that you have available, uh, and choose the the one who best suits the role. You already fell off the bird. Jeez. The sand bird. How'd you manage that? In fairness, um, I'm very. I'm reading lots of chat right now. <laughs> mm. A combination of interested and disappointed. But you just said it's part of some, not part of someone's identity. No. Yeah. What was like? So what? Okay. The, so the being point? five seven is part of your identity, but that doesn't mean that you can't like cast a five seven person to play like a six foot tall character. Well, I mean, I feel like a good example isn't Wolverine in the comics like five foot six, Hugh Jackman is six point is six foot two. Yeah. 
So like, like so it's being, something that's commented like, on in the media a lot is that like Wolverine is a short guy. So like being a like every like aspect of who you are physically and like who you are mentally is going to be part of your identity. But like you don't need a strict one to one to tell the same story about like the same kind of you know about the same character. Because ultimately, if you're adapting something, it's not going to be literally the same person that it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're casting a different actor to, um, you know, or if, like, let's say it's a comic and you're casting an actor to play a comic book character, it's not literally going to be the same as the comic. They're probably, I I... Like, you know, unless someone was, you, you found, like, a perfect casting where they're an amazing actor, they capture the spirit of the character perfectly, and they look identical to how they were drawn on the page going to be something different i found the the intro syllable michael sarah like jesse eisenberg one interesting because it really highlights the thing it's like well no what you really want is the person who captures the essence of the character that you're creating or adapting like you don't you don't really care what they are what they look like um in terms I'm of, sure some you know, people do. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> We've seen that right now. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. True. I, I guess it's the whole idea that the immutable characteristics matter a whole lot less than, like, whether they can actually embody the personality of that person, which I feel like that just highlights the oh. point, right? Holy fuck, but dude. At Mola, mm -hmm. so good faith. What if a documentary lies and provides lies as facts? <laughs> Discovery did this and created political movements from the... Discovery's oh. not... If someone was Star Trek Discovery, that's not a documentary, dude. That didn't happen? Do they mean the Discovery Channel? Oh, well, at that... Discovery the Channel. If we're talking about... That's documentary. Yeah, if we're talking about documentaries that lie to people, that's bad. So, um, historical dramas aren't actually documentaries. Yeah. No, um, they're not. Well, into... I'll, I'll raise them. You've got fucking Fargo, both the shows and the movies, that claim at the beginning it's it's true when it's not. And they're doing it because they, it gets people more interested and more engaged to think that this stuff actually happened. Well, that sounds bad. Well, the thing I think that's a really interesting conversation. Um, should we at this point assume all movies are absolutely not representative of real life in terms of um, we shouldn't take anything uh, for granted in terms of fact, um, and thus they can do whatever they want in their medium as like a they can say everything in here is true and they still don't have responsibility to do anything about that, or um, is it like you know there's a, there's a line and they can cross it. Um, documentaries are absolutely, they've got a whole different set of like parameters for how, what they should be doing, but uh, fucking movies? This is the thing, right? Some people are like, why would anyone think Inglorious Bastards actually happened? Everyone knows how Hitler died. It's like, no they don't. Especially as time goes on, less and less people will know. And yeah. if more and more people watch that movie, and they're like, fucking hell dude, the, the story of how Hitler died is insane. It's like, I mean, I guess so, but it's <laughs> not how it goes in there. Where's the thing? Like, I don't know how, like, fucking Genghis Khan died. The TV um, show removed the comma. Fuck. Um, about Fargo, by like, the way, like, th th I find it all very interesting. Um, and apparently the, the original had a comma in it. It's a real and then comma story. But the show removed the comma. It's like, that's... So it became a lie. It's like the thing is, it's all in universe, right? Which someone argues like that's a title credits thing. I don't know. That's why it's that's fiction, like... lol. I mean, that's that sounds like it just bolsters our point, right? Documentaries aren't fiction, or well, they're not supposed to be. The film Downfall is great. I've heard that. I've been meaning to watch that one. Downfall is a German one if it's the the one that got memed but is actually like a great film. Yeah, only ever well, hear good things about I mean, it. I feel like surely... Isn't it like a lot of the films that get memed are just really good? Like, oh that's yeah, why I guess it's comes just the idea. Like the prequels. Um... Thank you, thank you, Someone said, I 100% care, and I'm very curious what they're responding to. Mm-hmm. But, like, imagine J.J. Abrams made the best Superman story. Like, the writing was just top-notch Superman, who's super consistent. Then we'd actually have a really difficult conversation on our hands for everybody. Imagine he said, no, it wouldn't be difficult. It'd be like, this is great, That's and, like, that's it. 
Um, well, I think you underestimate ideal, how many people well, will be ignoring that film's quality for the race. Well, as in, like, as in, do like, you mean it would be like a diff the discourse would be difficult? Because I don't think it would be difficult for us to. Not for us. I mean, dude, the fucking conversation on No Way Home is not going to be difficult for us, but it's going to be difficult as a as a I general. Know, I feel like it might be. I feel like the film's going to not... be just. Wait, so dense. when you say us, I thought you meant when we talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. As in, so okay, so yeah, the, the, if it's just an excellent film, and we're like, yeah, that was excellent. Like, none of us are going to be tripped up by the fact he's Black Superman, is what I meant. Also, oh my god, can you believe this? It's probably going to easily be better than Man of Steel. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course maybe. it will. I don't even know how much of a maybe that is. Like, I'd put money on that. Like, Man of Steel was fucking <laughs> abominable. J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Zack Snyder. I, guess, I believe I believe that J.J. Abrams is more well, capable it, of telling a as in, sound story. Like, I, like, you know what? I, I, I believe that it absolutely could be better, but, um... I still am very aware of J.J. Abrams' ability to fail. What Man if it was amazing? Steel. What if it was amazing and J.J. Abrams went on talking about, yeah, this is, I feel, the first film I've ever got to make that was truly my film. Oh, my. You know, I got full creative control here. I want to see that happen. I want to see J.J. Abrams is actually really a genius, bad. but he's just been cut okay, his whole life. Like, <laughs> that would be the thing I'd mention. Man of Steel is just awful. Well, it is funny, because we get influxes right of new people every once in a while and, like i saw there was a post the other day of like why why does efab crew not like winter soldier and i'm like oh <laughs> they have to go back and look at the nope you can't watch the new efab stuff without watching the full 150 episodes every mini and every movies to understand all the context exactly you, you won't know all of our hot takes That poor soul. JJ won't finish the movie. I mean, you'll probably throw in a big cliffhanger, loads of mystery boxes, classic JJ stuff, yep. but, you know, character might just be like, a lot like we know Superman to be. You know, that'd be neat. I don't know, I feel like it's just gonna be really superficial. Um, well, so this is the thing. R refresh me. JJ, has he ever made a movie that we all consider good? Is Mission Impossible 3 okay? That's the problem. I haven't seen it I so long remember. now that I'm not sure if it. I know that Philip yeah. Seymour Hoffman's fantastic in it, but that's not really enough to say what it's a good his, movie. Uh, what was his? What was what his break? But he's great in basically everything. So yeah, he's um, particularly intimidating in that movie, though. What else? People don't like Is the Super Star Trek any good? at all, right? I haven't seen Super uh, Eight. I haven't seen that either. Uh, Super Eight might be worth a watch because I mean I saw it and it was like. I don't really remember what I thought of it, to be fair, but it was boring. I don't, Someone I don't said Lord of the Rings. JJ <laughs> did big there. <laughs> yeah. Chat, is, Yet. You know what? chat, chat, that ultimately reliable source of information. Um, is Super 8 any good? Yeah. So, someone said Super 8 was okay. You wouldn't lie to us, chat, would you? Yeah. Um... Yeah, Are you going to watch JJ's work after the Star Wars sequels? That's very fair. Yeah, no, I, this is the thing. Rise of Skywalker was, like, possibly his worst film ever. I, that's pretty fair, right? Unless, yeah, well, fair. I guess unless you think TFA was worse. I mean, unless, um, I mean, I'd have to rewatch the Star Trek films he's done. Too, oh, but... good point, yeah. Um, I think uh, Into Darkness was the one that people hated the most out of the three, right? I've always heard that. I don't think he directed the third one. I I've heard the third else. one is the best. That's I have what heard I've heard. That through, that's yeah. what I've heard as and well. I, he didn't make it, so that's interesting. I've, I've, I'm, I could have sworn, like, the first one, a lot of track fans will just be like, nah. but the second one was like, it actually pissed people off. Well, here's the thing, because the Star Trek movies are a great example of the adaptation argument, because for me, they really do not capture the spirit of, like, why I watch Star Trek. Uh, I watch Star Trek for, like, essentially, um, you know... An episode, a great episode of Star Trek to me will put like a, a moral proposition and then thoroughly explore it through like its characters, uh, and it will it will explore a moral idea with excellent character writing along the way, and you know who all these people are and what they believe and stuff, right? Whereas the J.J. Um, Abrams films are these like bombastic space adventures of like look shooting guns, um, but like if they were good films, I'd still stand by them and be like, yeah, these are good films, I just don't, they just don't appeal to me in the same way that actually, yeah. not like, you know, original Star Trek well, um, does, or... Plinkett's set of videos on the Star Trek movies are pretty good, and he, he goes over how they've been, like, Star Wars-ified to a degree, uh, the, uh, yeah. the J.J. Abrams ones. 
And the, that's... I feel like that's that's mean to Star Wars to say, but you know. Well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> You, funnily enough, in those videos he recommended J.J. Abrams should be making Star Wars movies, and he's gone on to regret saying that significantly. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. yeah. You can't blame him, he didn't know. He said that J.J. Abrams should be making movies. Cringe. <laughs> I'm about, I, I, like, I see the next which had to read out. I'm just like, yep, I, 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 any second now I'm gonna say it. I guess, I guess there's no, no point in delaying. Um, I'm a big fan of Metal's Blowhole. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mel? I don't even know. Maybe Metal's got some biology going on that I'm unaware of. People, no, there is a lot. I didn't expect there's a lot of controversy in chat right now about how good the the Trek movies are. Joshua's Trek movies. Really? Obviously, I'd have to rewatch them. Um, Wait, people so are saying that they're not. See, people are saying that they're not faithful to Star Trek, but they are good in their own right. Ah. Um. Yeah, if that's the case, I won't pretend they're bad films. But I I don't remember that being the case. But to be fair, I did watch them when I was like 13. I was going to say, I haven't seen them in fucking ages. I but remember. again, to be fair, when, a film, when I'm like 13, this is the as well. I wasn't like a big, I, I've become a Star Trek fan, re fan retroactively after watching those films. Uh, oh. And then going back to like TNG. Like I'd seen some TNG episodes before I watched those films, but I didn't care about them, you know? I didn't, I didn't really like understand this is what I go into a Star Trek film, uh, episode to get out of it. I was like, yeah, this is a show I've seen sometimes. But like... I was 13 and I remember thinking, yeah, that film wasn't very good. When I was 13, man, you had to do a lot wrong for me to be like, hmm. Yeah, because you were like super forgiving. You liked fucking everything. You thought the, the TFA was good. I liked Transformers too. Do you know what's funny? I, I needed a, a reference from the TLJ Rage video, and um, when I was letting the video play while I was grabbing something I needed, I heard myself say the throne room scene was like the best part and it's amazing and stuff. And I was like, oh my god. When I first saw TLJ, I was convinced the throne room scene was still pretty good. How naive. How naive. Hashtag release the Johnson cut. That just sounds like you're getting him circumcised. I don't well, someone said the blowhole thing is referencing Metal Stream from today. It's just like, okay. <laughs> um, I can't believe you guys would kill Clem. Shame. I can understand that reaction. Don't worry. Me and Fringy know what that means. Uh, I'm still addicted to Doom Eternal. I love it. Fair enough. I still haven't played it. I still got around to that one day. Finish Finished Angel Season 5 today. So much better. Than four, yeah, 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 That's a lot better. Yeah. Try getting into Buffy and Angel comics. It's even worse than Angel Season Four. <laughs> so, as far as I'm concerned, from everything I've heard about those comics, they are just not canon in my head. I don't care if they're considered canon. They're not. They're definitely considered canon, but we ain't fucking going anywhere near them. I don't care. <laughs> By the way, I have this same logic for the sequels. It's like, yes, they are officially canon, but like, I don't actually watch the OT and think, oh man, these guys are heading toward the sequels. That's the storyline. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah. Yeah, like, here's the thing. Can like, what is and isn't canon is just made up. Like, you can decide whatever you want when watching it. You can literally watch New Hope and decide that Empire isn't canon. If you yeah, can. um, if you want. Like, that's all um, up to you. At the same time, what is officially canon will usually determine what I'm going to be criticizing, right? Like, you know, why do I criticize the sequel trilogy versus someone writing a fanfiction sequels to the OT? It's like, oh. So yeah, what is and isn't canon only really matters when you're consuming a new work set in the same world, right? So then if you are consuming a new, like, work of, of Star Wars, then you're probably going to need to understand that the sequel trilogy is canon, because those events might be referenced and stuff established in them might come up, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Whereas, if you're just, or and if you're writing a new work, then you really well, need to understand what what counts and what doesn't. It's also However, the fact that it'll have the most eyes on it, I guess, as well, and the most discussion to be had about the choices made, and and you know, the yeah. community of like, yay, let's all talk about it, because if it's good, you know, that'd be great. So like the and then, however, like as a um, as as a just consumer, you can make these decisions for yourself. So like, what is the difference between someone who wrote like a really in depth fan fiction sequel trilogy 
that's like incredibly well thought out and amazing. And Disney's sequel trilogy. Well, the difference there is that Disney had money. I was like, oh, should people who have money deter? Like, should the amount of money you have determine like um, your uh, the amount that you get to say on what counts in terms of a work of fiction? It's like, no, not really. Having money, I don't think, should give you authority over art. Um. I suppose the question comes in of just... Well, so you're talking about, like, what's meaningfully canon shouldn't necessarily be determined by who has the most money? Yeah. I so mean, as in, Disney had loads of money, so they got to buy Star Wars and just declare that true. what they were making was canon and a lot of other stuff wasn't. But I mean, if that's... If the that's only what, way that it can I was going to say, if we've all agreed on that, like, that's just property rights. <laughs> like, that's well, how yeah, that it works. Is, well, okay, so property rights means that you can that you can use a work. It doesn't mean that you get to declare how other people interpret it. Well, um, I mean, you can't... The, what is well, this in I, canon? The it's totally is, a death of the author thing. Um, I'm not sure that canon would be what would be considered to be part of death of the author, right? Like if if you establish it well, as so, it's, like it's for a, instance, I think that there are things that are inconsistent in a work, but like it doesn't matter whether or not I think they're inconsistent. They happened. It's a problem. Well, it's so not, like um, not it, you know, Empire is a separate work from from New Hope, right? Like you can like. Is in so Empire is not part of the text of New Hope. Um, um, couldn't I extend your logic though to the point where I'm like half of a New Hope isn't canon by my? Yeah, exactly. Each scene, each. I suppose so, second, but like, like well, yeah, that's technically all, all, so all I'm getting frame, at right? is like it starts to use its usefulness, lose its usefulness beyond well, yeah. myself. Like, and I think I think this is all like an academic conversation anyway, uh, until you're actually. Right, and like until yeah. the like the circumstances we brought up, where it's like you're writing a new work or you're consuming a new work, and you need to understand what counts. I believe the canon is specifically defined as what the creators, owners, the people who have like authority over the work, have said is the timeline, basically. Yeah, so and like canon is very much based on what is said by the people who own it. And my response isn't usually that it's not canon; it's just that it's really shitty canon. Like you guys, I hate have... it and I don't care. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, and and the in my head, which again is just like the peak of subjectivity at this point. I'm like, yeah, I, I the sequels didn't actually happen to Luke. Luke wouldn't have done any of that shit. Most of them wouldn't have, like, um, but official canon states that those that fucking shit is canon. That's and that's why we're so frustrated with it. Because again, if it was JJ just writing his little fan fiction in his little cabin, and he releases it, we'd be like, wow, that was terrible. If we read it. Um, but they wouldn't go beyond that. In fact, we probably wouldn't be that annoyed at it. We'd be like, wow, that's some interesting ideas you got there. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question someone's bringing up. Like, if, if enough people, we're talking like millions and millions, saw like one person's fan fiction, like from John Doobly Doo or whatever, and, and it's like it's loved enough to the point where people just like, they talk about the actual content as though that's the canon. That, that would be interesting. Yeah. If enough minds push for it, it probably would take over to a degree. Well, yeah, yeah. so as in a canon is just like a shared agreement, essentially. Like, yeah. this is the thing, if, like, if Disney, like, if fucking, like, some guy bought Star Wars and he declared privately that, like, this stuff is canon, this stuff isn't, no, well, that's not going to do anything. Uh, Disney, like, it only matters that Disney declared stuff because they did it publicly and they have a massive platform to do that. Yeah, true. Um, just, like, ultimately you can decide what you count and you don't count as canon for yourself. Like, you, yeah. that's up to you. I mean, I can just think, I, I mean, I'm, I guess I've just totally accepted the idea that there is official canon and then there's just what I accept in my head based off of more substantive criteria, but that's just separate from official canon. Yeah, and, and you can say that official canon is worth a lot or nothing, depending on the person, right? You'd be like, I don't fucking care what they say official canon is. Well, yeah, so it's in, like, official canon matters when you're consuming new official works, right? I don't like, like Death of the, the Author at all. Definitely. Death of the Author sounds like revisionism. Um, believe me, you like Death of the Author. <laughs> Everyone likes really, Death of the Author unless they're not quite really, clear on it. You really like Death of the Author. You you want to have sex with Death of the Author? You, you love it that much, you trust want me. To fuck it in its butthole. <laughs> I feel like there are there are going to be people in this chat who don't like Death of the Author. I don't know, man. Uh, they're wrong. I don't even know that if they truly understand how it works. I don't know why they would ever be in favor of it. 
Uh, sorry, yeah. against it. <laughs> because um, Death of the Author is your friend, trust me. Substantive tooting your own horn there a bit, Rags? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a much better writer uh, than pretty much everyone in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> everyone? I'm just like, pre pretty much. I'd say there's some, I mean, I but those, the, the ones that are actually really good are far outweighed by the ones that are just shit and get things. I, like, for instance, if we're talking about Star Wars in particular, because we've been talking about that a lot, my canon, like, my ability to tell stories and stuff like that, I could do way better shit than JJ and Ryan did. No question about it. I feel like we all could hear. We all could hear, undoubtedly. Each and every one of us in this call, all four of us, could independently come up with a better sequel trilogy story than those two clowns could. And did. Probably a lot of people um, in chat as well. Not everyone. Yeah, you but, too. Uh, Someone said, please like explain of... Death of the Author, and, and uh, we're doing it. We said we'd bring it out, and now, now we're going to bring it out. The uh, the James Gunn example. So, oh, yeah. a lot of you in chat would have I'll, seen... I gotta get a drink. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. A lot of you in I chat would have seen The Suicide Squad. You would have uh, probably, potentially, enjoyed it. Now, you would have watched it, and a lot of people felt a lot for good old Polka Dot Man. Mainly because he seemed like a dude who'd had his life completely destroyed by his mum. And then, um, forced into a position of, like, she's trying to force him to become a superhero. And he's, like, depressed because it's just, like, a, a horrible result. It's destroying his life and stuff. Seems like a good guy throughout most of the, um, the, most of the storyline. And it's only when Milton dies that he, like, angrily protests on behalf of Milton for all the good that he did and that no one seems to care. It's like, it gives an impression to a lot of viewers that Polka Dot Man, he's going to be quiet and reserved, but when he thinks like a really big, dare I call it, injustice is happening, he's going to make it clear, he's going to stand up for that, and he's like, ah. Oh. And you know, by the end, he gets really invigorated by the fact that he's finally doing something significant and good, and then he dies. It's like, oh man. Pretty much completed storyline, I would say. It's, it's fully understood. James Gunn said that he only cared to mention Milton as a point of attention. He's trying to get attention for himself because he's a bit of a, an attention seeker. He doesn't really care. He just wants people to pay attention to him. So, people are going to say in chat, I'm sorry, people are going to say in chat, well, yeah, Death of the Author is dumb, but that just means it's a bad story. That's, that's going to be the response. I, I guarantee it. I mean, I don't even understand that that response. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm totally near the end. So the, James Gunn's telling you how the character uh, thinks and feels and why he did what he did, when most people I've spoken to absolutely have no idea what he's referring to after having seen the film. Because it's just not really there. Um, but the thing is, he's the author. He's the one who wrote this. So are we going to tell him that he's wrong? That he's got the wrong interpretation of his own character? It's like, how could that possibly make sense? Um, and it's like, well because he he didn't put it in the fucking movie, I'm sorry. Like, and this happens to loads of things, and you just have to be like, sorry, author, the second you publish, you're out. You're no more an insightful source of, um, like, a, a valid source of uh, commentary than anyone else. I was about to say, it probably would be more insightful, but, uh... Not always. Not always, no, not always. But probably, um... Doesn't that violate your laws of canon? Nope. Uh, what people say isn't canon. What what it what the project is is canon. So like Star Wars releases and George says that Luke is a banana. It's like that's nice. <laughs> I love that's your example, Molly. That's a great example. It is a great example. Um, but there are times where it gets complicated. Like if someone says, I don't know, Tally Tubbies was always a criticism of, um, I don't know. Uh, the communist utopia. You'd be like, uh... And the creator's like, it, I had no fucking thing about that. I don't, know what, I don't know what you're doing. And so everyone's like, see? You're you're making it all up. But the thing is, you could actually do that with something that really does have those components and makes it... And it's like really fucking effective. But the author was like, I didn't intend it. And it's like, that's fine. It's when you're separating up the artwork. It's all about the arguments you make. Uh, authors can also have headcanon. True! And the thing is, like, if you... If there's, like, one deleted scene that would have made that all clear for Polka Dot Man, and James got rid of it to save time or whatever, and didn't realize that it kind of fucks with everyone's perception of Polka Dot Man, it's like, it's too late now. Yeah, it's not in the film. I guess you can make a director's cut. 
But he's too late. So yeah, um, I don't know. Was that it? We were on a topic of some kind. Now I don't know where we are. I think that we covered it all. Let's press on. Well, Death of the Author will keep coming back up, and that's fine. Until next time, I suppose. Um, my top three characters are... You know, I'm not even going to read them out. It's about Buffy and Angel. And uh, excellent choices, yeah, all three. Short-Faced Bear versus saber tooth Tiger. Go. Hmm. A short-faced short bear? bear. Hmm. So, if it's short-faced, I guess that means it'll be harder for it to bite down fully on the... I feel I like so, the yeah. saber tooth Tiger might have... The problem is I'm not... Bear sure wins. How big... How big is a saber tooth? No, but did you hear the first part that it's like very flat nosed bear? That's true, face? but even then, do you know how saber tooth tigers would kill their prey? Primarily? That, that was that was my question, was um what are their what are their strategies? So the saber as as far as what I've heard about the Smilodon is that they wouldn't um they wouldn't actually like use their massive fangs for hunting and uh, or the, for the killing okay. of the animal in particular that, right. that was what i was about to ask they it, they would suffocate their animal is what they oh, would try oh, and do they wear it were huge they, they would try and like catch the animal wear it down and then suffocate it which was an unceremonious and often lengthy process right I didn't know what a short face. I thought it was like, oh, a bear, but with a short bear face, with a short not face. an actual species. I didn't know that this was a species. Yeah, the bear wins, no doubt. This thing is huge. And saber. I don't think saber tooth uh, tigers were that big. Well, I have a really cool big, name like, though. Um, fearsome, but... like, saber tooth yeah, you know, it's tiger. Cool it's not a cat. Like it's not a tiger. It's not a. Uh, it's something else. It's the guy from um, Ice Age, Tasmanian right? Tiger as well. It's a Smilodon. It's yes. not even. Yeah, I don't even think it's technically a feline. I'm, I'm not even yeah, sure. Maybe it's the, I mean. yeah. oh, the, the pre-felines. The fuck is a Smilodon? That's the official uh, name of the. That's the saber tooth tiger. Yeah. The Smilodon. Just like Fire is the official from name for the Tasmanian tiger. The Walking With series. I don't know which one it was that had the Smilodons in it though. Yeah. He's, um... Walking with dinosaurs, walking with monsters, those ones? Yeah, yeah. I... Those were great. They were great, I love them. Um, the... I just, I just know that Sabertooths are really friendly. Um, according to Ice Age, I mean. That's like, the name. Yeah. yeah. Smiley smile fellows. Dawn. Yeah. It really, it literally means the smiling dawn. And, you know, how can you go wrong at that point? A great example is Roland in the Dark Tower. There is a major story implication that he's a white man. That's that's what I've uh, heard from people who've read that story, that race changing him is going to have drastic effects on the story. Um, which creates interesting problems in that you'd have to alternate, like, whatever it is that you had in that original story, I guess. Um, Back for Blood is a new game from the creators of Left 4 Dead. Pretty much Left 4 Dead in all but name. Since they don't own the rights to it, will you guys be trying it out? I'm it... not that interested, personally. Um, I think Metal tried it and he said it wasn't that impressive. If, um... That seems to be what people are saying about it, yeah. This is the thing, I'd probably just end up playing Left 4 Dead, I guess. Unless it's significantly better. And then um... at that point I just play Killing Floor. <laughs> Yeah, Left 4 Dead's uh, pretty good. Vermintide's better. Killing Floor. I think I think they're all better than Left 4 Dead, but they have the advantage of coming out 67 years after Left 4 Dead was made and learning a lot from it. So. Yeah, um, and that's why this this game should probably be in that position there's too. Who made it? Yeah, those are the people. It's Turtle Rock Studios. They're, they're the ones who made it. And so, so like hearing that it's hearing that it's only like marginally. I don't even know the metal said any it was any better than Life of Dead. It's like, oh, that's not reassuring. I don't know, and it is in its first version, so maybe, uh, maybe it'll give just it get time. Better over time. I'm hoping. Um, hey Rags, look up the video Tifa in the Box. It's a, it's by Baron Strap. I've watched it hundreds of times. Mm.
Also, Jay, you're my favorite. Aww. <laughs> That's weird. Wow. 12 minutes in, read one super chat, gotten 10 new ones, never changed, fellas. I mean, the, don't point it out, all right? <laughs> People are going to think we'll never catch up, but we will. We will. How? You say how? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to give away such incredible uh, stratagems. Ah, strategium. Suntaran strategem. I know you had a strategium. That's an episode of a show. It is. Is Girl in the Fireplace a historical drama? Yes. What if you told a story that was in the future, like 10 years, and it turns out it was like one-to-one -one with what actually happens, coincidentally? Would it then become a historical drama in future? No, I don't think so. I think that, that one would be me. defined based on your intentions. That one would be. What if fucking all the people who made it died and there was no record of their intentions? Yeah, then I guess that becomes complicated. <laughs> I'm saying in the world where that is the case, though. Um, so in the new model, what if they turn T'Challa into Star Lord? Looking forward to the next episode when they turn Peter Quill into Black Pat. Oh, yeah, they they they're not doing that. No way. The way they turn T'Challa into Star Lord is fucking absurd and crazy anyway. But trying to get a a white T'Challa, oof. Oh, that would be danger zone. So I'm kind of lost here. Are you saying that ethnic essentialism isn't a valid field? Good luck rebuilding IQ testing from scratch. That's a quote. They've got that in quotes. Don't worry. Um, they've, they've said good. the person who said it is Tale of Two Smuds. Which, um, <laughs> Tale of Two Smuds. Remember the Rabbit Sky rags? That was fun. The Rabbit Sky? Yeah. Tale of Two Rabbits. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was a whole thing, for those who don't know. Me and Rags spent like, was it nine hours? Nine and a half hours? On uh, Adam and Sitch's stream going over a debate that was pretty cringe. But hey, a lot was achieved. Yeah, that was fun. That streamers fun achieve time. things. Oh, um. Hey, Fringy, could you exclaim this show? Um. This show! There you go. <laughs> Maybe it's for a meme? I don't know. I'm guessing it is. Um, why is the race IQ statistic thing invalid? So, oh, wait. We, we, luckily, we managed to quote for that one. I assume. Um, the next one is a, is a Buffy-related fuck, Mary kill. It's just like, uh, I never know how much I should... Because no, I can't even it. speculate on the reasoning, okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. You have to uh, just just, you just save all of these up for a Buffy super chat thing. I get. I guess we'll have to someday. Uh, months ago, I commented about Rags getting mad with chat easily and how he's going after them. Just wanted to say he's gotten much better lately, and it shows. Oh. No, chat. Chat has <laughs> coincidentally not said as many things that are fucking retarded. So I was gonna say, I feel like Rags probably get pisses like like fucks with chat as much as he wants to all the time. I don't think he, I don't think there's any change. Same yeah, for me, by uh, the way, and Fringy, which, by the way, I would argue me and Fringy have called out chat more than Rags has yeah. in all of time. If they, if they say things that are really dumb and stupid, then they will be punished for it. In the same vein, if they say something insightful or funny, we will usually be like, hey, nice one, good stuff. That was a good one, yeah, yeah. good job, buddy. For example, hello, Muller. Pretty neat. It's, uh, <laughs> pretty clever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then it just says, looking forward to more from him, meeting Rags. Keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> you bet, yeah. More from Rags. Coming soon. Oh. To a theater near you. Oh my goodness. I have a, a triumph. A, oh, and someone's posted a quote. A really good one from Buffy and Angel. Good quote. High five. Not gonna read it out, though. That's how crazy I'm getting with spoiler protection for the moment. Just wait until I'm on Fringy stream. Post them all there. Yeah. And then we can talk about okay. it freely. Um, check out ethnicity and IQ by Thomas Sowell. IQ difference between groups is small. Many people get higher scores with verbal IQ tests compared to written. There is so much to talk about in terms of the yes. validity yeah, of it IQ tests. Deep. It yeah. is super it's, deep. There's yeah. a lot that goes into it. Statistics are complicated, alright? True. Statistically. Yes. 
Another quote. Oh, it's a great quote. All right, and I appreciate it, but I'm not gonna read it. All right, just. Uh, just watch your video on the father. Your best work. My friend's dad had Alzheimer's. It's been heartbreaking watching him deteriorate before our eyes. Yeah, it's a uh, really rough. Um, and it's rare to find someone who hasn't gotten some connection with extended family with someone who's gotten it. It's um. Yeah. There's a there's a few. Let's call them like bad things that can happen to you in life where I'm just sort of like. Yeah, it sucks. And we gotta like deal with it. But then there are some where it's just like, oh fuck off. Like, what what is this? In, in a way that, you, when you understand how life works, you kind of feel like there's a balance in terms of I fall over and, you know, I graze my my skin and bleed, blood comes out. You're just like in the pain. You're just like that kind of makes sense. But then you find out about the there's some diseases out there. You're just like, oh, that's taking the piss. That's stupid. Like, why would you make this? <laughs> like, it's just absurd. Odd. There's there's a couple of them and um. I think that was, there's that famous, like, discussion with, uh, Stephen Fry and someone else where he's talking about the... Is it like a bacteria that eats the, kids' eyes or whatever? The, yeah, that's it's right. fucked up. There's no, there's no, it's just no purpose that's so bad. Guys, it it's couldn't have been intelligently suffering. designed any other way. Well, I, the, barring all of that, like, because I fucking agree, it's, it's just the matter of Alzheimer's is one of those ones where it's just like, that is cruel. Why the fuck does that yeah, exist? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking um, for the one annoyed religious person in chat now. Well, the one, the one that's left after all this time. I'm sorry, your lore <laughs> should be better written. I don't know what to say. Christian lore is inconsistent. A critique the of the thing, Bible. Uh, the only thing worse than a lifeless corpse is a mindless corpse. Oh my God, was that Confucius? Someone put in uh, quotations. At least we're not ableist. What? 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 <laughs> I'm lost that on that one. Oh no, they've, they've, there's one before it. A while ago we achieved the lowest elementary school grades in my country's history. At least we're not ableist. I mean, it is good to not be ableist. Yes. That's a positive. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, obviously, to the person who sent that message, I hope you're doing okay. Um, it bummed me that people keep bringing up that Faye's actress was Latina despite being pretty white. We Spanish come in all colors. Um, well, so that's interesting for... Wasn't the best example of this um, Apocalypse? For um, X-Men Apocalypse? Oscar Isaac played him and there's people complaining that it should be an Egyptian actor, right? Oh, right, because the guy was from Egypt at the time. I, th I believe that was the, uh, that was the thing. It was super awkward. Yeah. It just goes to show again, like, you shouldn't judge it based on the color. <laughs> you should be very careful. Yeah. Well, it's not that simple. Yeah. Um, I love, 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 love Doom Eternal Combat Loop. I've not played it. I don't know. Um... Of course, Captain Carter is just better, right? Um, from the brief stuff I saw of her, it looked like she might be stronger than Steve with some of the she stuff she was doing. Oh, yeah. Cartoonishly amazing. And then, like, it just got the standard, like, fucking, when she's battling the Eldritch Demon thing. <laughs> it's just like, there's lots of things that happen, they're just like, huh? Yeah. What are we doing here, guys? Also, do you reckon, um... Like, what, like the what if finale will just be gra gra grabbing up all those characters together. Yes, Avengers, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Who's I um? Have no doubt. Who, who are they going to be fighting? Is it Avengers One territory or? I I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Was it Rami Malek in Night at the Museum? I might have mixed up films. That could be true. Oh, that's that. Uh, that'd be one. Yeah, because he played our uh, run it. Damn it. They had really long names. <laughs> yeah, sorry if I, I mixed them up. I honestly just... I Well, just... I mean, there's Oscar <laughs> Isaac. And... Oh, right, but Oscar Isaac is playing Moon Knight, and that's Egypt-related. Is he, uh, is he... Is that a... Because, yeah, I was about to say, he might not be Egyptian. I can't remember. Oh! I, I actually... I didn't even think of that. Hold on. Is, is he... Is his heritage Egyptian? Let me see. Oh, he's from Guatemala. <laughs> um, maybe he's, uh... Yeah, I, I think I was thinking of Rami ah. Malik. That's probably what it was. Yeah, like... But uh, it's... This thing, Rami Malik and uh, Oscar Isaac are both pretty great actors. Um, 
Yes. So I fucked this up. Rami I think. Malik is uh, excellent. He's not Egyptian, you racist. Oh, yeah, apparently, apparently Rami, uh, Rami Malik is Egyptian, so that wasn't the exact. Wait, now mm. I'm confused. Rami Malik is Egyptian, so he is the correct example. Yeah, I got it wrong. Oh, so it was Oscar Isaac then, because he's no <laughs> Cuban heritage. Well, what do you mean, no? So the example I was looking for wasn't Apocalypse. It was um, Night of the Museum because he was playing was an Egyptian guy. Oh, you know, sorry. People, people got yeah, mad about. Yeah. Doesn't this one? What people got mad about it because they didn't know he was Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. The Rami oh, Malek in Night Museum. Ah. I'm pretty sure people were like, "Why the fuck's this white guy playing an Egyptian character?" And it was like, "Ooh, ooh." Whoopsie. Yeah. Gotta be careful. You could also be. You could be white as snow and Egyptian as well. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I want to get some black Russian representation. Those, no, those don't exist. <laughs> there's, like, there's like three, maybe. But those are the unicorns. Um, F of my boy PT Piranha. Yeah, he's dead. Sorry about that. Who's dead? PT Piranha. He's dead. Killed him. Twice, oh. actually. Oh, no. Um, yeah, two of the main characters in the Buffy comic have intercourse and literally birth an entire new universe. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a cum shot. It's, yeah. it's quite quite a quite a storyline, I, I will say. Uh, fun hypothetical. If there was to be an actual movie about EFAP, who'd you get to play yourselves in the movie? Bonus, who'd you Me? get to play Jared? Well, we could play ourselves, right? Uh, I guess the question's assuming we... For I some reason, we, we can't. Can. Yeah, uh, yeah. Someone. Hmm... I mean, it's, I don't know how, how to should answer Should we that. go for just the most, the most obviously inaccurate choice? Someone who's just clearly not like us? Like Idris Elba oh, plays yeah. me or something like that? I was, I was gonna say Idris Elba plays me, god damn it. <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger plays Fringy. <laughs> Someone who's like just that. clearly not I like us. That. I really like that idea. Well, yeah. you could be Emma Stone. Okay. Uh, I mean, she's got range. And I think I think Rags and I can both be played by Idris Elba. I think that's okay. Allowed. Yeah. Oh, what if we all play each other? <laughs> Just <laughs> everyone's like, "Why did you do it this way?" It's like, look, it was. It just it made the most sense. Trust us. So I'm enjoying the um, I'm enjoying the chat suggestions. We got Tommy Wiseau as Jay, Dwayne Johnson as Jay, Matt Jarbo as Mauler, Danny Baller. DeVito no. as Mauler. Mauler, I'd like to see Danny DeVito play you. What about Gal Gadot? I was thinking Danny DeVito for something. Yeah, Gal Gadot plays rags. Oh, we, well, if we get her as you, she can say, No! <laughs> oh, that, actually, that's perfect, yeah. Willem Dafoe is metal. No, Gal, G Gal Gadot <laughs> has Honestly, to play Willem Fringy. Dafoe play metal. So she yeah. can say, No! Oh, wow. <laughs> no, no! Is, uh, that, is, that is uncanny right there. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Who plays movie Bob? Hitler. <laughs> Hitler's uh, like this person. I can't play him. He's so cruel. <laughs> He's so, such a Steve Buscemi as rags. Brie Larson as rags. Kevin James as movie Bob. I don't know who that is. Who's Kevin James? Do you, uh, do you not know who Kevin James is? Comedian. That, that's why I just said I don't know yeah, who Kevin James is. Yeah, I assume that's what that means. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, alright. <laughs> Sorry, you got me. Alright, you got me. Uh... That's why I just said, that's why I literally just said the words, I don't know who Kevin James is. Yeah. Well, you're uncultured, Jay. You haven't watched Mole Cop. What's that who he is? Wasn't there, was there two Mole Cops? Um, yeah. no, Kevin J so there were two more cops, but Kevin J holy- wait, you said who's Kevin James, right? Paul Blart? I was- yeah, yeah, sorry, I just got the wires crossed in my head there for a minute. Yeah, there are two of those. Back flat. You also smaller. played the zookeeper. <laughs> I feel like they should be a franchise for more cop that's much larger. It's a very, very interesting content. Elijah Wood is springy. 
<laughs> James Corden is Mauler. Oh no. I almost said James Corden is James Corden. Yeah, you got, you got Mauler dressed in a little mouse costume thump, uh, humping the there's, air. There's a meme of that. Traffic in LA. There is a I, meme I of much, that. I much prefer the suggestion of James Corden to play Jay Longbone. What? I, I, I will in say, blackface. Like, Dude, imagine how angry you'd be, but like on that topic of the the Corden thing, you're trying to go to work and you get stopped by a flash rob promoting some shitty Cinderella remake, and then James Corden comes up to you and humps the air in front of you. Like, just imagine that being your Monday morning. I just think they got incredibly lucky with the people they found. Like, they didn't even honk. It's like, yeah, you know what, if that happens to me, I'm just honking. Maybe the whole they just way didn't show maybe, the ones who did. Maybe. It, it well, no, because be it was filmed from inside the car. That's true. The guy was filming from inside his car. But it might maybe it's just that in LA you get used to shit blocking traffic because like they film productions all the time. Because it's just an apocalyptic shithole that you're just like, oh well, they're not mugging me or that's this is all right. You don't know they're not going to mug you, Rags. You don't. Well, I, I don't think. Much, I don't know. Well, you say, if it's James Corden, yeah, I'm sorry. you know that. I would really enjoy the news story of James Corden performs a flash mob and then mugs uh, commuters <laughs> then to mugs promote people, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> Still to promote Cinderella, like, this, the mugging yes, is for business. I mean, that'd be a news story, that'd get people talking about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, who's gonna watch that movie? Like, really? James Corden. The last well, in that... I suppose he'll watch it, yeah. The last in that question, by the way, was who would be cast for Jared? Like, we could do, um... um what's his name, Amy Schumer? Kristen Stewart. She could no, get into the role. the most dignified and amazing actor that you can that that you can get to for portray Jerry. Brian Cranston. <laughs> Charles Dance. Charles Dance. Charles Dance. <laughs> Very well. Dad, you you're so excited about that one. You're clipping the microphone there. You know, like, oh, come on. I'm, I'm sorry about cooking my microphone. Who doesn't want to no, see it's, it? It's okay. It's all right. I'm sorry. I just want to see J Charles Dance play Jared Genesis. It's the role he was born to play. I was play. about to say, yeah, that could be the the iconic role for his life. Or you could have Patrick Stewart, and we could call it Star Trek Genesis. Yeah, we could, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, as a fan of Buffy and Angel, have you seen Firefly? Brilliant casting, character chemistry, will building, and plot. Yeah, I've always liked Firefly, but I would need to rewatch it. I haven't seen it so long now that my references are thin. But um, Firefly has the obsessive community for a reason. It just never got beyond season one. Hey all, how you doing? Can I get Fringy to say oo but like oo wo oo wo Mate, oo wo Alright, there you go, you got it close In up the too. Frog Australian accent. Rags and Jay, say your best oo too. Oo too. I feel like this is probably for meme, so we should say it at separate times. Oo oo. Oo oo. And then I gotta do it ooh, deep, ooh. so oo woo. That oh was a great God, movie moment. Staring into my, just staring <laughs> into my soul there. Uh, would you guys consider the first two Scooby Doo movies for Halloween fat movies? Sure. That'd probably be fun. I would What's totally watch Zombie Island, man. That would be great. Are we talking about the live action one or the animated ones? Oh fuck. Uh, sorry. If you're talking about the, yeah, I mean live action ones, I'm on board with too. Yeah, I'm fine with them. Well, yeah, actually, I don't even- I just assumed that Zombie Island was one of the first- What are the first Scooby-Doo movies? I think it animated? was the first. Oh, neat. At least- at least the first new ones, I think? I'm not right. sure, though. Because they were made for TV movies back in the day. I don't mm -hmm. know if they were ever, like, released. Uh, Mola, how goes the comics homework? Great that you're now a regular on, uh, Real BBC. I've not gotten homework yet, but, um... They've already decided on what my first homework's gonna be, so yeah, I'll finally be reading some comic books. Though it is funny to see them speculate because they know who I am, so they're like, hmm, <laughs> we should probably choose accordingly. I have no idea what I'm gonna end up with, but uh, yeah. Can't wait for the hot takes. I know, right? They'll give me like the best comic book of all time, and I'm like, this is pretty cringe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that's probably what's gonna happen with at least one of at least one of us can say that this is the best comic of all time, right? You're gonna hot take on one of them. Well, I know that Civil War has a good reputation, I think, over there, and, and from what I understand, Civil War is a book that I'm probably not gonna like. Or at least I'll have issues with it. Certainly fucking oh, Civil War I mean, 2, holy shit. I, I've, I've, I mean, I've told you about Civil War. That, uh, it's, it's 
not good. As long as there's stuff to be able to compliment in it, I should be fine. But like Civil War 2, I would struggle to fucking talk about things I like uh -huh. in it. What's the deal with Civil War 2? Uh, so Civil War 2 is Minority Report, Captain Marvel is pro-Minority Report, and Tony is anti-Minority Report, and, and like, they have arguments about it, but it's not meaningful because it feels like Captain Marvel is just never considered at all the counter-arguments against prosecuting people for crimes <laughs> before they've committed them. So it's really... And then, like, they just make bad decisions. Like, at the end of the comic, Tony is, like, they're having issues and they're fighting each other. They just have these big epic battles. And right at the end, Tony fucking comes in with giant Hulk bust to try and kill. Yeah, Rock yeah, kills. wait. So, so like, the, the context is Spider-Man is told that he's going to kill Captain America. Captain America's talking to Spider-Man like, hey, man, don't worry about it. I know you'd yeah, never do that. And then Captain Marvel is like, hello, Spider-Man, let's go to jail. Come on, uh, we'll, ha we'll have a chat. I want you to stay away from Captain America in case you kill him. And they're, they're talking about that, and then Tony just blasts in and fucking attacks <laughs> Captain Marvel. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, Cold Buster. Thanks, Tony. And, well, and then <laughs> he gets... Tony. Well, as in, so what, as in this is pre licensed Captain Marvel, I'm imagining. This is just... Well, it's a comic... I, I don't know what the, like, I'm not sure what the distinction would be, I guess. Also, yeah, there's an evil yeah. clone of Thor that's a robot or whatever. It, it's not Civil War 1. The like robot Thor. I mean, that's not that's not a bad idea. All right, that was in the that was in the original, and they build it, and then it kills one of the heroes because they didn't build it with a no kill <laughs> function. Um, mm. and then and then I remember like doesn't I think Tony tries to like blow up Peter as well. He comes to talk to him like, oh yeah, that was crossing the line. He's like, oh, we have to do this, and they lock all the heroes in the negative zone or whatever, and then they just teleport. Oh, I think the best part is right at the end cloak just teleports them all into the middle of new york it's like man of all the places like you could just put them in a field somewhere yeah. <laughs> like in the middle of the countryside you got to drop them in the like most important city in america so they can have a massive battle and destroy it and then like a bunch of, like it, it legit seems like captain america is about to kill tony and then all the the civilians tackle him they're like no stop it you're destroying our city Oh. Yeah. No. And and then he turns himself in because he was on the wrong side, even though, like, Tony was doing very villainous things to try and push his side forward. That's why I like Civil War, the movie, a lot more. It dials it in a bit. Yeah, and the who's Arms correct down. is complicated. It's more complicated, yeah, because, yeah. Um... I'm all fine for swapping things, but it's a two-way street. At the end of the day, a good story is a good story, but there's other factors at play that resonate with people besides just the story. If a story is a cultural-slash-historical tale, then some changes can be jarring. I think it's worth appreciating all the different things that can make someone um, be put off by content. But ultimately, like, if you're trying to separate them into categories and judge them, then, um, and by the way, this, this really does apply. If they made a white blade, right, I would be like, what the fuck are you doing? At the same time, if someone said, do you think it's impossible for it to be good? I'd be like, well, no. It could be good. No, but why would you do this? Yeah, and that applies to all of these. Like, making Anne Boleyn black is weird as fuck. Like I said, it's like, what are you <laughs> doing? Um, but I just want to make sure that we don't get lost to the point where we say, like, this story is now automatically bad. Do not watch it. It's like, well, I mean, for all we know... You, you gotta feel bad for the creators out there who are like trying their best to tell incredible stories and then this, I don't know, studios tell them you gotta be doing this thing and they're like, oh. Like, like what about what about that scenario where someone does the thing because they didn't want to but they were forced to but they still write a really good story? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be studios either. It could literally just be like, oh, we want to tell the story of Anne Boleyn but we're like a small company and we only have like certain actors available to us. So we, like the best... Like we have, we have three actresses who auditioned for the part of Anne Boleyn, and the only good one was this black woman. It's like, oh, should we just not make the production then, or should we have a, a black Anne Boleyn? Like that's completely like what? what I mean, what would people who were upset by Am, uh, black Anne Boleyn say in that situation? I guess is my question. And someone said the BBC is not a small company. Well, Joe's just offering many yeah, reasons so it that, could that happen. Yeah. If mm -hmm. and. And that's the thing, I still think there are plenty of reasons it could have... I mean, what if this woman is a fucking incredible actress? What about that? Could happen. Yes, yeah, so I mean, so what if you look at this and you're like, man, this is the best performance I've ever seen. I couldn't imagine this, you know, this being made with anyone else in the role. 
Well, like I have to imagine, and again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to she tickle does... this back up again, she, but like, just... go ahead, go ahead. Just, just that, um, I, I, I want Nick Fury to be Samuel Jackson at this point. Like, I wouldn't want him to be swapped out. Not, but at the same time, if they did an alternate universe, multiverse thing, and there was a white Nick Fury played by fucking, I don't know, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. And I'd be Huge like, well, I mean, that's, that's okay. Let's give him, yeah. What were you saying, Rex? Let's say, what if this actress is so insanely good that from this point on, if <laughs> Anne Boleyn is ever de depicted, she has to be black, or people will lose their shit? They get outraged. Like, the fuck is this white lady doing in this? Mola thinks black people can act long. Dude, some black actors are fucking phenomenal. Called Blackters. Blackters. Uh, oh yeah, I know that everyone is capable of bad takes, but what about your thoughts on the recent Smud Boy thing? Also, what the fuck, Smud? I mean, if you rewind to the 10 minute yeah. mark, you will find a full discussion on it. 10 minutes, I think, is around about when we start. Um, Scarjo in the Ghost in the Shell movie isn't Asian, but she looked like the main character, and some Japanese people thought she was a good choice. I have not seen Plus. that. Uh, Plus, if anyone who knows anything about the source material should know that Motoko Kusanagi is not... Like, she never had a body. That's the whole thing. She never had a physical body. So, she is unique in that regard. So, it doesn't matter if she looks Asian or white or black or anything. That's kind of the whole point. I mean, the show is called Ghost in the Shell. Hmm. Still, the... The, the um... What was it, the prospect that they were going to use CGI to make her look more Asian? Mega cringe. Is that a- that was a thing, right? I'm not just making that up. Imagine they did that to make someone look more white. It's like, we use CGI to make someone look more white. <laughs> it's oh. like, you're not allowed to do that. Well, remember, um... I don't think you're allowed to use CGI to make someone look Asian. I don't think- Oh, but it- doubly so. Remember, the, the Idris Elba wasn't black enough for Luther, so maybe CGI could have fixed that. But uh, but uh, make him blacker, damn it! We well, can't. That was, that was, that was we can't. Culturally. We've turned up the black. <laughs> that that, that argument was uh, that. I'm sorry. That quote unquote argument was that he was culturally. From, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe not, you can not, add not, culture not through not CGI. Not that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not that his like that his skin tone wasn't dark enough, but like that he didn't come from like a black enough area or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Which makes it. Which makes it better? No, it doesn't. No. I don't think so. I, oof, it's such a... It's all very oof. It, it, it starts to curl you back around to, to like, dangerous territories. Um, yeah, do, does do. that make it better or worse? Because, um, like, I think I think it honestly makes it worse. Because if, if they're talking about, like, this character needs to be played by someone with a darker skin tone, at least that's something that you're going to see on screen. Whereas, like... Like, this actor comes from a different cultural background, it's like, okay, he's an actor. I was gonna say, that's the fucking craft, is it not? Yeah. Um... Do, do, do. Uh, you Hello? said you want to learn more about the event when breaking down Chernobyl. Uh, could the stakes and depiction of radiation be classified under adaptation argument? If, um... Yeah, it's an adaptation of history. If they appeal to our understanding of radiation, for us to understand the effects of it, then, and then they also break, like, how radiation works, then, um, I would probably point that out as a, as a failing on the show. Like, if they depict everything as it would happen with radiation, except for a few things that get in the way of them being able to tell the story they want to tell, then I would see that as a flaw. Um, but as far as I know, they, they do it really well. I don't know. That's the thing, I don't really know a lot about radiation, I just know it's bad. And it, like... Fucking, if you get a huge dose of it, it'll melt you from the inside out. It's horrifying. That's like one of the top tier worst deaths, I assume, right? Yep, definitely up there. Or Spider-Man. Oh yeah, Spider-Man killed people with his radioactive cum, right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, what were you referencing? I was in that just he got um, <laughs> bit by a radioactive spider, so it's oh. radiation poisoning and death. <laughs> No, he got a he got a different result with that. He was, he was he lucked out. I feel like if if you had a choice of what happens in Chernobyl or getting Spider-Man powers, probably going for the the latter, right? Hmm? I I you know what? I don't even need to clarify that question with you. I know what your answer would be. It's okay. Hmm. 
That's how I'm, well I'm I know there. you. Because of in game noises, so I'm just going to agree. Mm hmm. Um, the bridge of death isn't true. Is that uh, the part where they're all watching? I'm not 100% sure what the bridge of death refers to. I'm sorry. But if it's like where people were at what times, you know. Or if it's something else. Um, there cannot be EFAP without first a great tism. The greater the tism, the longer the EFAP. It's true. Plus bonius. Yeah. Uh, okay, I've played through the Dead Space trilogy for the first time recently. First is good, second one's great, and the third one is a game. Hi, Rags. Oh, Rags is muted. He would have said hi. Uh, I'll say hi. Hi. Whoa. You just I remember stole. The, um, I think it was the stream covering Quentin's TLJ video where Rags went away and uh, the guests alternated between saying hi when people said hi, Rags. That was that was fun. All right, I guess I'm next then because Fringy's not here. Oh. <sighs> um, it's just you and me, Wumbo. It is. Mola, play Sonic Heroes, not Super Mario Sunshine Challenge Impossible. I, I, I don't like playing Sonic Heroes, okay? I used to when I was a young man, but... I did not enjoy playing that on Super Night Catcher. I'm sorry. Uh, Mola play Sekiro. Jay, have you played Sekiro? No. Wow. Uncultured. I'm basically playing Cyberpunk. Uncultured. I'm getting, I'm getting frames right now, so I'm going to stop playing because I think my PC is just good enough to play this game. So if I'm doing other stuff with my PC at the same time, I get frames. Wow. Look at you doing other stuff with a PC. Some people can't even do stuff with a PC. Well, I'm very privileged. Mad, mad, mad. Yes. There you go. Mm. Jay and I shared a pineapple pizza with a straw once. Facts. Wow. How, how did that go? Great. Did you... I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've done that with so many people that I don't know who you are, but like, I'm sure it was a good one. Mm. I Is... don't under like, those words in that order, like, I don't... I think I first read that and was like, am I having like some kind of stroke? Hmm. It's like, I understand pineapple pizza and then with a straw, I'm like, am I just not comprehending the words correctly? I guess you could blend it all, right? Oh yeah, 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 that must be. Yeah. Yeah, we did it, we solved it. Of course, I, I knew that already. because Yeah, you, you knew that. Um, when will we get an EFAP movies on Tariq Nasheed's movie, B Buck Breaking? So that's the... The one where white people are slaves, right? Or is that someone else? Because I remember someone else mentioning that before. Cracker. Oh. Well, then I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's very plausibly more than one of those films. Yes. Also, why is an Australian here not eating grass upside down in prison? Damn. How do you know he's not? Australians eating grass stereotype. Can can someone explain that to me? I think they just they enjoy the idea that everybody's eating grass. So they just mentioned it as a sort of like I hope this is you know in there with all the other things. Oh. It's not that I don't trust you, but I'm gonna wait for chat to answer this one as well. I mean they're, they're gonna 100% the agree. In Australia. <laughs> Why are you talking about fictional places all the time, Jay? Oh sorry, I forgot Australia doesn't exist. Now I have to ask, is Man of Steel better than Rise of Skywalker? I... Rags, what do you think about uh, that? Yes? I think so. I, the Rise of Skywalker, so. they don't know which way is up, which is pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that's catastrophically bad. Mm-hmm. There's a whole army that don't know which way is up. What's the most significant floor in Man of Steel? It's like, probably the... Is it like the wormhole stuff or the the world building? Uh, I think it's the world building. The the idea that all of the outposts die. It's like man. <laughs> yeah. No way. Oh, the baby killing was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> the civilian genocide. Is like, <laughs> yeah. Uh. I'd like to have an in-depth conversation about Metal's blowhole. Meme developed some wonderful lore involving Fringy penetrating Metal's blowhole. Look at Meme Repository's oh, no. Twitter feed. Hashtag blowhole. Oh, wow. They've been busy while we've been away. 
Got blowhole lore. Uh, Shadow Warrior 2 plays better than Doom Eternal. I have not played either. I can believe it. When? What's the latest on the boys video? In... It, 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 there isn't an update on any of the things. The videos come when the videos come. That's the new philosophy of this channel. Or at least my channel. I assume you guys are similar-ish. <laughs> No know. promises made means no promises broken. Exactly. I am similar-ish. I have, I have, I know what I'm working on, and I know when it's coming out, but you don't know. <laughs> That's the way it be. I appreciate uh, that people just just want to know for the sake of like knowing what's next, but uh, expect surprises. Uh, if it was ever possible, would you allow Cinema Roberto on as a guest? Yeah, we would. I'd have so many fucking questions for that man. Like, Cinema Roberto. There are many issues. This sounds exactly like the Dark Town movie. Roland is white in the books, but Idris Elba playing Roland is amazing in the movie. The issues with the film aren't his, it's everything else. Yeah, I, I would imagine that. I was gonna say, does anybody know of a movie where Idris Elba was shit in it? No. Not really. I don't. I'm the not aware Suicide of Squad. Hey, he was neat in that. He made blood stuff a sport-like activity. Um, in secondary school, teachers would put The Simpsons because episodes would be vaguely related to the subject. Any excuse to put The Simpsons on, right? Oh, I see. So they, they would play episodes of Simpsons if they had any vague connection to a, a lesson. That's clever. That's the way to do it. <clears throat> I was gonna say, uh, our history lessons, every once in a while we'd get to see some movies, and... Um, I don't remember it as well, but Downfall was definitely one of them. Um, uh, was it All Quiet on the Western Front, I think, was another one? And Saving Private Ryan was definitely one. It's like, man... Gets you to, I guess, understand the level of the atmosphere, but also is just fucking top-notch movie-making as well. Um, oh my god, I don't know if I can say this. I, I, this got, uh, this was said in, um, in, I think, Metal's chat, or, oh no, Fringy's chat, I think, and it got, it got <sighs> caught by Twitch, but I think YouTube's still okay oh, with it, I guess. Right, yeah. Oh my goodness. They got, I'm so excited. well, it's, it's, the, it's just the stand, it's the Ching Chong Bing Bong, they say that, and it's like, oh god, I don't know how long you can do. That, that's, What's wrong with Ching Chong Bing Bong? That's already something. If you say it on Twitch, it gets caught by moderation. Why? Because I, I imagine because people, it's too commonly associated when. It, I mean, this is literally about to reference the legend of the Tin Wings. I, th I think it's pretty <gasps> clear what's being referenced. Why would Why would anyone associate the 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 sounds Ching Chong Bing Bong with Legend of the Ten Rings? I don't know, right? Why would they do what? that? Is it to mimic the fact that so much, uh, so many words in Mandarin are just one syllable? I guess so. Maybe I don't know. That's that's a, I don't know. Um, more. If you don't want to read that, I think Rags will. Also, hi Rags. <laughs> Hello. Well, you know, as soon as it becomes a violation of TOS, I won't be reading it anymore. That's, that's, that's the basic way I can figure out the rules of this whole thing. Um, it's not that Rags stopped from yelling at chat. Chat just lost. Rags is still best boy. That's true. Chat has lost all of those. Um, <laughs> every single I'm, fight. I'm, every single one. I'm, I remain undefeated. Dude, look at my fucking awesome garden of sunflowers right now. Look at this. Oh, I'm gonna get one more. Uh, also, can Black Superman be from Mufasalis Muf instead of Metropolis? I mean, he could still be from Metropolis, right? Yeah. There's Theoretically. Black, are there black people in Metropolis? I'd have to imagine that there's plenty. Why? Because in the, here and there. there's a big melting pot, as I understand it, Metropolis. You know, you've got all of everyone there, including Martians. And they engage in the, the career of manhunting. That's not a very... That's not a great name 
to have. Well, yeah, we talked about it on like, the protect, yeah. the Snyder Cut. He introduces himself to Ben Affleck's Batman as "I am the Martian Manhunter." It's like there, there's uh, some who call me uh, the Martian <laughs> Manhunter, and I'm like, uh, should I be concerned? Or... <laughs> have you found? Don't worry, just evil man. You're like, okay. Or a Martian who is a man, and also he is a hunter. Is that what you mean, right? I hope. I don't know. I, 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 I was so... I wished for his own movie. I wished for three more Snyder Justice League movies to really understand the Martian Manhunter, but nope. Yeah, nope, like nope, if someone nope. came up to me and said, Ah, oh, hello, Rags. There are, uh, my name is Gormflame, and, but there are some who call me the Chilean dog strangler no oh. i'm like oh okay oh that's not good um still miss the whole race iq thing somehow but it seems like a boring slash not fun <laughs> discussion whatsoever uh, so it's not whatever it's not fun um it's not fun. i mean it's annoying it can be funny. Uh, it can be. It can be funny. When you see what people are saying, and it's just like, dude, what are you doing? I would rather we, we're not. We should move to something less contentious, like the like the gender, uh, the the gender hilarity statistics. What's the funniest gender? Hitler. I mean, if I mean, well, I, I laughed. So <laughs> Hitler, <laughs> male, female, and Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That, like hit after Hitler, all the men were like, "All right, the Council of Men has decided that Hitler was such a jerk that he is no longer going to be considered a man." Ladies were throwing him over to you, and the women were like, "Uh, uh, 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 no, no, no." The Council of Women entity, we have decided that he is definitely not a woman either. You can't just do that. So we're gonna throw it back to you guys, and they're like, "Nah, uh, nah." The Council of Men has already ruled on this, we're gonna have to throw it back to y'all. And eventually it was decided that he would simply become his own gender, Hitler gender. That's pretty cool. Right. Oh, I thought I could find that. Lur. Like it, I like it. Um, it's just hard to get non-biased information on this in regards to the race IQ thing. I mean, <laughs> Don't, I don't know. <laughs> Just, I don't know what, don't just, take it, why you're taking interest in even looking it up. <laughs> I don't know. Don't even worry about it. It doesn't don't matter. Don't even worry it about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It won't impact your life in any way that you could possibly imagine because you no. only judge people as individuals and not representatives of their race. Fucking true, Dad. If they keep race swapping all the characters like Little Mermaid for inclusion, will it get to a point where there are no roles for white males? So. <laughs> I don't think the, a that's white male was playing happen, Ariel, so I don't you're think okay there. <laughs> no, that's a bad example. Um, yeah. Maybe she could, maybe she could be a swimming nipple, and they could call her Ariolus. Oh, um. I was wondering where that, you were going with was, that when you said that, maybe she'd be a swimming. Nipple. I was actually, yeah, I was like, <laughs> there are many places this joke could go. <laughs> this is why you stick. It, I, this is why you stick to the very end. You gotta, you gotta hang in there for some of these. <laughs> Accept the premise so that we can enjoy ourselves. Honestly, you know what? I, I want to live in the world where you just said, what if she was a swimming nipple and then stopped? And that was that was what <laughs> That's I something we have to ponder on, yeah. What if she was a swimming nipple? Ding sound. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, for realsies, though, if it actually got to a point where it became a problem that no white males were getting acting jobs, I'd, I'd be really fucking surprised. I'd be like, wow, how do we, we really got here? Because still got to be plenty of roles for them, I, I imagine. I would imagine so. Well, yeah, we still need a we still need horrible, stupid villains. Yeah, we party. need villains, so we should be yeah. golden. <laughs> and generals who are just the worst at being generals. Generals that hate their own men and want to lose the war. Those kinds yeah, of generals. That's my favorite archetype. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the men the, who <laughs> kill their own men. I love that one. <laughs> hey, I don't need my men. It's not like you do things. <laughs> I, I need less things done. All right. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just like. I'm really interested in what the actual statistics are for who gets like how many roles, uh, and like, and especially in sort of like what kind of role in the story. This is like, well, that's an interesting one in terms of who more often gets to be the leading character. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like even as many as ten years ago that it was very disproportionate. 
um, even taking into account the uh, demographics. But I guess that's the question, right? Is how relevant is it as a thing to talk about? What, like, well, what exactly thing, right? are you striving should... to achieve by doing this? It's like, so representation doesn't matter in the individual property, but it matters overall of like this is the art that the society produces because if it uh if there's a big disparity between like the races that live in a society and the people who are or you know whatever demographics live in a society and then what's portrayed on screen then that's representative of some kind of flu flu well i guess that's the right question there. does well, that matter does that matter and if so what do you it's... need to do to address well, it it's I would say in and of itself, it's it's not like no. an issue in itself, but it is right. probably means. Well, it, it, it probably depends represents as well. It depends on the size. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. It probably, mm -hmm. it probably represents a broader issue that has nothing to do with films themselves. Yeah. So as well. Okay. So like, if it could be an issue in itself, like you know, it's like if it's like we have a five percent Asian population in Flumpville, but uh, only one percent of leading roles are Asian people. Oh, that's like a bigger problem, you know, like, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so if, oh, sorry, so I, I fucked up my uh, So if it's like, <laughs> we have a 5% Asian population in Flumpville, but only 4.5% of leading roles are Asian people. Like, I don't think that that's a problem in and of itself. Whereas something like, uh, we have 5% population, but only 0.3% of roles. I was like, I think like, at that point, that isn't in and of itself an yeah, issue. Yeah, you're wondering, like, why is it, we we have, that's like, that's the thing that you see and you're like, okay, Although, so why is like, this the case? So even if it's like a, a small disparity, then like, why is this a case? That could be an issue the, anyway. Like, but even without considering why, it's like, oh, only like zero, like a massive disparity. It's like, oh, that's really going to affect like the job prospects of certain actors, you know? But like through no fault of their own. That's like that, an that at that point, point is an issue itself. Yeah. Like, or would it mean excluding that excluding a huge number of people from being able to participate? I mean, I guess if it's if it's a if, if it's one of those issues where it like like the reason for it in terms of for whatever reason, maybe a totally fine, harmless reason, do less Asians just want to be actors? Yeah, I mean, because that's not a problem if they just really just it just happens to be they don't want to be actors as much. But if they well, want to be and they're not getting the jobs, yeah. Then... I'm doing this for you, Cyrus K. I saw the message. I'll do this mission. It's gonna be pain. For leading roles with Asian like people, right? As as you know, you you, you wouldn't have fewer films made with lead, uh, leading Asian roles. You probably would have like some fewer, but surely the dis the disparity there would mean that just uh, it was easier for an Asian actor to get work because. Proportionally, that's just from? yeah. So it's like if there's a smaller pool of actors, but there's still the same stories being told, then that's going to be the result. Is it as an Asian actor, it would be easier to find work. In the same way that I think, like, I don't know, I could believe that it's easier to find work as an actor if you're a dwarf, or that it's harder. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Or but if like, there is a I dwarf very... role, you're more likely to get it. Well, yeah. If there's a dwarf role, like as a as a dwarf, you know what? It's probably uh probably you probably stacked up against most other actors there for that role um do you think so the people who do you, do you think the people who uh don't cast dwarves when they could like the directors and producers do you think they're short-sighted no <laughs> maybe they would be far-sighted at that point i'm not sure i mean i don't i don't know how, the, how it works i'm just i'm just really not certain i guess as long as I mean, as long as the results are not from, like, some injustice that's happening, yeah. it's all right. For but, example, if you know, when you see some numbers that are really skewed, you should look into them and find out, like, why they well, are. Even, they like, are. even even if it's not as a result of an injustice, even if it is just like, you know what, this the society is, like, obsessed with telling fucking, I don't know, um, yep. World War One stories, and as a result, very few women are getting roles because it's like literally the majority of art that this society produces is World War One stuff about like men on the front lines. So there are very few. Like, at that point, it's like, oh, then like that's a problem in and of itself because if you're a woman well, and you want to go into like acting, you're probably getting shafted. Well, that's that's the interesting part of the conversation, isn't it? Is why are people making the decisions that they're making on what stories they want to tell and who are in them? what is what is the uh why why would they be it's not that they're doing anything wrong at all it's more of a question of like now why are you making that decision is there some yeah. broader societal influence that's making you make this decision and is that resulting in a very disproportionate 
in a way that excludes a lot of people from having an opportunity to participate. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. If for some reason we had a future where everybody only well, wanted I... to tell stories about World War II and therefore women weren't getting roles, I'd be like, um, is the suggestion here that we mandate stories that involve women? Well, no, I mean, that's the thing, like, you can't... I don't think I would ever want to you do can't, that, no. You can't, like, this, it's not a problem that has, like, a, a real solution, it's just like, man, that, that sucks. There is, yeah, there is a result that's definitely not ideal, that just happens yeah. to be what it is. Mm -hmm. I it's guess one of those, problem um, might it, not be the right word. It's like you don't, it, it's like, is it a problem that uh, a lot of sport, like basketball, for instance, you're not going to see a lot of obese short people. You're not <laughs> right. being represented in basketball, you know? I well, guess yeah, the at the same time, like, acting is, is not a... It is a, di a very different thing to basketball, as in... Um, I find that an interesting example, actually. It's the idea of, um... It's, it's a... It's a it is a field where you need to be able to compete at a certain level to be able to perform. And so, then the question would be, why are certain people bad- I did that level. It was fucking hard, okay? That level's pain. You people in chat, you know. It's pain, but it's done. People only want to watch gay porn, femo femoids most affected. <laughs> 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 only gay porn, state mandated gay porn. So yes, the state starts mandating straight porn be made to get female uh, uh, porn stars some work. There's just one guy out there yeah. who wants it and he's like, I will watch all of it many times. I will support oh, this industry. Uh, Jay, what about High School Musical? What about High School Musical? What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not what sure how that works. Yeah. We need, we need more information than that. Yeah. Why is the chat is just full of people saying pain, but I don't see any arguments here. Like, is well, this... don't that doesn't regard you. That's uh, what is uh, that's what is this? I just I just completed was probably the most glitchy and hard level in this game, and oh, I, okay. it's 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 amazing. I got it on the first try. It's fucking horrible level. It's not as bad I'm as really the Poisoned River one. Okay, we'll do that one next. I'm really waiting for this person to, to say, what about High School Musical? Like, I don't... <laughs> no, yeah, what, what was the High School Musical thing about? And in, in another way, just sort of is it? Is it, someone said, it's terrible acting, but it's about basketball? Is that, I don't know if that, is that, is that there, the case in that the... film? So it's about, my... mask, it's about, like, so, dancing. So, well, here's mm. the thing, the main character, whose name is, I don't know, it's probably Chad or Travis or some shit like that. He wants to be, he's on a star basketball team. He's very good at playing basketball. He plays basketball with his best friend, Corbin Blue, right? However, it turns out that he's also a really excellent singer mm -hmm. and he's really good at like theatrical stuff, you know? So yeah. that's kind of the conflict is he's torn between <laughs> my first family, my basketball family, and going through and winning the state championships and whatever the fuck high schoolers do, and or or is this, it's like a, it's like Spider Man essentially? Do I want to be a superhero on the court, or do I want to be? I mean, or do, or do I want to be a superhero on the on the stage play or something like that? He's like he's juggling two lives, and they start getting the way of one another, right? And some friends want him to do this, and other people want him to do that. And he's kind of hiding it from the basketball people because it's not as cool to be in plays and stuff. So, but don't forget about the girl though. That's he's torn because he really likes the girl, and you know she she likes to sing, but he well, yeah, but, you know his dad wants him to play basketball. But yeah, his best friend wants him to do basketball. His girlfriend, who, uh, Vanessa Hudgens, who was fired because her nudes were leaked. Uh, Wait, really? She wants him. Yeah, she was fired for that. Uh, apparently, Wait, what are you what are you talking about? Fired from what? High School Musical. I thought she was in them. Me? Wasn't she in all three of them? What are you talking about? I'm pretty sure she was in all three of them. So I think there were. She. I don't think she was in all of them. Yes, yeah, she was. W were there not more? There were three. She was in I... all three. Because I remember, I sort of remember the first and the you second. You sure it wasn't someone else? The, the other one? No, or? They, were, they were definitely, uh, it was definitely her. And I want to say that she might not, have, it, it, it it influenced the her higher ability. She was either fired or not signed on for other things in the future because of that. Because, you know, especially if you're Disney at the time, 
any Oh, any you think like she had other projects with Disney that I can believe that. Yeah, I think that I think that's almost certainly the case because I don't think she did anything after that. I mean, um, she didn't even do anything. Like, how was that her fault? Well, that's where I was going to go next. I don't I don't necessarily think that that means it didn't happen or anything. I'm just saying like that sucks. Oh, here it is. So, yeah, apparently in 2007 photos were leaked um and it was speculated that she'd get dropped from High School Musical 3, but then Walt Disney were like, nah, it's all good. That's um, good. Did she do but then it happened that? again. It happened again two years oh, later, apparently. Oh, no. Um, and that's, uh... I mean, if, if it's got nothing... If someone's hacking a phone or whatever, like... Damn. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, it's not... It's not. It's a massive breach of privacy. Like, it's, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah. High School Musical. Uh, this, Fuck sake. This is really awkward. This is super awkward. So apparently at the time, she she kind of like apologized for the fact that the photos even existed. Um, and that was the reason why she got to stay on High School Musical. Because they're like, well, she said she was sorry. I mean, it's like, uh, sorry to what? I guess it depends <laughs> on the nature of how she put I them out. I guess so, yeah. Like, but if, 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 but if they were leaked, I was gonna if say, they I thought... were private and they were leaked, yeah. then... um. Because that's different than I decided to, like, maybe in my contract, because of, you know, the role in the age group and demographic, mm -hmm. I agreed to not do certain things. Maybe. Uh, I decided to do them, but I, it's, it sounds like she was... Well, Man, imagine, like, I guess you sign a Disney random. contract and it says you cannot take pictures of yourself naked. It's like, oh. You, you cannot speak openly about being an atheist, probably. <laughs> I wonder if that would be one of them. <laughs> not sure. I don't know about that one. So it looks like, um... Now let me see... Um... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Serve, oh, which is the drinks in the party from the shows that you need. I mean, yeah, I'm not I that... Know. Yeah, yeah I, I don't I don't really care that much. Um... What, oh, whatever happened to Hilary Duff? She was another one of those... She, uh... ...and everything. Huh. I'm not sure. I think, I think she, she a, did a couple of things. She's in some TV shows, I think, yeah. Yeah. But, but... And Zac Efron, what's he up to? He's in days? loads of stuff. Is he? Yeah. I'm sure he's fine career-wise. I, uh, I remember him being a good actor and all the stuff that I've seen him in. Well, the thing is, I am... Um, I think ages ago I agreed to do a, an unbridled praise of High School Musical if, um, if I reach a million subs. I can't remember... I think it was... <laughs> I think it was Geeks and Gamers, Jeremy. I, I think I told him I would. So, I've to this day said, if you can find that clip, I will honor it. You don't want to do it just because you love High School Musical and you, you want to further the craft of... Uh, I uh, think that if I were to praise that film, it might actually be detrimental to the film because I can't quite grasp just how incredible it is. And I wouldn't want to reduce it by trying to box it in, you know? Well, would you say that that film, maybe it wasn't made for you? I think like, it was uh, It was made for everybody, time. Rex. <laughs> Well, that's you know, maybe that's true. Yeah, maybe High School Musical really was made for everybody. That's true. Except Steve. Except Steve. Fuck that guy. Yeah, High School Musical isn't. I think Steve has interesting things actual to say. Actual, I just don't agree with him on anything. Okay, it's just it's High School Musical. Okay, that's not like mutually exclusive. He has interesting things to say about some stuff, but High School Musical was not made for him. Yeah, Hitler. No, I, it's when you said Steve, fuck Steve. Fact, I was I like, you. I I don't agree that we should just entirely write Steve off. That's all. I see, I see you, Steve, in chat. I know you're there. I got you back, Steve. Well, not, not even in chat, just watching. Sorry, you've not said anything in chat, but yeah, I know that you're here watching. So Steve is like... always watching. <laughs> Steve is always <laughs> watching. Steve hate watches EFAP because we praise High School Musical. Yeah. I knew those fuckers were up to no good. How much is Disney paying you? All of the money. So much that they can even boot Fringy at will. He wasn't praising High School Musical enough. Like I said, I love High School Musical. It's probably the greatest Space trilogy that was ever made. Lord of the Rings is probably. kind of like blushes it's in its right. presence. Yeah, I I don't want to throw too much shade <laughs> at um Lord of the Rings, but man, High School Musical it's a cut above. Mm -hmm. That you know, one, one of the things I really like about the High School Musical trilogy is that it ends on such a high note. Oh. Uh, Die. No. Oh, we've lost Fringy. We did, he's, he's gone. <laughs> yes, he's gone, it. gone forever. Um, how, long is that, how long has he been gone? Oh, just like like 30 seconds. 
Because just the way you said that made me think, has he been gone for like ages and I've just noticed and I'm a bad person? Well, I wouldn't exclude all of those bonus comments there, but yes, he's been only gone briefly. Like 15 seconds and then you noticed. Which still kind of makes you a bad person. Just kind of. We noticed immediately. Yeah, because we care. Anyway, Bible, an unbridled rage. When? <laughs> if that was ever to be made by EFAP related people, Rags would do a way better job than I would. It would be me, and I'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, no BS should play J and Movie Bob should. Oh, no BS should play J. Movie Bob should play Rags. Mola played by Chris Duckman, and Fringy played by an actual frog. I mean, yeah, could work. This is the thing about adaptation. I just want to see these things play out, see how well they go, see if they can capture the spirit of our characters. Hopefully they can. Now this this is for the EFAP trilogy? I guess so, yeah. I wonder what the, the, the three trilogy, films are focused sure on. That, well, we gotta make sure that the trilogy gets done in the, in the right amount of time. It can't take too long, because we don't want bring these actor to croak. Would they all be 24 hour long? And they're all about our road to critiquing things. Longly. Mm -hmm. Charles Dance voice. They did it all right the way that they did it. Oh, dude, he would nail those lines. It wouldn't even be a question. He would study Jared videos for hours. He'd be like, this character. Squart better be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicolas Cage would play Squart. Yeah, that's that's an easy casting, I'd say. I think everybody would have expected that. Oh no, Fringy. Oh no. What's happening? <laughs> Bring you just booping back in and out. Oh god. Why is this water not splashing him? Ooh. None of it's hitting him. What is this? Glitching? Hmm. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh would be perfect for EFAP minis, just saying it's a gold mine. What is Maybe. Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh apparently is a gold mine, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Oh no, Fringy. Yeah, there we are. Well what happened? Someone attack you? And that doing the flutes, the emus, they've been getting bolder. Oh They're God. encroaching deeper into our territory. It's it's getting a little bit worrying at the moment, I'm not going to lie. The but emu resistance is starting to sabotage our internet infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can call them the emu resistance if you want, but that's, I mean, that would be... That's loaded, that be Rags. They're terrorists. I, they're terrorists. Is, yeah. Know, we're going to be accurate. That's what they are. Um... So, this is it fuck Mary Kill for fictional inventors? And you got fictional inventors. Yeah. So yeah, we list? got Melina from Black Widow. So that's an automatic kill. She's killed. Yeah. Shuri from yeah. Black Panther. <laughs> um, and Wallace. Maybe What's the other option? What's the Wallace other from Wallace like and Gromit. Oh, yeah, I'm marrying oh. Wallace. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we're well, married. Wallace seems like a, a good provider, you know. Yeah, I want to yeah. hang out with Wallace. If and if that means I get to hang out with Gromit too, then it's like a guaranteed yeah, yes. True. Which well, leaves I, you, I can't believe you're marrying him just to get get. Well, wait. Dog. I just want to clarify that leaves the one option no, for the one person, that. and the hey, the hey. only hey. way that happens is as long as Shuri is fucking correct age. I have no idea how old she is in in the canon. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's sure, yeah. That's what yeah, eighteen year old Shuri, right? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd fuck the shit out of 18-year-old Shuri and Mary Wallace and just fucking kill Melina. <laughs> stab Melina again and again. Melina's gone. Oh, no, yeah, Melina's gone. I want her... Don't stab her. I want her to suffocate with that fucking machine she built. Yeah, just I want to, to watch herself. her as the light leaves her eyes and she collapses on the floor. Like, you made this. I, you know what? Time. A family of pigs do it to her and they laugh as she suffocates. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The family of pigs, like, just have her set up on a pike. They put her on the pike, <laughs> roast her over the fire. It's like, now you know how it feels. And they're just point like, point. isn't this fucking great technology, Melina? Isn't this technology so Swear fucking cool? I will, I will say, like, the Wallace thing is, like, imagine all the contraption you'd be building around the house. Yeah. It'd be super... Wallace and Gromit yeah. is excellent. I feel like we don't talk about Ardman stuff much just because they don't do as much at the moment, but Wallace and Gromit is like one of the best things. Just it's one of the, great. It's one of those things that nobody dislikes from what I gather. He no, it's um intelligent and inventive. He does honest work. He doesn't cheat or steal. He has the capacity to have love interests. Um, he takes good care of his his dog, his best friend. Um, he you know he's a good guy. He'll do what's right. 
You'll do what's right. Um, yeah, no, Wallace and Gromit is nice. And they're, and they're a nice and wholesome pair. Mm -hmm. He runs, yeah, he runs. Uh, he's got a good, a good home life. He he gets up on time and he slides into breakfast and all that good stuff. And he slides into all sorts of things to go get those rabbits. And he, not a fan of the animation. How can man? So it's okay. Oh. It's okay. Someone can oh. not be a fan of it. It's okay. Oh. Oh. I think it's wonderful the... animation. Yeah. Um, as, oh. a, as, an, as an English child uh, in my school, some of the animators who worked on Wallace and Gromit came in to do a talk at my school. Oh, uh, well, that, la that, dee uh, da. Awesome. Um, no, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the thing, right? So I was a child. I was really dumb as a child. Oh. So right, <laughs> imagine you get to ask the, the animator the, the, the question, uh, any question to the people who made Wallace and Gromit. You can ask them anything you like. You said you like mm -hmm. cheese. What'd you ask them? I'm almost embarrassed. Well, I am embarrassed to admit the question that I asked them was, did you guys make Shrek? <laughs> what did they say? I was, like, I, was like, I was like six, okay? Um, well, that's they said, a fun No. Question. No. <laughs> well, we, we made uh, a different masterpiece. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, and that that is an accurate statement. They did make a different master. Wallace and Gromit: The Curse of the Were Rabbit is like fantastic. That movie's so inventive and full of charm. It's a really cool movie. Um, I am I'm, pro I'm Curse of the Were Rabbit. Like I'm not sure whether I like it more than Chicken. Chick, that's a tough one. Chicken I'm not Run. Sure. I th I think I. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. I'm not sure which one I could say that I like more. I, I like both of them so much, and. You know what? Because I'm sure you've all seen that. You guys, I should show you the pirates in an adventure with scientists. That's uh, that was one of the ones I made later on. Really I never even heard of it. entertaining. Yeah, nobody did. That's the problem. Not enough people watched it when it came out, including me. And and that's a really great movie. The animation is amazing, and um, has like uh, it has dude. The cast in that movie is stacked. They got like um. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. They had, I think it was Hugh Grant. They had um, David Tennant, um, Martin Freeman. They had a whole bunch of people in that movie. That's great. Cool. Cast. It's, so it's a this, really this good movie, cast. Look, just no one heard of this shit. So, well, the problem is that like, what's it called? I, I don't know. Like, art, uh, the pirates in an adventure with scientists. That's an awkward title. Um, it's like an awkward this. title, it's a, it's yeah. It's a charming title to me, I don't know. But, I, oh yeah, I like it, but um, it's, from a marketing standpoint, it's not super smart to probably name it like What's that. What's it calling it? Shang-Chi yeah. and the Ten Rings or something? I think the reason why it didn't do so well is just because, unfortunately, like, Aardman movies, the most successful ones they made were like, Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, and those made about 200, 300 million, it's like, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, they ain't Pixar numbers though. Yeah. Um, it ain't Disney theatrical numbers at that time. Um, I think it's so just an issue of... It enough profit. Well, it made enough money to justify its existence, but it didn't make enough money to justify a sequel. Um, okay. and I'm not sure if you know this, but you remember the movie Flushed Away? Do any of you remember Wait, that? Oh, yeah, I, like I remember movie. that. Hugh Jackman. So the sequel yes. would have been Chicken Rerun? Uh, the, well, the sequel to the, the Pirates one, I think, was... I saw it, I got it. Uh, yeah, I, I just, but there, there was going to be a sequel to the Pirates one. I think it was going to be Pirates in an adventure with, um, oh. God damn it. I think it was Cowboys. I think that was what it was. And it's like, man, I would I would have loved to have seen that. Um, but, but yeah, so the, as the story goes, and I say as the story goes, this is just true. Um, <laughs> they got a five picture movie deal with DreamWorks. Um, they made the first two, Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit, both of those made money. Um, and then they made Flushed Away, which was the most expensive one, and it lost its money, and then that ended the deal early. The deal was over. But, well, apparently, I, um, I don't think I ever saw Flushed Away. Um, I remember seeing it, and I don't remember much about it. I don't remember nearly as much about it as, like, Chicken Run and stuff. I remember Andy um, Serkis is in it, right? He's, like, one of the... He is in it. Yeah. He plays one of the, the rat henchmen. That had a stacked cast too. Kate Winslet was in that one. Yeah. Just, um, I remember. Um, I remember the jokes about the French frogs. That's the shit. That's I do remember. That oh, people too. want us oh, yeah. to say it was changed to Pirates Band of Misfits in the U.S. Yes, it was. But the actual name is Pirates in an Adventure with Scientists. So that's what I'm going to call it. But um, yeah, yeah uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because America doesn't know what a philosopher is. It is. It is <laughs> the Philosopher's Stone. Why, that's why the name was of that the changed? book. 
because I actually have no, I don't know. I have no I'm idea. I'm going to Google that. I'm actually kind of interested. It really, it really feels like they think they have to dub it down for American audience. Well, and you know here's what? an interesting thing, right? So Who knows, behind the scenes, on Wallace and Gromit, they were pushed aggressively to make it more American. Which oh, is it, like, okay, so it was changed by the American publisher Scholastic because it thought American children wouldn't want to read a book with philosophy <laughs> in the title. <laughs> wow. Which, okay. I mean, been, rather... you're probably correct. But also, can we not do this, please? I don't know about that. <laughs> if, they, if they already know it's magic related and it's a magical stone from a philosopher, like, I don't know if that really, does that make the difference? Like, oh, no, a well, philosopher's stone. Well, if you think about, like, with a kid brain and a, and a young child's mind, because a lot of people were quite young who read this, and they were very much kids' books when they first came out. Um, I feel like that would be... Like, every kid knows what a sorcerer is, but a lot of kids wouldn't even know what a philosopher is. I mean, every kid knows what a... What... Oh, here's the thing. As a child, I literally thought that that was called, like... I, I didn't know what the word philosopher was as a child, and I thought it was... Because I, I didn't read this, this was like, I was very young, my mom read me these books. So, um, as a child I thought it was like, just the name of the stone, it was called like, the Philosopher's Stone or something, and that's what it was. Also, I'm not convinced yeah, that all kids know what a sorcerer is. I reckon all kids know what a wizard is, but... Yeah, I think if it was Wizard Stone... So it was called would... the Wizard Stone, yeah. But I would, I would sorcerer seems a bit it. unlikely, or I less likely. Sorcerer than philosopher. Though the stone, oh. like, like in um, Full Metal Alchemist, it's the Philosopher's Stone. On that, uh, that subject of changing things in America, it is interesting to think about that you would be like, we're DreamWorks, we're going to pay Aardman to make a Wallace and Gromit movie. Make that more American. It's like, dude, Wallace and Gromit is like quintessential British. Very like, British. Yeah. Very British. It's insanely British. Why would you try to change it to... And I think it's apparently... kind of like Killing Floor one and two. The first Killing Floor is very British, right? Uh, and the second one is not nearly so much. Well, I mean, this might be the awkward reality. British stuff often doesn't do as well, like as American stuff, even when exposed to equivalent markets in terms of showing, like, um, I mean, you've got things like you know James Bond and stuff that do really well, but but yeah, the, the Ardman James films Bond, just didn't I make feel... it. How British is James Bond? Yeah, really? I feel like he's a he's a you know he's a British person, well, but like the character isn't a quintessentially British thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. I I don't know that I, I, don't know that I agree with that. But here's yeah. here's what I mean by that. Generally, the the things that happen in the movies, in terms of the action and the set pieces and the places they go, they're not British in the same sense that Wallace and Gromit yeah, is British. So, yeah, as in, as in I think you could. I, what I mean by that is you could remove the Britishness and still capture the appeal of James oh, Bond. What I would I would do a better clarification than that. I think James That's Bond Jay. is more approachable yeah. English. I think it's more approachably British than uh, Wallace and Gromit, because it's just the thing that a lot of people think when they think of British when they don't know much about that country. Like, like, oh yeah, posh accents, suave and like sophisticated. Yeah, yeah, that's like, like I could believe that an American Bond person Bond wrote is... James Bond about British people in the same way that I couldn't oh, believe an American person yeah, wrote yeah. Wallace and Gromit. I mean, I'm not sure that I would go that far. I think I think it is just a matter of it, I... it, it is more approachable to. All right, now we're on cringe level number two. Okay, guys, this will be pain. Nobody's hearing this. Yes, we this can hear you. Point. We can no. hear you. Yeah, we're but... mute on stream. No, the the, the, dude, you they, missed they, out on they, fucking like they, five words. You'll be fine. I... <laughs> It, was, it would have been more if I hadn't stopped, but anyway. Um, no, because you, I unmuted fine, when you were saying fine, that you'd stopped. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm just saying that on this subject, I think you look at, like, Wallace and Gromit, it's like, there's a lot that's probably going to go over your head, <laughs> like, if you don't know anything about British culture, whereas I don't think James Bond is is like that in terms of what it is. Yeah, like, you'd be- But if I you do watch, think it's British. Respond, you might be like, oh, they say MI6 instead of CIA. That's how- how very British. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like, literally, if you flip- if you flip the script, you just- I don't feel like it would be a hard change to make it an American show, uh, film franchise. I think you would lose something if it wasn't British. I think James Bond- I think James brought- I- I guess I just don't agree. I think James Bond is British. I think it has a British identity. Yeah, I won't, I, not yeah. I'm not too invested as... to argue it, but yeah, James Bond is super British as far as I'm concerned. Not as British as maybe uh, Wallace and Gromit. Um, and at the same time, you know, hot, the Cornetta trilogy is fucking hyper-British. And yeah. that's yeah, yeah, popular yeah. as hell. 
Well, well the shows you say that, but those the, the Guy Ritchie movies, those are insanely British. They're those very are British, like, yeah. You're choking on the Britishness <laughs> in those movies. But I feel like you just brought up a good example because Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and World's End collectively didn't make more than two hundred million dollars. Like British stuff that is no, like really. that just doesn't. Yes. Oh. Damn, those, dude. Those films are popular in retrospect, but collect run. It is less than Chicken Run, you're right. And Chicken Run made less money than Monsters Inc., which came out a year later. And it made less money than Tarzan. Man, that kind of just goes to show, before. like, the money made compared to the fucking legacy of those films, you know? Oh, yeah, I think it's. I mean, I think the legacy. Well, I mean, another example is Treasure Planet. That film didn't make, like, a whole lot of money, but a lot of people talk about Treasure Planet. Well. I, I like Treasure Planet, but I do have a I do have a question that maybe people in chat can answer. So like, Treasure Planet is a it's like an ancient pl it's kind of almost the same as a Halo ring. It's like a thing that existed for a long time that's super crazy, and uh, high tech. How did the pirates who went there to bury the treasure rig the planet to explode? Is that something that's even possible for them to do? Uh, we don't know. Well, we have to assume the answer is yes, because the planet yeah, explodes. <laughs> I think um, all we know about the um, the pirate, uh, what's the, the pirate captain, what his name was? Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, uh, uh, Kuma. his face Blackbeard, was that he was like super well-known and infamous for how terrifying he was. And he had a lot of a, a, an incredible treasure and vast wealth. So, I mean, they certainly had the resources to maybe do that, but I, I don't know. There's there's so much about this universe we don't know in terms of That's true. Yeah. technology. Been... It's, it's mm. I did the super hard lily pad level. I'm so proud. It would be like, that's the only thing I remember about it being like, hmm, I'm not sure about that, but otherwise I do like that movie a lot. It's kind of, it reminds me of a Titan AE. Oh, I remember that. that. Seen that. I watched it as a kid a lot, and I really, really liked it, but apparently it's one a lot of people haven't oh, heard of, and it's not much money. It bombed. It, it totally bombed. That, Actually, that yeah, was I was gonna say, I have a memory of that, that it didn't do well, yeah. That was the 2D era when, like, Road to Eldorado, Sinbad, Emperor's New Groove, and, and stuff like that. It was just all not doing as well. And those um, are all... I Even the Sinbad one I really liked. Sinbad's okay, from what I remember. I, I definitely... I, I rewatched Emperor's New Groove, and that film was fucking hilarious. And the, the cool. animation is great. <sighs> Y'all should go, uh, yeah, those in chat, you should go see those movies that we talked about. All of the ones we just talked about. Every single fucking one. Um, Even Titanic, you haven't heard of. Mola Uwu Me Turns Gay. It's alright. Well, nice. It was always there, you know. It was always there. Um, about the smud tweets, I don't. I think people are uncomfortable discussing things about race for good and rational reasons, but stereotypes do come from reality. You be real careful when you say something like that, too. <laughs> exactly okay. what you mean. Like, um, I don't know that any stereotypes were being discussed in in all of those tweets. Um, but that is true. I suppose stereotypes could theoretically still come from just, like, um, lies being repeated, or understandings yeah, that are mistaken I mean, being stereotype repeated. stereotype could come from, like, a popular portrayal, you know? That too. Um, I meant the live-action Scooby-Doo, but whatever works best for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would be up for watching them as well. Yeah, Those I would as well. I haven't seen them in a long time, so... That could be, uh, that could be fun to do. Bye, Fringy. Bye again. Oh no. He really doesn't want to see the live action scoop. No. You guys excited for the possibility of beta for BF2042 this weekend? So, Battlefield. I hear the rumors are true. The lack of appearance at Gamescom and radio silence from DA, DICE and EA is rather frustrating. You know anything about that, Rex? I am out of the loop. Apparently, there's a. I guess, or well, I suppose they mean there's going to be a beta for the next Battlefield game. and Without any, like. It sounds like they're saying like there's just been nothing in terms of like marketing about this. I don't know. I haven't been. I I legit haven't been keeping up with it. I don't really do that with games anymore. I just don't. Yeah. I just do that. So there's so many disappointments and so many things change and I just don't follow. Just wait for them to come out and give them a shot. Well, Legitimately, sometimes. Yes, that's what, I, that's what I do. I wait until they come out. 
got a super chat in just now saying, I only caught the first five minutes of this, so I don't know if he threw smart under the bus, but he's streaming right now and he's doing a much better job of explaining himself and his arguments than on Twitter. Shocking, I know. I would fucking well, hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good. It would be hard for him to do a worse job, because like he contradicted himself a lot and then also just said lots of blatantly like, yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah, some of his tweets were good. Not tweets that I'd say. Mm. They'll put it that way. And Rags only I'll does good alive. tweets. That's true. That's true. All of my tweets are gold nuggets. But his are... They're, they're nuggets, but they're like old chicken nuggets. Old? Oh. Well, that means they're still his, edible, right? A lot of his stances are dumb anyway, so like even if he's explaining his arguments well, they're still like... Argue, like They can't be that good. Wow. Fucking J, Smud Boy, Civil War. Spaghetti-o. Unless he has different positions to the one he was saying, the ones he was saying on Twitter. Was it all know. just for the memes? Who knows? Who can say? Who can say? Lance, you're a coward. Never show your face again. I'm assuming that's related to the surfs. And um, he's super cowardly, but I mean, he can get better. Hopefully. Like holy shit. Life like it's good, but it can't be better. Yeah. Life is good, but it can be better. It was, uh, it was a dreadful performance for a debate, and, and his fucking fans have made him very aware of that, so I imagine he will improve, hopefully. No promises, it, it, it though. It is within his capacity, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe he really is just that stupid and unwilling to change or learn. Who knows? He should uh, do that one-on-one -on -one with Lawrence Southern. I think that would be hilarious. I would watch the fuck out of that. Yep. Quick, CGI jerked chicken into Luther's hands. Oh, that's I get it. Um, I don't anyone remembers it, but COD Infinite Warfare is one of the worst stories I've ever consumed. The SDF are cartoon villains who tell the good guys to surrender for execution, and main protagonist is textbook Gary Stu. I don't think I played Infinity War. Sorry, Infinite Warfare. Did you? Uh, did you? I did not. I played Advanced Warfare, but I did not play Infinite Warfare. Why was Infinite it called War. Infinite Warfare? What's the infinite relevant to? Because it was in the future, it was in space. Oh, and like space That's is like... what infinite means. <laughs> That's why I was asking. <laughs> because it's like infinite, I guess, implies like infinite horizons, which is often a, so you know associated with space and that kind of thing. Hmm. So it's like, oh, it's infinite, we've gone out into like infinite space and it's endless and so it's big and grand scale it's like infinity I more see. importantly it's just a cool sounding word and that's why they chose it oh is it and now Jay? true mm -hmm. this is a call of duty game and that's literally all the thought that they decided to who give. gets to decide what words are cool the word me police. i am the cool police and i work for the department of words oh how do they pay is it good uh could be better <laughs> Uh, there isn't any amount of money I wouldn't pay to hear Charles Dance say, Oh my god, he's a queer. <laughs> oh my god, he's a queer. Oh my god, he's a queer. That was like the first incredible moment on EFAP. That was amazing. Did not see that coming. Hey, more and friends. You should all try Gears Tactics. It's like XCOM, but you'll rarely miss even a 90% to hit. Also, it's free on Game Pass. Is Gears Tactics Gears of War but XCOM? Because I don't know much about I, it at all. That's what I've heard it described as, but that's my that's the extent of my knowledge on it. I don't know if it's good or not. I just haven't I don't really hear about it ever. Yeah. I know I enjoyed the Gears 5 campaign quite a bit. That was fun to play. I played it with uh, myself and a friend of mine, and I enjoyed it. I really did. I really there was a lot to like about Gears 5. I don't know anything about it, though. I loved Gears 2. I was obsessed with that one on 360 for a long time. First and second and third I played and finished, and I liked them all. I don't think I got... Oh, I think I missed 4 and the, like, Judgment or something, whatever it's called. Um, and then I played 5 and I liked Dude, five. that'd be so weird if, if we got reset, like, back to our, you know, earlier ages and stuff, but we were still aware of each other. Like, I always thought, like, how would we be able to find each other, do you reckon? Because you, you, in, we would both have been on 360 Live, so we're theoretically able to find each other, but, like, how would we do that? Ooh, um... So, 
I was playing... Oh, I didn't start YouTube until after I moved to the PC stuff. Um... Oh, would my... Here's the, here's the big question. Would I, if I had stuck with the Xbox and never gone to uh, 360, or sorry, if I had stuck with the 360 and the Xbox and never gone to PC, would that have sufficiently been enough of an impact to make me not do YouTube stuff? Would I have stuck with my yeah, job? Yeah, that's an interesting question as well. If, I, I don't if, know. Maybe you'd find another know. reason yeah, to, you know? It's possible. But if I had still gotten... Well, that's the thing. If I would have, if I would have wanted to do the YouTube stuff, I would have had to have gotten the PC really to do this yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that probably would have equated into me being the gamer that I was, going I'm into PC gamer. gaming. Could one argue though that it was inevitable for you because you appreciate like things that about gaming that PC is going to be more preferable for? That's the thing. I think that I arrived at my transition to PC in a very like it wasn't just i just decided one day that's probably cool i'll do that it was eventually i had just seen so much and gotten little tastes of it here and there at friends houses mm. and seen enough talk about it to where i eventually decided all right i've heard enough let's see what it's all about and then i very quickly became full pc gamer um out of curiosity rags how's your review of gears 5 going i still played they love the game oh like i finished it ages ago I guess it was just never... I, I've got it. I have the file on my computer. It just never saw the light of day. Maybe I could release that on Dog Bites. Oh, yeah. If it's you know a complete what? video. Yeah, I, I I hadn't even... I finished it, and I had to do one of those a week. Um, and I, I liked doing them. I, I tried games that I wouldn't have tried before. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe Geeks and Gamers or someone like that. Maybe they could uh, use a game reviewer. I, I don't know. That It was nice to make these short little 10, 10 15 minute reviews of these games and i'd do one a week and so i'd play a new game that week and it would be an indie game or i'd finally review one that i've been playing for a while and it was kind of nifty to do that and kind of put your thoughts into a game and condense them into 10 to 15 minutes i was still though we completely tangented i was i was i, was, I thought did. my question was interesting how would we find Maybe each other we, we would have had to well hmm if what? we've only got, because maybe it's cheating to say we've got anything more than the screen names to work with and the histories that have been available through EFAP to know. Like, oh, the hmm. histories that are available through EFAP? I mean, anything we've said on EFAP, that's what you get to work with. Um. Like, I haven't told you my direct address, but had I, I'd be like, oh, so that's kind of cheating. Even though I don't know what, <laughs> if you knew that, that still wouldn't help you because I wasn't living there when... <laughs> I was doing 360 days, so it's like, hmm. I would have, so we would have had to hear of each other first. Oh, no, I don't mean, so I mean you have, the knowledge you have now, it's all in your brain, but you get rewound and you, you know, I know that this is stupid because there's so many other things you'd be doing, but let's just pretend for a second that the, I'm curious about how, you, you probably want to find, like, me, Fringy, whoever else to talk to. How would you do it? So that's me, I'm whoever else. Hello. No, Metal. Oh, so, yeah, like if I time traveled back those years ago with my current knowledge. Yeah, and you were like, man, it would be, you know, you're playing some 360 stuff again in your free time, and you're like, oh, you know, Fringy and Mole, they're around at this point. I wonder if I could find them. Because one plan would be to try the game attacks. See if you can get a... I a laptop. I a laptop. Again, like, I was curious what information could be used to try and narrow it down, I wonder. Oh, I could just send the messages through their YouTube emails, right? I don't know if the YouTube channel, mine wouldn't have existed at that point, the one I use now. I don't know, I, I think oh, what makes this so hard to answer is because the way that we all kind of met up was a strange mm -hmm. spider web of coincidences and happenstances. Well, I would probably uh, be trying rags everywhere. I must, I'd just be like, maybe, maybe. Because that name, because here's the thing, I never used that name until I just decided to use it on YouTube. In that case, that would be exist. useless to me. <laughs> so, like, my other names and handles for things were just different things for different things. There was really no... There was just no rhyme or reason to it. Um, so... I don't know how you would possibly find me. I was gonna say, it could get to the point where it's a little bit impossible. Um, which would suck. I'd have to wait until... 
I know that you would have... Yeah, it would be, I'd be looking for a YouTube channel called Rags until it finally pops up in 20... Is it like 2015 or something like that? Yeah, because while I while I was, of course, Rags the dog, always, because that's my name, I didn't use it on the internet for anything until, you know, the YouTube stuff. So that would have yeah. been... That would be very difficult to do. Um, for you to find me would have been... I don't even know how you managed to do it. I know Metal would have started his channel at 2014-ish on Twitch, so I'd find him there. Jay, I'd know your... I was like, so if we all had the brains we have now, but we were transported back to super young tisms, how would we be able to find each other again online, or would, would it be kind of impossible because uh, we don't have enough details? I, or like find each other online or just find each other in general? Online, I guess. Moller, I know your name. Um, so, yeah, that's what I mean. So that's like the almost the advantage. Well, the, the funny thing about like, that is, I'm not sure if you can actually. Would you be able to find me still, even if you had my name? Um, um I, th I, I assume so. Um, the problem well, my I, depends. if you know where to if you know where to look, then yeah. But you'd have to get into some dubious areas. Yeah, gonna... to really oh, get true, what you want. True. Yeah, that's well, I, true. I well, the funny thing is, if, if I had the memory as well, and you finally contact, like, my fucking house phone or some shit, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? And you're like, remember me? <laughs> I'm like, how did you find this yeah, number? And you're like, that's not important, Mola. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I, important you have to say, I'm from the future. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I like the idea that this is before you got the game, the, the name Mola, and you're just like, what? Yeah, well, I, I had that name for a while. I was called Muller on... I th ooh, I can't remember if I was on Xbox 360, actually. I think I was in the last, like, few years, so... That probably still is active, but... Um... Like, like it would be working back then. The... the... I just find it interesting because of the fact that it'd be like, Oh, it'd be neat to have played Gears of War 2 and Modern Warfare 2 and Halo 3 with you guys back then, you know? That would have been... It's still fun that now. It's not really the same, Jay. It's not really the same. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm waiting on fish and chips to arrive. It's been on its way fish for a while now. Fish and chips, oh, oh my yeah. god. Terrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fish yeah. Chips. Fish and chips. Oi. What act is that meant to be? Ma'am, what if I like, didn't watch Black Panther for whatever reason? I wonder if Jay and I still would have met. I don't know. Probably not, I assume. Hmm. I mean, Game of Thrones certainly wouldn't have wouldn't have done it. Maybe Star Wars. Maybe. Every time you don't watch an MCU movie, a J dies. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We talk about like how we've ended up where we are, but it's like there's probably a lot of timelines with a lot of really good friends that we've not met because we didn't watch the things that would have led to it somehow. Just yeah. Would have had different lives. Yeah. Would have had different lives. Yeah. What, kind of Marvel's what if. Normally, this is the kind of conversation that would normally happen in one of Fringy's streams. Yeah, kind of. I don't know, we talk about sh weird shit on A5 all the time. Well, deep, emotionally charged, existential shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's normally where Fringy streams go. I don't know why. Uh, it wasn't the, yeah, the last stream. Fringy that... fancies himself an intellectual. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not my fault that this comes up. It probably is somewhat your Fringy. fault. It, yeah, well. Wow. It the responsibility for your actions yeah. stronger. Yeah, dude. Personal, personal, responsibility. Responsibility. personal responsibility. Trini drives right. an, a 2022 Acura MDX SH all-wheel drive advantage. I uh, I definitely do not. <laughs> Is there a supercharged V8 in there? Uh, no. Honestly, probably. Sweet. It's probably at least it's, it's probably a quite quick car. So anyway, oh yeah, uh, the last one, for you, I don't know if you were here, was about, is they said Infinity War, the, the card game, had uh, cartoon villains telling good guys to surrender for execution and main protagonist is textbook Gary Stu. I don't know if there's any comment on that. So I I didn't play that. But I didn't play that game, but I know that in the opening cutscene of that game, Kit Harrington plays the villain. And he literally does the thing where it's like, he kills. I, you know, I don't care about my men, so he shoots his own man, and then he suffocates <laughs> to death on the surface of this planet. It's like, dude, this is so, like, I hate that. Though, I hear people say, like, oh, no, the campaign, that's a, it's actually solid in that one. I'm not inclined to believe that, but I don't know. I, 
Just like Call of Duty is stagnating again. You had like Modern Warfare and that was kind of new and interesting and now it's gone back to just... It's just gone uh, right back to... Well, it, yeah. It's almost like, oh shit, Modern Warfare. A lot of people talked about that and bought it and played it. Keep making it. No. I'm not even... If it was like a regress almost, like that new one looks like a regress from Modern Warfare. Vanguard? Modern Warfare was just... It looks like shit. Yeah. It looks, it looks like awful. actual shit. It looks like a mobile game. What is this, And that's sir? kind of... The new Call of Duty that's coming out Call this year, Duty Vanguard. Vanguard. This doesn't look good. And, um, Call of Duty. It, I think it's just Modern Warfare was like a presentation that I was not expecting. I mean, like that game actually looks great. You pop the bubbles, really you get good. the oxygen. That's how it works. I was in the oxygen. Give me any. Boo. Yeah. Like the the cutscenes for Modern Warfare are legitimately some of the most gorgeous I've ever seen in my life. Damn. Unfortunately, the animations they were... ruin. Unfortunately, they ruin that because they will load the level as yeah. the cutscene is playing, so that gorgeous ass cutscene, even on my hyper amazing computer, especially for a game like this, is stuttering because the game's like, no, 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 no. It has to load the next level during the cutscene while it's playing, and so the cutscene will stuff stutter and try like to like buffer yeah. because of that. That so, was unreal. Good job. <laughs> Up shooting yourself in the own foot, your own foot after making that gorgeous cutscene, and then making it stutter. That was unreal when I was playing it. It's like, dude, what is going on? This is just not working at all. Very distracting. Brilliant. Very yeah, this new one just Very cool. It just looks generic. I know. We, I know we talked about it before, but it's like World at War. That that game like has an identity. It has a style. It has an edginess yep. and grittiness that I really like. And this new one just looks like sanitized World War Two again. It looks like it just looks it. It looks like Call of Duty game. Yeah, yeah. And Modern Warfare didn't. So. Um, do you have any hopes that Shang Chi will be any good? No. Uh, no hope it'll be good because phase four, but um, the interesting thing with Shang-Chi compared to other stuff is like, I just have no, I don't think I'll be interested at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't care. I don't care who this Which I know is. someone might be like, why is that so special? It's like, I don't, I don't think, I think that's the first property in, in the MCU that I've just given no shits about. Phase four, yeah. uh, phase four about a new character that doesn't involve any of the previous stuff at all. Like, yeah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And it's not, so the, wow. yeah, we know it's not going to respect what came before at all, because they don't care about that in Phase 4 at all. And then, you know, the end will be like, we need you for the Avengers, and that's all I'm going to need to know. Outside of Fringy telling me his rings make him able to shoot fireballs or something, I'll be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and anything that he accomplishes is not going to have any actual impact on the world, and it will be some poor shit that they retroactively pull from their asses so that this movie has a justification for existing. And it just won't feel like the it, there's it is an MCU only in name now. Everyone's just doing their own thing. There's no symbol. I mean, especially now that you've got Feige saying, "Yeah, we can't have the Avengers in this Black Widow movie because you know we don't do that because she's a strong woman." So fuck it. And yeah, if you're not I mean connect with that movie. You're just, you know, he said uh, he doesn't want men supporting her and stuff. He's like, "What about the female Avengers then? Can we get them in?" I'd be curious what his response to that would be. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Great. She would just, she would just win always. <laughs> yeah. Unlike Black Widow sure. in the film, who just automatically fucking wins everything too. Like in theory, the only the thing in the universe that could slow her down, the Power Stone, is now destroyed. So yep, kind of has carte blanche to just do whatever the fuck she wants. That was the big worry when they were giving the stones back. Cap was like, "We can't stop Captain Marvel if she goes rogue." I'm like, yep. And then Cap was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go hang out with Agent Carter. Yep. She's cooler than all of you. Um, where did you train? In a scavenger town? From Sheev. Oh. That line needs to be in everything ever. Because it is an artwork on its own. Alright. So, I just noticed something. You're blowing water onto the dirty teeth and it makes them clean, but underwater? That's um, interesting. I can still work if you have like a fast Hard. torrent of water I underwater. Guess, yeah. Can, yeah. But that means that your torrent is incredibly fast compared to anything that he could find. Well, mine's focused too. Um, 
And it's all yeah. uh, whenever he goes back down into his little hidey hole, it, it re like dirties the teeth that aren't fully clean. Ah. Yeah, uh, so. so he's just he's he's really making it harder for himself. Basically. Yeah, I'm just trying to help him, and he's like, mm. and he's getting mad. Because I mean, one of the teeth fell out when I cleaned it, so he's probably pissed about that. But I mean, I'm still helping. It's but I mean, it would have fallen out eventually, right? Yeah, like, so. and, and who knows how much pain it was causing. And potential infection, exactly. so... Helping you out, buddy. My teeth falling out or breaking is one of, like, my most recurring nightmares. That's fun. I've had that, too, where all your teeth are just, like, weird and crackly, and they just sort of get loose and fall out, and you're like, yeah. oh, I gotta get, like, fake teeth and everything. It's like, it's not... It's not as distressing as it could be, based on like what that actually is, but it's still like it's not a pleasant dream to have. It's I like, think, oh, yeah, I, I see? it's it's like parts of you falling off or whatever, but in the in the least scary way, or one of the least scary ways, because you can yeah, deal with like, it. This, yeah, like this is deal. Like, like I could just get replacements for it, you know. And it, but it's just like wow, like, I'm, is this gonna happen to anything else? Like, what if my nose just falls off one day? Mm -hmm. Oh no, my balls! Ah! Oh no! So this is this is holy fuck, something wrong, me too low, bang ding ow. Those were the the ones that the news reporter read out. If you guys remember, I do remember that. Yeah. Something wrong being one of the funniest they fucking things. They don't hire those people for their intelligence. <laughs> right. Apparently that happened recently. Uh, I was they were showing me a real BBC. There's like some kind of I don't know meeting for some kind of like councilly meeting where people were talking and they were summoning people by name. And he was like, the, the announcer was like, Phil McCracken? Phil McCracken. Is there a Phil McCracken? <laughs> be like, no. Uh. And he, and he read out like fucking six of them that were all like that. And it's just being shared around as like, he has a fucking Simpsons bow, but it's just Bo. Maybe he's I'm a dad and he's like, yeah, I know what these are. I'm going to read them out anyway. He's like, this will go viral. It'll be funny. Yeah face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, worst pizza topping? Pineapple chunks, crushed pineapple, can of pineapple sludge, pineapple rings, or pineapple fragmentation grenade? I feel like the, the grenade. pineapple grenade. The grenade's probably gonna be the worst yeah. one, actually. Yeah, the yeah. grenade, yeah, that could probably actually hurt you, so, um, yeah. I don't want that. I mean, I like pineapple I on might, pizza. I might off to eating pancakes, though. Uh, uh, it's fine that you like, like pineapple, pineapple on pizza. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's cute. Yeah. It's tasty. It's, it's okay disgusting. that you think that. It tastes good. feel that. It tastes like actual... No, it's not... It doesn't even taste like asshole. <laughs> I was gonna say, you'd be in <laughs> favor of that, right? Asshole pizza? It's just like it's just a, a good. I mean, it 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 has like a this this kind of like pineapple is this acidic tart kind of thing, and on a pizza, it's just ugh. yeah. I mean, since I was a young and I bit and like first tried it, I was like, ah, we've 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 done something wrong here. We fucked it up. We comboed we've, up things that shouldn't be comboed with up. The fabric of yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, this is what we get for playing God. You, <laughs> you played with forces you don't understand. <laughs> I like playing with forces I but, don't understand, and so I let, think it's tasty. Let, let's take that super chat and expand upon it, because fuck it, we're going to be here for the rest of our lives anyway. Um, Yay. What is the least favorite topping that you've had that you've actually tried, not counting pineapple, because that's the obvious answer. Hmm. Uh, Has there been a I topping like, that you legitimately hated? I don't like capsicum at all, and I don't like what it is, on my What's that? Pieces. Capsicum? Isn't that like that big kind of guinea pig? That's a no, capsicum. I, I know that's a capsicum. I know that's a capsicum. Oh, oh, oh. Do you actually not know what a capsicum is? I think I, that's, I think this is the first time I've heard the word capsicum. Yeah, I've never heard of that. No. I, that? It's good because it, like it has fruit, fruit or in it. A, Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm a, a, a so far, I'm well, interested because of the cum part. Yeah. I can't believe that nobody. You haven't heard of capsicum, dude. Right that's now, cool. you could actually be trolling me. Like, I'm not sure if you're just doing this for the yeah. funsies. No, you could. I, you could tell I, me that it's like. So a, here is a, a here is a rodent. picture of cap, here is a picture of capsicum. It is a very real thing that exists. Oh, I believe you. Are those uh, peppers? Say, um, like, those are peppers. Oh, bell peppers. Yeah, but they're yeah. Called, they're called capsicums. Yeah, I can imagine I've never, they won't do too well on pizza. I've but never. Kind of pizza. I've, I've never heard them called that before in my life. Neither have I. That is what they are called on Wikipedia. Capsicum Why do you sound so angry? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that you like never I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, not yeah, everyone's heard of everything. I think that's pretty yeah, reasonable. I've worked, in, 
I've worked in kitchens and all that sort of thing. Never heard them called that. Yeah, very They're familiar all... with lots of foods. Never heard of them Wikipedia, called capsicum. Capsicum is a genus of flowering plant in the nightshade family Solanaceae, native to the Americas, cultivated worldwide for their chili pepper or bell pepper fruit. Do you know that I, oh, there I you know go. where I've heard this word? Where I first heard this word was on um, R, where we covered the um, the picture that was just cropped so that it just said "come." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I vaguely. I, I like bell peppers. Um, they're bad. they're in terms of like one being hate, ten being love, and five being eh. They're probably like a six for me. I like them. I like uh, the taste more than the texture. Yes, and I like the taste more than the texture, just like you, Mahler. And that's oh. why I think that they wouldn't be that great on a pizza because mm. pizza is generally more chewy for the most part, with maybe the bottom being crunchy if it's made a certain way. I get a little bit of crunch uh, to it, and the crust maybe a little bit uh, as well. But I feel like in the middle of it, this is one of the reasons I despise onions. I hate onions. For the They're same great. reason? Taste good, texture bad? Is it? Or... Uh, taste I is, like onions. Eh, but it's I don't like biting into something and getting that uh, that, that onion squish that they have. Uh, I hate it. Huh. I really well, what about what about just like uh, little, little bits of onion, you know? like Just like finely diced onion in, in like a... Oh, no. Yeah. He still is. I'm, Man, uh, that's the, I, I, really, really, I really hate oh. I, I oh, like the big pieces of onions more because I can identify them and remove them from my food before I eat. You know Man. what I will say? When we're talking about least favorite like vegetable foods, beetroot, I cannot oh, I've never stand had that. beetroot. I can't, oh, I like I can't a lot. stand it. <laughs> Uh, you get these, um, you get these, what I really like is you get these um, beetroot burger patties, which are like... I no! Mean, no, they're, they're no. Great. Like, no. Use them for a place no. for a meat burger. Like if you're expecting, like, oh, this is gonna taste like a no. meat burger, you're gonna be severely disappointed. But just as like it's no. own meal, like yeah, that's great. No. What, Fringy? No, are sorry. you are you distinctly upset with me? <laughs> it's it's okay, but like beetroot. You're I allowed can't, to feel this. Jay, way. we allow leftist views here, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's we, a we leftist allow, view. Beetroot. Value the input of the left-handed. Yes. Fried onions. The broccoli Don't. is amazing on pizza. Get out. I mean, I I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm happy with broccoli on pizza. I'm not sure I'd put broccoli on a pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, yeah, if I had a like, get, it's like kale out. or spinach <laughs> on pizza. It's fine because they're very they're, they're not very strong tasting things. You're not a very strong tasting thing, right? Oh, oh but I am. I think he is. Oh, what did you taste of? Uh, I don't know. What am I been eating? You are what they you eat. You are what you eat. Yeah. yeah. Right now, I'm a chip. So, I'd be eager to know what you guys' thoughts are on critically pointing out glitches and problems in a game that you were given a review code for. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue, IMO, but Sonic community is a fickle bunch. Uh, you um... should point out bugs in a review. Copy thing. Yeah, that's like a yeah, that's yeah, a big that's a big flaw. You need to what make sure you do that. For? That's what you're there to do is review it. And if it's got a bunch of bugs and stuff, you need to review that in your review. That's important so. information that people need to be aware of. I'm not sure. Is the question implying like should you avoid it for a particular? Like I'm not sure. I understand. Well, I guess I, I think the question is if it's a review copy, then it's probably not. Um, it might not be representative. Just make sure you tell people out, that. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I just mentioned it was a review copy, but you should still point it out. My god, I just fell off the map and I ended up right at the beginning, as opposed to falling in space. I was lucky. <laughs> now to begin the whole thing anew. Uh, also, hi Rags and Frongo! Hello! Yo. Least I can do uh, for doing the Pachinko mission. Now you're gonna try the lily pad one, right? I actually did the lily pad one too. Also kind of nightmarish, but thank you very much. Uh, you guys should get together and write a short story. I'm interested in what you could make. Also, hi Molza. Hi Dingy, and hi Ragagaga. And also hi Gay. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah, no, I'm working on one. I'm working on a few. There you go. Well, I like that suggestion that it should that would it be a collaborative effort, because I do like the idea of like um lots of, you know, talented folks coming together and writing. Wow. Uh, Calling one yourself talented. Each. Yeah, I'm I'm immensely talented. <laughs> and my penis is enormous. Was it, wasn't I'm that a joke from, um... That's a really fucking good joke from Guardians 2, where... 
Like, they're saying that um, Ego is sort of under underrepresenting how amazing his planet is. And then Drax says, I too am extraordinarily humble. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and you've got... Yeah, no, you've got... Um, I'd be, I'd be curious to see what would happen if, like, we all had one character of our own that we wrote. Uh, we, well, we talked I mean, about this before, if you remember. Yes, we have. I remember that combo. In that sense, we wouldn't, like, be able to plan out what the actual event uh, or the ending no. of the story is. We would just, like, would we would come up with our characters though. and see how they interact with each other. Well, what if we got, what if the experiment was, we know what the scenario will be, but we don't know who the other characters are. So it's four characters in this place yeah. have to well, do this. maybe what, yeah, what's... A, and we're gonna no. do like, um, like, you know, like a cube type thing. Well, what you, this is like something that would work really, really well if y'all were ever interested in doing like a D&D &D game. D &D. Oh yeah, that would right. be fun. I mean, I would like to try Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I'd like to try it at some point. There you go. Um, it could be that we're all given a, a static sort of thing about where the characters will end up scenario-wise, but we get to write, you know, how they got there. Well, yeah. We, you know what, like, that's, Rags, that's, like, actually a pretty good idea. That that feels like something that, that we sh we should do. Yeah. It's like well, a D&D &D. D &D campaign. Yeah, that would be, be great, actually. Miss, I, I would be very keen on that as well. There is a, I do know people who have offered to do that sort of thing. I, I messaged you about it, uh, later, uh, or... I, I didn't message you about it later. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I messaged you earlier. Even that's redundant, but I guess it's still more accurate uh, about <laughs> this kind of thing too. So it, it's definitely I... something that I would, you know, I would be very keen on doing. It was a pleasure to hear your brain working as that all happened. Yeah, I feel you know sometimes sentences are journeys, not destinations. Mm -hmm. so. Well, as people will point it out in chat. D and D fab. Yeah, D and D fat. It is well different super chats of us before, and it's not impossible. Not impossible at all. Yeah, but that just means probably not normally, doesn't it? Well, I, well, for the record, I'm very keen on the idea. So well, it's up like, to everyone else and getting that organized and getting a good schedule. But I guess we're used to having a good schedule for EFAP. I was going to so say that's probably going to be more so. Rags is like going to be the one to do most. Of I have no fucking clue how any of it works, but I'm glad to show up and be a character. That's fine with me. It was like if someone someone super chats in going, you should watch the nineteen eighty seven fully black and white six hour film called Schlumpulon. Uh and it, it's a very it's a very it's a very niche project that's uh, got some unique ideas in it. Uh, and some of the scenes are just you know nothing happens in them at all, and that's part of the art. You should you guys should watch that. I feel like your answer would be that's it's not impossible. Jokes on you. I've seen Schlumpulon. Ah oh, fuck. Specifically. Well, no, is it no, better or worse than La Fromage? Oh, La, La Fromage is a fucking cinematic masterpiece. Oh, dude, we got we got some burning in the chat incoming. Fringy, be ready. Sounds yeah. like he's ready. Also, Fringy. Oh, before you move on, I, I will say to Jay, uh, we did watch a six-hour movie where nothing fucking happens. It's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and it was miserable. That was 12 hours. What do you mean six? We on times two oh, speed? Not, it felt like it lasted all day. Mm-hmm. Bringy, capsicum is the plant, bell peppers are the fruit. Is there a plant on your pizza or a pepper? Capsicum on our pizzas, bell peppers are. Oof. Now, it's it's very interesting that you there say that, because when I look up capsicum and then I see the images, I see the image of everything that I have ever known a capsicum to be, which is the fruit that I posted in the chat there. And that is something that bias, people, there it that is. is something, yep. That is something that people cut up and put on food. So I don't know if this is a situation where capsicum has effectively transitioned to also represent the, the plant, the fruit itself, or the vegetable, or whatever it is. But that's um, what I'm seeing here. I think it's technically Oh, here we go. So, is there any difference between bell peppers and capsicum? This is difference between .NET, I guess. They should know their shit. They should know. know. Capsicum's <laughs> on- yeah, no, I'm so looking at that one. This says, no, there is actually no difference between the two, oh. as a bell pepper is just another capsicum. Wow. In Britain, wow. it's called, in Britain, it is called red pepper or green pepper or chili pepper. Yeah. In the U.S. and Canada, the large capsicum form is known as a bell pepper. Man, that that that's funny how it's like, oh, look at how wrong you were. Well, well the tables there, are turned, there we are. friend. How are the turntables? <laughs> I mean, uh, that was going to be my follow-up question, was do you typically, like, colloquially call them capsicums in Australia? Yes. 
That's interesting. I, I don't hear people call them bell peppers. I've only yeah. ever heard them described as capsicum. So it's 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 the opposite here, where they're only known as bell peppers. I've never heard that in my life. But what I'll do is I'll text a few people, and I'll ask, "Hey, do you okay. know what a capsicum is?" Just to see if you know. I know. Like I'll. I'll I was ask gonna say what you said was just, just, just drop it into casual conversation where it's subtly just so they see if they go like what what is that what do you mean i think if i did that like with my parents though if they knew what capsicum was they'd look at me like why are you doing that <laughs> like nobody in, calls it in, that in any case what just happened that somebody's mentioned it in chat and i want to turn about mode so what happened was that chat came through and everything went silent in the phoenix Wright courtroom and then when we read that out the, the music got really upbeat we're like you know, it's over now. This is the turnaround. This is the, yeah, the turnabout section in the Phoenix Wright case, okay? We got some very exciting music playing right now. I've asked the old M&P to see if uh, they've heard of Capsicum, and we will see what they say. Wait. Uh... Just, just ask every, every, like, all the largest creators that you know if they've heard of Capsicum. Like, well, I mean, it's probably going to be a matter of whether or not they're from America, Australia, or Britain, or whatever oh, yeah, else, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but now maybe way. the name has changed over time, so I so maybe uh, my parents will be like, oh yeah, well some people have called it that, but we we never our family never did, or I, we've heard of it before, or something like that, where it's just it's a name that used to be like maybe over here I've it used to be a name in a long time, today, but it just became yeah. uh, bell pepper. So when I ask people, they'll be like, hey, have you ever heard of bell pepper? And they'll be like, of course I know him, he's me, and that would be. Strange, <laughs> oh. but, but it would be a reference, and that's what matters. Also, I am a bell pepper. What? I refuse to believe such things. Why? Because I am a rational man, and I only believe in rationality. I, was from, I thought even like, because I am a radish, and I was like... <laughs> the radish well, people will dominate. Fair, there, there's Absolute a lot of people, people I know who are... Well, they're not like, they're not rad, but they're not lame. They're, you know, they're... They're radish. Well, Rax, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? I mean, you can, you can, okay, just, and when I say I, vegetable, I mean anything that you put in a salad rather than anything that's okay, technically a vegetable. Would, okay, because I'd say I'd still be rags, but very boring. Uh, but let me see. Um, if I was a vegetable, what would my, hmm. Let Springy, me... I want, I want yours as well. My what, sorry? If you're a vegetable, what, what would is, you be? What is the longest vegetable? Uh... So, if the longest vegetable would probably be like vegetable. asparagus, right? I'd be the long one. Asparagus is fairly long. Feel hang on. There's probably see. something longer probably though. Some, like like real, spring real onions. Long. Oh, spring I'd be a. Be oh, do potatoes count? I know they're tubers, but are tubers vegetables? Are tubers. I don't long know that they. Uh, I do. Uh, so, it looks like. Um. All tubers fall under the root vegetable umbrella, but not all root vegetables are tubers. So, oh wait, let me say, are potatoes? Why did I even bother with the middle man? <laughs> asked if potatoes were. <laughs> <laughs> it was an easier question yeah. there. <laughs> okay, so potatoes are a type of vegetable. I would be a potato. Waller, I think this mm. is you. This is a giant cucumber. Oh. Oh yes, there you go. I'm a giant cucumber. Well, that's a... Oh, the big green. Oh yeah. You you versus the cucumber. She tells you not to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, another vegetable with the word "come" in it. Yay! Oh yeah. And kumquat and does not. And sea cucumbers come, come as well. So that's but it, that's another. But it's, fun the thing part. about kumquat is it's spelled less funnily, but it sounds funny. Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah, it's one letter short of come squat. Which is, as we all know, very fun. Yeah. Look how cool this nozzle is, everybody. Huh? Look at it go. Ooh. What are you doing with nozzles? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking break into these right now. Here I go. Put down the nozzle. No! Ow. Wait, are we done with the vegetable question, or is there more? I haven't figured out what... I don't know. Um, there are a lot of green vegetables, so it makes it tough to pick. Well, um, does it have to be green? It doesn't have to be green. I guess it just feels like that makes the most sense, right? 
Well, here's what I would say. So you can go with aesthetics, like what vegetable by its looks seems to appeal to you. You can also go by taste, because some vegetables taste like sharper than others. Some are more yeah. flat and more like malleable in terms of what you can do with, like a potato. A potato can be really any food. Um, yeah, oh, very versatile. I got a text back. Um, my father says, no, not familiar. Oh. Okay. Interesting. It does seem like it's American British versus what we do here. Australia's not a real place, Ringy. That's true. They all keep yeah. saying that, but like I'm pretty sure that I'm not dreaming. Yeah, the rest of the world. Well, you're just in um you're just in a different you're in like you're in South Africa. Oh god, this yeah. is yeah. the South other South Africa is, the, is where it's supposed to be. We're not all on the payroll, so it kinda of seems like. Okay. Here we go. It's another oh, hard right. mission. Ooh. My sister has a 36 inch long English cucumber growing in her garden. So either that's she's a very impressive gardener or she is an incredibly talented prostitute is the the two no, the only two there. options. That's you all can be both. you know you can be both. Oh, what? Oh. That's true. <laughs> I'm not even sure what happened. I think I was supposed to jump again. I don't know. You are still wrong about the capsicum thing. Give it up, my friend. All right, the oh, objection God. has already been raised. <laughs> the music has played. What's happened it's, is the Phoenix Wright character has fainted. All right, it's, it's over. A bell pepper is a yeah. capsicum in both ways. It's the two different names for. The I, same read I read Wikipedia. I read Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Wikipedia is always right, huh? No, he said read Wikipedia. To which my response was, yeah, I read it. And I read other hey, maybe he's, too. maybe he's got maybe there's someone else. Maybe it's he too reads. Late. The, the, no, the the final objection has been raised. The music played very loud and quick. And what if the second paragraph? The second paragraph on the Wikipedia page says, "As of 2021, it is no <laughs> longer classified this way." Oh wow! Why did you leave that out, Fringy? That's yeah, very Fringy, what the fuck? I, wow. I don't know why you would, This is so slanderous. I can't why are you gaslighting? Oh, it's such lies. Why are you ad hominiming us? Yeah, why are you straw manning? You ad hominims me. Why are you straw manning us? Why would you do that? You must be maliciously motivated. I mean, it's it's just amusing that you would say this feels like projection to me. But, it sounds yeah. like you're projecting your straw man onto Jay. Found, that was one of the real. That was one of the things about about all the smart boy stuff that was funniest to me was when he called someone a projector, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, someone, someone's got to do it. Those those kids, they need to see. <laughs> uh, it's hard work, but it's honest work. That's true. A projector is like the dinosaurs in Flintstones. Where they always in the skit by saying, "Meh, it's a living." Yeah. <laughs> they always say that. It's like, is it you being paid? <laughs> This is the only joke that you have. It's the only joke in that whole show, yeah. Someone said Fringy the Straw Manor. Why would they say that if it wasn't true? Oh, did you know that Betty and, uh, or Fred and Wilma Flintstones were the first couple to be shown in bed together on TV? Wow. Really? Before Bewitched? Oh, yeah, I suppose that would have been because the Flintstones was in the 1960s when it started. Oh, huh. actually, well, hmm, wait, hold, hold, hold up. Um, this says technically Mary Kay and Johnny were the first married couple to share a bed on TV. I don't know what shows that from. Let me, but that's what I've always heard. I've always heard it was actually the Flintstones, but maybe, oh, maybe it's, uh, uh maybe she's born with it. The Flintstone 960, um, this says it was the first, among the first to show a couple, for live action couples, the one foot rule was said to have existed. Um, well, that's in Australia, New Zealand. I, now, I love this, right? Because you're citing Wikipedia. In Wikipedia, it literally says that in Australia, New Zealand, and India, the heatless varieties are called capsicums, while hot ones are called chili and chilies. So you just now found out that like over a billion people. I like how India just buffs up the numbers a lot. But like this is just how it's referred to. Now you could say that that's wrong all you want, but at this point, when we're talking about etymology, I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. Fringy will not their have is, it. Their name is Fura Gramson. What? what? 
at least the person who just said, Bringy, what date did you get the Wikipedia uh, page? Oh dear, I must apologize, but it appears the Wikipedia page is outdated. Allow me to present the updated Wikipedia page from Fira Gramson. Oh! I'm assuming they're memeing, right? I guess Yeah, so. probably. <laughs> They are Fura Gramson, all right. I think, the thing is, it's never, you can never tell 100% if someone's memeing in the e yet. No, no. Ooh, a stare. Um, Why do you say that in like a Brooklyn accent? I didn't or do like nothing. A... Hey, I'm walking here. Gettysburg for yeah. War Movies arc? It's four hour epic starring Martin Sheen as Lee and Jeff Daniels as Chamberlain. Alongside Civil War, 5,000 reenactors. Damn. I have not seen Gettysburg, but I've heard good things. And maybe. I don't know if the, the lads we got on the War Arc would be willing to do a four hour movie, I don't know. They had trouble with Troy, which was three hours, right? Um. Yeah. But that was, I think that was one of our better recordings, though. Oh, dude, the Troy one was great. I, I, yeah. I, I just, I wouldn't want to push them into something they don't want to do, you know? Absolutely. Um, fuck, marry, kill, which Wallace. Was, oh, go ahead. Which, which one was worse? Was it um, which one was worse for us? Was it Kingdom of Heaven or the King Arthur one? So I know which one was longer. <laughs> I don't know about which one was worse. This is, that's a hot take, by the way, Rags. A lot of people were very upset that we mentioned uh, Kingdom, Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven is actually kind of shite. Um, I mean. What can what can we say but be honest? We watched it, we were paying attention, we had a whole set of people, and we were not fucking enjoying that shit at all. Yeah, In fact, we some were of the not, The director's we cut is not only well, cut. And that's the thing, a lot of people are like extra confused because the, the current narrative or thought, I guess, is that the the theatrical is terrible, or at least okay, but missing a lot of stuff in the director's cut is mwah, beautiful. It's like Snyder cut thing all over again. <laughs> But, like, the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven, it's like, it's actually, it introduces problems that don't exist in the theatrical cut. Um, I can't remember the theatrical cut that well, so I, like, I'll just have to get, take your word for that. But, like, the fucking, some of the, wasn't it, like, the, the, the lady, the sister? Um, the yeah, the lady yeah. character and the prince subplot thingy. Like, those are not, like, the, the things about those that are terrible were not in the theatrical cut, as far as I know. Yeah, we probably have quite the hot take on that film. Um, I know that a lot of it, we were struggling to say stuff. Because we were just like... Yeah. We're almost this bored. Really is, yeah, it really was Snyder-like. In the sense that there were just these long-ass scenes where just nothing happens. And it's just redundant and pointless. And, and let's be frank. Fucking Orlando Bloom. <laughs> we're just like begging him to act in this movie. I like, will say our emotion. our war arc, war arc has changed my mind on Orlando Bloom a little bit. Like I used to be oh, like really? he's, he's fine, but now I'm like man, he is kind of he's bad. Bad. Oh no. He is a great he is a great Legolas, but that seems to be the fluke. I mean, Legolas what, what is pretty you... stoic, so that might make sense. That is true. Maybe he just needs to play a more stoic kind of character, because as a lead, he is just kind of fucking awful. I shouldn't be begging an actor to act in a movie. That is correct. I was like, please, right? Orlando, emote, show an emotion, give me so, something yeah. to work with here. Orlando Bloom is a look weird like a name. Boy. Orlando Bloom, uh, sort of. Yeah. It's very plant-like. It's very, um, it's it's very. It, no, it feels like um, it feels like a fictional name, you know? Yeah, might, like, it, might be like a stage an actor's name, name but mm. not a real actor's name. Like well, a it stage might be yeah. someone he made up. Uh, no, that's his name. Oh. That's his name. Yeah, um, he's got a very long, weird name. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's it's it, like if you include the middle name and all that too. Let me, let me see if I can. Orlando I'll, I'll find Luminescence where. Bloom. Well, the na so that yeah, the name is Orlando Jonathan Blanchard Copeland Bloom. All right. It's a very yeah. long name. <laughs> why? Why so many names? Does he come from like two different families and they split up and he doesn't? No, really no, no. The, hide, so we just threw him all there. In there is no hyphens. There's no hyphens though. So that also, seems to just be like. All the I don't know ones. how good. I can't remember how good he is in Pirates of the Caribbean. I feel like he was better in that than the things we saw. You, you know. You know. Yeah. I have feelings. I will protect them with a sword. I, f I feel like I have feelings, but I'm not sure. But yeah, so there you go. No worries about running out of hot takes, guys. 
more on the way. Speaking of more on the way, I gotta use the loot. I'll be back in just a second. Very well. That was a good one. I'm I'm very happy with that one. That was a that was a good meme. All right. I didn't get it. Yeah. I'm just I'm just saying that's a, that's a good meme. Anyway, I'm fuck Mary kill Wallace from Wallace and Gromit, Tesla from Prestige, and Zola from Captain America: First Avenger. I think we're marrying Wallace again. I guess fuck Tesla yeah. kills Zola. Easy. I think that would be my, yeah, decision too. Yeah. I mean, like, Tesla's played by David Bowie and Zola's played by... Oh. I don't See, want to I was, I was strictly looking into the characters, now you've made it personal. Nice. I don't find Toby Jones attractive, personally. That's Sounds mean. That's mean about it, yeah. Jesus. Fucking problem. <laughs> The guy did a really good job, and you're just like, "Ooh, I wouldn't fuck you." It's like, all right. I'm just imagining, like, he comes out of the premiere, and that's what someone says to him. <laughs> hey, look, you were pretty great, but I wouldn't fuck you. <laughs> he's, like, he's just like, that's... He's just like, oh, why did you tell me this? It's like, oh, I just wanted you to know that I wouldn't. It's like, oh, what? Okay. What's wrong with the truth, Toby? <laughs> Do you hate the truth? <laughs> What's wrong with the truth? Do not like the truth. The truth hurts you, Libcock. Now let's let's bring out some statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, do you know that only twenty percent of the population would fuck you? <laughs> okay. So I don't know. I don't know. That might, that might be pretty good. I don't yeah, know, maybe like, that's what's good. the normal number. Like the normal number is higher, Toby. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. How much higher? Like, it's like 23% normally, yeah. I don't know, like, I kind of want to, like, I kind of, I kind of want to see this as, like, an animated sketch or whatever. <laughs> or, you know, actually just, like, a, a genuine sketch with Toby Jones acting this out. I don't know, I feel like... He you just, get, throughout the entire conversation, he consistently comes back to, I don't know, 20% seems pretty good, though. Like, <laughs> just, I know, I don't know. Um... Hype as hell, nicely done with the lily pads. You totally deserve this for your wonderful sense of masochism. Ah, thank you. It was it was a difficult one, but it's done. I even did the other ones. I think all the hardest levels are now defeated, except for the fucking watermelon one. But I don't have to do that. Nobody in chat said I had to do that one, so I'm fine. It's like, okay, so I'm thinking that twenty percent probably is pretty good, right? Because you've got first of all, first people to discount are like people who are just not attracted to men, right? You know, sure. Going to want to fuck Toby Jones. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's you've already got you've already only got fifty percent there, and you know what? Then like people in relationships, I guess, or are we counting them as not wanting to fuck Toby Jones because they wouldn't? Um, wanna... Well, so what? Well, some would. You know what? You, I think you could say yeah. You know, as long as probably, the probably nobody's... more than fifty percent of people are attracted to men because I forgot about bi people, but uh. Wow, er I am, bi erasure. I am a bi people. Bi erasure. I am a bi people. Bi erasure happening live. So let's say that's like, let's say that's like, I don't know, 45% of people are not attracted to men. I don't know, that's a guess. Um, then, so we've got 55% left. So I feel like if, uh, it's like, I don't know, that's like two out of five people, that's. That's nearly half, really, at that point. I don't know, I feel like- I feel like that's probably normal. I feel like, uh, even if you're very- Is, is this all I of the Toby like... Jones dialogue? <laughs> yeah, this is the Toby <laughs> Jones dialogue. He says all of that, the guy's like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Molly, you're a lesbian now? Hi, Rax. Is it- is it Fringy's turn to say hi, Rax? Hey. Hi, Rax, what's up? Yeah, I'll be a lesbian, that's fine. Um, I only caught the first five minutes of this, so I don't know if you threw s Oh, wait, we read that one. That was, uh, Jay yeah. jumped out of it. Look, we're catching up. Going great. I remember being put off a bit as a kid when I watched Treasure Planet for the first time and how the vacuum of space was in this world. I was like, how are they breathing, lol? Oh, they... I didn't... I, they had, like, explicit explanation in the opening. I don't remember. That's an inch... Oh, there is, like, the, the explicit is, oh, yeah, this in this place, like, the air's breathable in space. That's just how it works here. Oh, is that, is that it? Like, they're just like, it's like space, but you can breathe. Yeah, basically, that's, that's the Better than nothing. The it's something, yeah. I mean, you know, that's fine when there is just that, uh, 
if you want to make that, you know, this is a world where you can breathe in space. And well, the only thing would be then is that if you rely on that same vacuum to do things that the vacuums do for other payoffs, well, but you, like, know also you can breathe oxygen. Rely on, they rely on an absence of gravity still. Well, gravity there is no isn't gravity. a result of a vacuum. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's fine. True, that's true, but it's just the idea that, um, yeah, there are, there are no payoffs related to, like, oxygen stuff and then... Yeah, as long as, as long as we're at that point, it should be okay. As long as they don't tell us one thing, and then show us another thing. That's all, that's all that matters. Um, BBC Top Gear, at least Clarkson era, was pretty popular in the US, and certainly far more popular than the US version of Top Gear. I guess this is about uh, British yes. content surviving in Americas. Oh, by the way, yeah, Doctor I mean, Who was does. fucking majorly popular in the US. Yeah, especially in the Matt yeah. Smith years, that's when it sort yeah, of it was just like, went over there. Uh, Gary was telling me that apparently it started back up in Britain, and then it was only, I think, Tenants era that they they dropped it all onto like streaming services or something in the U.S. and it went nuts or something. Like people were like, whoa, 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 I want it. I thought, I thought it was Matt Smith's era that went really went to the Um, US, so but... uh, sorry, I was saying that's where it started. Matt Smith era might be where it peaked or whatever. Sure. Or maybe it was Matt Smith's era where it started. I, I I'd have to ask him again. It was interesting, but I don't remember all of the things he said now. Um, just that America went nuts for for Doctor Who. Not any, maybe more. You know what? <laughs> Harry Potter went went nuts in America. Yeah, and all them are British, so you've just been beaten again, Fringy. Absolutely proven wrong. Yeah. Jeez, oh, gang it up on me today. What's yeah, going I know. On? Completely. This is cruel. You. Regarding Treasure Planet, all the pirates did was rig bombs on one of the core engines, knowing that the fall into the core would enact a meltdown. Does that mean something to you, oh. Fringy? I don't know. Wait, what was that? Sorry? So you're asking, uh, someone was asking about like how they, how they managed to, like, to make a planet explode or something? Oh, so... What, could you read the chat out again? Regarding Treasure Planet, all the pirates did was rig bombs on one of the core engines knowing that the fall into the core would enact a meltdown. Oh, then I guess that would explain it. I must have not heard that or misunderstood that. Yeah, that would be fair then. Uh, I guess it's interesting that a planet so sophisticated would be so easily blown up, but... <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, well how do you explain the Death Star then, Fringy? Uh, well... The, the exhaust pretty. port. Have you not seen Rogue One? That's how it explains <laughs> that. That's how it explained, that's true. Before we had no answers. Uh, Rogue One is the best Disney Star Wars film. It is. Probably. Yeah. Easily. Uh, I haven't seen it in ages. K2SO is in it. Yeah. Dude, I, that was such a missed opportunity to not have had um, K2SO's line about them all dying in the vacuum of space while he'll be fine in relation to Leia. Oh. <laughs> These are the whoopsie. We'll all die. And then he's just in the background and goes, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, 2 AFD to the cringe in COD Infinite. It turns out the main protagonist, Nick Reyes, is both voiced and mocapped by the writer, Brian Bloom, meaning he is a literal author insert. Uh, oh, Brian Bloom is a... I don't know. That's not what it means if it's not the same person, basically. If he just voices him and performs him, that's not If you want to define it as the author is inserting himself into the story or something, I guess so. But if I, the character's completely that's... different, then that's kind of not... Yeah, that's what It's not the spirit of it, you know? Well. He is, uh, yeah, no, he, he wrote that. I, but he's, he's done voice acting for a while. He's in a lot of stuff. He played, um, you know about all the Jack stuff. Do you remember the, the guy who sounded like Bender? Who sold you the cars that you drove around in in the desert? Um. Ah, oh, Cleaver. That yeah, was that's him. Cleaver. I was, I, yeah, I, that I was, was thrown off by sounding like Bender because I've never, I've never thought he sounded like Bender. I, I, well, so I thought I, I when I first heard that character speak, I was like, is this John DiMaggio? But it's not. It's yeah, it's this guy, Bloom. Cleaver is such a, a strange one. Cleaver is funny. So I like that character a lot. He is funny. You're like, you talking to me? Yeah, you talking to him? No, I'm conversing with me sweet departed mom. Fringy. I like those games a lot. Fringy spreading yeah, his great. lies like he spreads his goo. Mm. Hey. Stop it. 
I like Kira though. Kira's my my favorite character in those. She's just she's just comfy, you know. Um, she's just a pleasant person to have around. I mean, I definitely prefer the more out there, outlandish characters in, in those games. Well, though, to be fair, like they they all have their own charm to them. That's the thing. Yeah. No, I I uh I really like Daxter. I know that like that's somewhat contentious. Song. Well, I don't think it is actually. I think most people like Jack uh, Daxter. I feel like most people like Daxter, but also find Daxter annoying. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I don't know. That just because it's kind of because that was around the same time that people were like, oh, in Ratchet One, he's just a jerk. Ratchet's a jerk. It's like, dude, he's going on an arc. I don't know what like I don't know what they're meant to do here. Sh should he just be awesome right from the outset and not a little bit brash? Like he's going on a journey. He's becoming the good one. I hate him. You guys I hate dig lombaxes. Why? Statistically, That's... um, about lombaxes, it's not as smart. Oh, is that enough to hate them? Yeah. You guys did great on Adam Sitch show. Also, can we have a retail Hellworld story sometime, or something similar? Also, also high regs. Is it back to you at that point, Jay? Hey. Hello. Hey. There. Um, I think I told most of the ones I remembered from my like retail hell stuff but like the longer time goes on the less i will remember them in general all the details become fuzzy um but i mean if you have modern ones like like free if, if anything hellish happens in in any jobs you're doing here and there uh we, we could talk about those another time <laughs> there you go get excited for the future um you make some good points, Jay. However, you have pronouns in your bio, so they're actually wrong, and you are a lesser person. <laughs> Damn. Awesome. That's, 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 my, that's another in, argument that Smudboy was leaning on hard. Yes. Was, it, like, to me, it's more of a position. That's always been a meme to me when people actually think it's like a, an actual argument. It's an like, oh, point, so that's yeah. a good old-fashioned ad hominem, isn't it? It's like... Also, people that say it's not hominem. supposed to be an argument, it's supposed to be an insult. It's like, oh... So well, it is an ad hominem. Well, but when they do it in oh, response, yeah, no, that's just an insult. When yeah. they do it in response to an argument, though, it's like so that's not and an argument. <laughs> yeah, like if there's if you if you're in an argument and you say that and then you don't have a response, that is an ad hominem, basically. Yeah. Well, it's it's literally just, I associate you with people that I don't like. Yes, mm -hmm. because oh, okay. you've got pronouns in your bio. Um. Boop boop boop. Bringy. <laughs> Capsicum. Oh wait, I read that one out. Artards are always on guard. Wait, did you? I think, or was that? Because I'm pretty sure there was a follow-up on the capsicum. That's the one I read from before. So if there is one, we will get oh. to it. Um. Yeah, uh, the Rags fans were. He called them Artards, and fans of Mia called Mongos. On uh, <laughs> Adam and Sitch. Guys, what are you gonna watch? God's Not Dead trilogy for EFAP movies. Fourth one's coming out soon. Time's running out. Who's gonna be in the fourth one? Is it still Kevin Sorbo? Could he come back? That'd be great. God's Not Dead. Excellent trilogy. And soon to be quadrilogy. But I, I don't know if we'd be doing that three fan movies. If we did... Oh boy. The controversy in chat and comment sections. And we'd have to get logic as well, so... That would go over real well. How could we resist? But I mean... I don't think anybody would deny the movies a shit. You got that. I've returned. Hello! Fun fact! Religion. Well, not really. God's not dead, does that count? I guess <laughs> yeah, so. Does that count as religious talk? Uh, fun I fact. Not. I hope our level of discourse would be better than that. You love <laughs> God's Not Dead. Everyone did. It was a great film. For reasons. That movie, man. I, I feel like that'd be a very controversial EFAP movies. That's what I said. That's I what feel like, yeah, I feel like even, but I feel like even Christians would be like, yeah, this is just like. Well, no. mm. <clears throat> well I mean, it exists and it made a lot of money, so it makes me wonder, like, how many people did enjoy it, you know? Um, yeah, maybe. I guess if they like, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like why but, they would enjoy it. <laughs> because it just confirms. Well, because it raises it's... really good points, you know. Like, wh I mean, why would you hate God if he doesn't exist? That's a, That's good a point. great point. <laughs> it's like all this Christian film. It's like when you go to the, the YouTubers who are Christians and they do exorcisms and stuff, and they're like, oh my God. Pray, that... All the comments are just like, praise the Lord. 
There's a Christian really network weird, too man. of like movies That's... on. Isn't it called Pure yes. Flex? I, yes, yes it is. Oh man. I always find that stuff really weird. weird. I prefer Pure Dicks. <laughs> I guess it's just, I don't know, it feels weird. Like, it always felt weird to me, I think, just openly talking about it like that. About dicks? Uh, well, that's that's a little weird too. I guess <laughs> why. Just... I think that's fine. <laughs> I feel oppressed. Yeah, should do. Yeah, fuck you, Ray. We gotta open up Fringy's mind on the whole dicks thing, the dicks question. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, we read that one out. Fun fact: the tallest vegetable ever recorded was oh, it says was Christopher Reeves. Oh, Aww, that's, that's mean. mean. Uh, Fringy, my point is that in the US it's more specific. The plant is capsicum and the fruit bell slash chili peppers. Oh, is fruit slash thing. You just call the whole thing a capsicum. Okay, but my point was that in Australia it's called a capsicum and that, that etym like in terms of etymology it's one and the same. That I mean, it was just, point. you just, you found it surprising we hadn't heard of it, but I mean, at this point uh, it just seems yeah, like... Yeah, but I, I, that's just a culture, I mean, at, yeah, like, at this point it doesn't surprise me anymore, because now I know that that's what it's called in America, so, yes. and in the UK. So we, I'm we, curious, we all so learned something new. Had you heard of bell peppers before this moment, and just didn't... I'd heard of peppers. Connection? We have peppers, so, like, capsicums are the ones that aren't spicy, basically. Like, that's, that's tense. So capsicums are, like, the ones I posted there, it's just normal and then peppers are the hot ones interesting um, we don't call them we don't call them bell peppers we just call them peppers how do you eat a ghost um fucking chew your butt oh god it's not that hard hmm i gotta do everything for you jeez these bleeding heart lib cucks all right you know always there asking how to eat ghosts and they can't figure it out for themselves yeah do what you want the government to eat for yeah, you yeah i was about to Exactly. You gotta, you got at some point, you gotta learn how to take care of yourself, right? God. Did you watch any of the game shows like Crystal Maze, Nightmare, Jungle Run, etc.? I always thought, why are these kids so stupid a lot of the times? Yeah, I watched a whole bunch of them. They were fun. You guys ever see them? I think uh, I've heard of some ones. of them, but I didn't, I didn't watch them, no. It's like, a, it's like much simpler deal. and lower stakes, where it's just like, can you get across this easily platformable place to get the key, and then you get five keys and you unlock oh. the thing. Uh, I watched the show Wipeout. Raj, you might have heard it, because that one was in America. You heard I've heard of Yeah, Wipeout. Wipe that's like a almost a different genre. Um, what I'm referring to is like, so in Crystal Maze and other stuff, there'd be like puzzles and stuff for kids to figure out, and they've uh. got to unlock all the doors, and then they get the big prize sort of thing. I see. They were fun. They were neat. Do the watermelon one also high rags? Oh. Hello. I gotta do the watermelon one now. And I gotta do it the right way, I can't cheat, so. Oh, it's a level in your little game. It is in my little game. Any games on the horizons that you are hyped for? Uh, I, I am I don't super. Know. Go ahead. I, I'm, gonna say, I'm not gonna say hyped, but I'm, uh, I'm hopeful for a dark tide and. Halo and Battlefield, and eventually Scorn is supposed to come out, and that looks interesting. So, Spider Man's coming Anybody out. Hmm. <gasps> um. Honestly, I'm only gonna be hyped for things that you remind me fucking exist. I, I've <laughs> I got nothing right now. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I am quite excited for Metroid Dread. That game looks really cool. And it's only out in a couple of months, so. Less- no, actually, less than that, I think. It's only a month away. So that's All very right. exciting. New- new Metroid, chronologically, for the first time in, like, a de two decades. Yeah. Well, there we go. What about you, Jay? What was the question? Are you excited? Are you hyped games? Any hype- uh, games, yeah. What I've lost the ability to feel excitement. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Um, I guess. I mean, I, I, Deathloop looks interesting. Deathloop looks really cool. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that one. About that, I guess. All right, there we go. I mean, Metro Dread is something I'd be interested in as well. Yeah. No, it's looking, looking real schmick. There's a new trailer that just came out. It's got like full-on cutscenes and stuff. And it's like, man, 
It feels like a lot of times it's a Metroid game like that. Oh, actually, no, it hasn't. It's been a decade since it. No, forget Scratch that. It, it just looks really cool, that's all. It's neat. Will Metroid be in it? Yes, yeah, I Metroid love Metroid. Is the main character. Yeah, she's Sweet. my favorite. She's I like her I almost as much as I like Halo. I'll be in the chief joke, Serious Samus. Super Metroid, Serious Samus. Um, hey, Vrongoloid. Hey. What are your biggest positives and negatives of RDR2? And would you say that it's a mediocre, good, great, or excellent game? Ooh, ooh. So, problem is I haven't played it since it came out. And if you asked me then, I would have said it was great. Um, but I feel like... I feel like there are things that are worth criticizing. Like, for instance, Rockstar's controls are just dated at this point. Like, there's no reason why I should be tapping X repeatedly to sprint. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's dumb. Just map it to the... Map it to the uh, R3, you know, push down and then sprint. Like, there's no reason for that. I remember that the gunplay was a little bit... Like, it, it just needs to be free aim. The lock-on kind of makes this game really easy. You just lock on, aim to their head, snap, aim to their head, snap, and just keep doing that. It should be free aim, like, by default. Because, um, of course, you can turn that off. It's like, but that's available, and it feels like that's the default way to do it. Then why would you ever do that? So I think that should be turned off. But yeah, no, I, I do like that game a lot. Yeah, I know that the GTA stuff for a while just seems to be when it comes to it's definitely a, a whole is more than the sum of its parts kind of deal. Yeah. Because um, yep. if like cut, <laughs> it's not that impressive mechanically. That would that yeah. would always be the criticism of like a lot of Rockstar games is that even from a design standpoint too, pretty conventional. So what would you give it overall then? Um, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, I might say great, but I think I would need to play it again with a critical eye because at the time I was just playing it really excited and yo know, look a Rockstar game, woohoo! They're one of the few companies that like in terms of reliably, I'll just be like really anticipating whatever they're, they're making. Well, it seems like they don't care about making games anymore. It's online experiences at this point. Ching. Yeah, money. There, I did the watermelon level, and I even stood on the blender with Mario. Look at that. Look how dangerous that is. Jeez. Lucky that's not on. Is it on? It was on. Oh, so Mario was just invincible then. And he's got some strong feet. Close for Mario. Gary Stew. Mm-hmm. Damn straight. Beat the fucking watermelon level, though. What is in the U.S. section at your market or store? Freedom. The what, sorry? The U.S. section of your market or store. Oh, there is no U.S. section here. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I don't shitty store. <laughs> is there a U.S. section in, like, American? We don't have an Australian <laughs> section yeah, in Australian store. stores. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Sometimes ethnic food is sort of kind of together in some places but kind a of. lot of the times it's no. just blended with other things like if you went like i think some some of the asian stuff in terms of like sriracha and some of the sauces and things they'll be kind of in a spot with the rest of the sauces but they'll sort of be like right next to them grouped together somewhat um just depends but generally since we're so used to kind of eating just everything um it's a lot more normal to just see them with everything Mm -hmm. Like, no, like, I don't know, no one really, no, like, when you go to the store and buy taco shells and stuff, like, sure, there's probably some Mexican chick on the box, and she's really hot and all that, but it's not like, no one's like, ah, yes, Mexican cuisine, it's just like, it's just so normal yeah. that you have taco shells or tortilla chips that it's not even, Yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's surpassed being like an ethnic food, it just says Tostitos or whatever on the front, or whatever brand, Lolita's... Esperanza's delicious horny chips. Wow, that was Zora's oh, yeah. wife's oh, yeah. name in Mask of Zora was Esperanza. True fan. Okay, that's not true. Rags doesn't have an Asian food. No, they, there. I think there are, but I don't like when I go to the store to buy things for me. I generally won't be like, oh, I'm gonna buy 
Mexican food to make it home. I was like, it's that's not not the kind of shopping that I do. But you know, I'll I'll eat the fuck out of a Asian you know restaurant or something like that, a hibachi grill. I love those. But when I'm buying food for me for a from a place, I'm not gonna buy like spe specific Mexican or Italian food. Mm -hmm. Um, boop boop. Gaither's Pond is top tier Christian media. Please Google images it. It's, it's, it is every bit of the year two thousand two. Gaither's Pond. That's what they said. Gaither's Pond. G A I T H E R. G A Y. G A I. J G A I T H. E R. Yeah. Gaither's Pond. It's a TV program. Um, apparently, it's a. Oh, I've seen this shit in um, uh, everything is terrible, uh, compilations. <laughs> that's that's the only re that's how I know about it. Oh my god! I just found the most big the biggest ripoff ever. Hey, give me just a second. I want to show you this image. Do you guys think? Do you guys think that this just might be based on another sort of uh, movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. That looks entirely original. I don't really know what you're trying to say. No, that's... That doesn't... <laughs> that's, yeah, that doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. From her aquarium home to a new life under the sea. Is, is, it Finding Nemo? Nemo? is it Shark Tale? You decide. Yeah. It does um, feel I'll like they really are, like, <laughs> on that line. Like the, the, that title is just, it's exactly <laughs> Shark Tale. All right. <laughs> so this is, this is the description of Gaither's Pond on IMDb. A bunch of pond animals live and deal with their daily lives. Also, God, it's not very good. What? <laughs> 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 oh wait a second it stars and the creator in star is benji and bill gaither oh the, the gaither brothers made this huh Days. oh my goodness um mark wait a second wait a second look look here look at this look at this look here um look listen uh, observe this. Look at the characters, and then who the voice actors are. No pictures. That's how you know they're famous. Oh, um, what the- what? Yeah, they all, yeah. Their names line up. What the hell? Wait, what? What is like that? Like they're playing themselves, you mean? So their names so Mark, cast. Mark yeah. Lowry plays Carp Lowry. George <laughs> Yant plays Bullfrog Yants. Guy Penrod plays Guppy Penrod. What a good name is Guy Penrod. <laughs> Jesse Dixon <laughs> plays Jesse Frogman. JD Sumner plays Crawdad Sumner. They're, they're just they're names of the actors. Yeah. So that's so let me funny. ask you this. Now that we have that in our brain holes, right? Did they come up with all the characters and had to look around for voice actors that match the names? That was definitely or, it. It, which is it, that's almost certainly true, or which is not likely at all, because it would be really dumb. They happen to name the characters after who they wanted to be the voices, which doesn't sound that sounds absurd to me. When you name it, option, but... like Guy Penrod, that's the one you had to find because yeah, you, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Guy Penrod, it's like man, we need him. <laughs> we have the technology. That was when they were like, "Hey, is your name Guy Penrod?" By any chance, we're looking for a Guy Penrod, and he's like, "Sure, I'm Guy Penrod." You're like well, Penrod, what a good. <laughs> what a name! <laughs> Just fucking change your name if your name is Penrod. Um, but uh, someone said, "Look at Finding Jesus." Look, we could do. You could make Jesus. entire channels. Devote. How come Finding Jesus Two automatically pops up? Oh my god! Got Jesus Two. <laughs> oh my god! It's a. Uh, here, I'll just show you. <laughs> I just love that they had to make a second one. They didn't find Jesus. 
That makes his eyes look creepy in that first image. So Finding Jesus, Finding Jesus 2, and Finding Jesus Children's Church Curriculum Digital, Finding Jesus Under the Sea, it's like $112. Oh, okay. Well, to be fair, I think I think that's probably for like a whole vacation Bible school setup and list of things to do. Okay. So it's probably a really good deal in that sense. Then again, it's all fucking made up anyway. So who knows? It's probably easier though if you... It's, Same it's fish like can't three, talk. Uh, they can. I saw the meme of the fish. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. Um, we could do a whole arc of terrible... By the way, it's one of my... One of my guilty pleasures is watching old, like, everything is terrible stuff. The whole... I, the weird 90s, 80s kind of... So from, like, the mid-80s until, like, 2004, 2005-ish was is a gold mine of weird, bizarre... A lot of it is young Christian like TV shows and films, and a lot of it was just, like bizarre experimental shit with strange animals and settings and premises. Um, it, it fascinates me to look at this. Strange um, animals. It, yeah, just the when it comes to costumes, when it comes to art direction and the sets that they would use and the voice acting, it's just a treasure trove of weirdness. Would recommend. All right. Um, if you guys heard of this news about Halo Infinite, how do you feel of only gaining XP from challenges and not earning any from matches? Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It depends on what the challenges are. If the I, challenge I guess is just... very, if if the challenge is like kill an enemy, kill five enemies, kill ten, or complete these objectives or do these modes. It depends. If the if the challenges are stupid and they really kind of force you into playing with weapons you don't like or using strategies and stuff that just don't make any sense, I'll hate it. Um, or if they're very specific. Uh, like, there's some... I like Battlefield 1 a lot, but some of the challenges in that game for unlocking certain weapon variants and things are stupid. And they're really dumb. And they require you to play specific maps and do specific things on those maps or maybe win 10 of a specific mode which might be difficult if it's a mode that just no one really plays anymore especially after all these years um or, or just they're really grindy like whoever at dice thought that getting 300 kills with a self slaughter 1906 factory fuck you that is a slog <laughs> that is a boring fucking chore Oh my god, it's not even really a good gun. Fuck you for doing that. But it, it all depends on what the challenges are. If you gave um, me... If I saw a list of challenges right now, I would be able to give you a pretty great... I'm a, you know what? I, I'll, 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 I'm a little bit different on that one. I just don't like it as a thing in general. I think it's a thing that is designed to incentivize making you play every day, and it means that if I have one day available, I'm just having a shittier time. Because like daily, weekly challenges are usually incredibly easy to get. Once those are exhausted, it takes you a lot longer to get the week. Like, you, you've you just limited your potential to get a whole bunch of uh, experience once you get all those daily challenges out of the way. It's designed to get you to come back every day because that's what they want, because you want you in the ecosystem. That depends on the challenges of just... itself, but I, I, I do see what you mean. But I... Um... That's my concern, anyway. Just so from hearing it. Factory's great. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. Quit. Stop. It isn't. Don't say that. It's one of those meme guns in the game where you're like, oh, I'll play this for a while. It's interesting. Haha, ha, I'm having fun. All right, now back to the real good guns. Um, but yeah, in terms of what Fringy said, it depends on what the challenges are. If they are constantly repeatable or if they're almost like like uh, like points that you just continuously reach, like you don't, you don't get XP just because you finish the game. There are constantly challenges that you are leveling up and getting progress towards all the time because if they're the way you said eh, but yeah, hopefully it, it depends on what the challenges actually are that's pretty much all it comes down to because sometimes yep. in battlefield games and stuff like that completing challenges will just give you flat out more xp than just finishing the game if you go for medals and things of that nature um you you really can it, it, it will be faster, it will more than double your progress than if you were just playing randomly and finishing games. It's all in the execution and what the challenges actually are. Yep. Hopefully they're not crap. Um, okay, I was gonna say, if it was like, 
for every match you get X amount of XP, but then there's a challenge that's like, complete five matches and you get XP and it just resets all the time. I suppose you could balance that out in a way that you don't, it doesn't change necessarily anything in a way. I just don't know if that's how they're doing it at all. Yeah, and if it's, like, the more you use a weapon, the more, like, each weapon has specific challenges associated with it, or, I don't know, it depends on the execution. Uh, I don't know, I'm worried, I feel like it's just, why wouldn't you give people experience for finishing a game, you know? Because yeah. what if you're just, you know, what if you're just not really that good? And so it's it just flat out is more difficult for you to complete challenges or it's way slower and you don't even get a bone thrown your way because you finished the game and you stuck it out. Like, I don't know. Uh, um, Molly, you're too good at this game. You aren't supposed to beat three of the worst missions on their first go like that. And yet you have nicely done. Thank you. I've done way worse on the normal missions like just now. Like, do you see that? I threw two peppers at ineffective. He's laughing at me. Oh, that's fucking, that's fucked up. Um, yeah, I'm doing way worse on the normal ones than I am on the hard ones. It's a weird day. But thank you. Um, more would you ever play through KOTOR 2? It would be interesting to watch you play. Many say it's one of the best Star Wars content out there. And just saw Lord of the Rings for the first time. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Well, I hope oh, you enjoyed I, Lord of the Rings. No comment on Lord of the Rings. I hope you really liked it. I, I will assume that you did. Yes. Because only that is the neutral position. Rings, yes. Um. Well, Storm Rings is a good point. What if? What about people who only play single player? So hopefully challenges extend to single player. Um. If uh, so, uh, you know, it's but completing levels, killing certain amounts of enemies, doing certain specific maybe level challenges. Maybe they have ones in there that are kind of like um, you can choose to start a level with a kind of modifier uh, that will give you more XP, but says, oh, you can't throw grenades or do things like that. Maybe you can mix and match, sort of like um, Heroes of Hammerwatch does that really well, where you can, uh, there's a wishing fountain and you can give yourself a bunch of penalties that make the game harder, but depending on how difficult the penalties are and the handicap is essentially, you'll get more gold and more experience and stuff. So it will allow you to kind of fast track your progress if you know so you can challenge yourself a little bit harder and i really like that system and it works the opposite way too you can give yourself boons and buffs but it will lower the amount of uh, experience and um like ore and gold that you will get so ah, that's an interesting thing i wish more games would do if i feel i feel like it rewards skill really well so you're like oh i'm really good so i kind of i can fast track i love it when games reward skill <gasps> that is pretty neat, I will say. Um, as for KOTOR 2, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um, I, I just have no necessary, like, thing where I'm just like, I wonder when that'll happen. It's like, I know a lot of people want me to play it, but what if I'm like Jay, and I start generating some really hot takes about how the mechanics aren't very good in a, in a cruel way? Or two. That's how it's pronounced. It's pronounced Katortu. Katortu? Oh, Katortu. Katortu. Yeah. <laughs> what that even was. Um, but yeah, generally. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, if you play D&T, don't follow the rules too hard. Hmm. I imagine Rags will be deciding what rules we'll be following. Mm -hmm. Uh, rules are definitely more of a suggestion. Uh, okay. Wow, you pirate. But, uh, yeah, because the DM will essentially decide what the rules will be, so they can make their own personal rules, or they could change things up, but yeah, the rule book and the guide is, for obvious reason, because there's a lot of rules, it will tell you how the game pretty much goes, but ultimately it's up to the DM to decide what really, what really happens, what you really do. Uh, first time donating. Found y'all through Adam and Sitch. I've been binging videos, enjoying the entertainment. Hey. Yeah, Adam and Sitch are good lads. They go through. They're good. I had a lot of fun on their uh, their stream. I had a good time. There's a lot of solidarity, I would say, because they have to watch some really shit content. Yeah, they do. I don't know how they do it sometimes. I mean, um, have Rags, how can you say that? Well, Rags knows how he can do it. Yeah, well, we watch some. Yeah, that's true. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe I've just, maybe my mind is just sort of... Boo, I'm low on health. Give me some, like a good friendly boss would totally do. Oh, coins? 
Wow, this game's got rubber banding in it. And that's bad. I don't know what rubber banding means. It's like if I'm, if I'm falling too far behind, the game will start to ease up. And if I'm going way too yeah. far in front, it might go harder. Go harder? Oh, yes. For me, rubber banding is the generally it's the it's the optical effect you get when a player's connection isn't smooth. Yeah. So they sort of like oh they 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 they're move slowly and then they sort of catch up to where they're supposed to be or maybe bounce back a little bit. Oh, I've always known it in reference to difficulty. I didn't even know it in reference to that. I I didn't uh, I wasn't aware of uh, the way you're talking about either. So interesting. That's how they use it in Britain. I've yeah. always I've always thought that was called capsicum. <laughs> Bring you fuck them it's up. Called, we call it bell banding. It's They're making fun of your, your mystery fruits or whatever they are. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over it. It's, it's fine. You can... Uh, Bringy, what's your favorite meme name for wings? Mine is Samurai Richard McGravison, the V6. V6 is a joke I've about his heard. salvage title V6 Mustang. Oh, I've not heard that, but that's really funny. McGravison. Um, I, yeah, no, I haven't. Mustang, is that what he drives? Apparently, maybe? I don't know. Well, maybe he, he briefly drove it and then had to get rid of it. Yeah, I bet it was like a shitty automatic. Well, I've never seen this I don't game like before. automatics, I will say. Wait, what game, Jay? I'm a fan of automatic. I've, I've found a Fall Guys mode that I've never seen before. Oh, oh okay. boy. Cool. Count the fruit. I didn't. Ah. Count the fruit. You you can't count that one. That's a caps capsicum. <laughs> I think capsicum's a fruit, right, Fringy? Yes. Oh, wait, vegetable. It's a vegetable. Yes. It's not a plant. Really? It's Cap not a it's not a fruit? I think it's a vegetable. I think oh, oh is peppers wait, are peppers fruit or vegetables? Are peppers? I don't I so I think they're fruit. Let me see. Is capsicum a vegetable? No, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. Is uh, cultivated as annual vegetables, while the edible parts are botanically fruit. Well, so, okay, what do you know? GI Joe. Interesting. In. I like that we've learned so much today. I know. Me too. God damn. Um. Hi Rags. Hi Longman. Hi Frogo. Hello. Ooh, water. Hey. Hey. Uh, is to 150. May there at least Holy be shit. 150 more. So, um, so this game just this game just eliminated all but four of the people. Right. You do get yeah, that without round, without context. It's round two. Huh? It's round two. This game. Oh, okay. Just, sorry, this game just eliminated all but four people. That's the context two. we need. That That's, was the yeah, one. That's the context. Uh, it was a memory game where, like, yeah, they've added another version of the memory game, I know. Um, Could be good, I don't know. But, um, it's a memory game where all but, like, holy shit. Literally, hang on, I think, yeah, someone, okay, someone just won on round two because literally every other player got the memory game wrong. Oh, Damn. Jeez. Every champions. Fuck, is there water everywhere? Super Mario Sunshine. There is water everywhere. There's water in you, in your soul, in your heart. Not everywhere, Fringy. I know that you're you're excited, but not everywhere. Where is the water? It's quite wet. Um, are we gonna get Fringy and Mootle plushies next? Maybe even a certain wolf? Uh, wolf was not at all interested, which I think is completely fair. As for Fringy and Mootle... I mean, I would imagine I mean, a fringy uh, one, but the problem is, like, where would we... You, you, I'm assuming you guys don't want us to make one for fucking, like, every person connected with EFAP, you know? <laughs> At that point, it's like, they should probably make them... You know, like, Jay, for example. Hmm? What was that? Just have the entire cast and extended crew on my shelf It would be neat, but, I um... To watch me masturbate. I imagine Gen 2 will be the, the 3, potentially. We will probably have a chat about that with chat on an EFAB episode at some point, see what everyone says. See what everyone's interested in. Because you never know. You should make a smart boy one. Oh. <laughs> what does it say when you push the button on it? The N-word. The N-word. I'm not racist, but... <laughs> 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 
Thank you all for being a bright spot in my life. Been here since day one, and you've helped me through some tough times. Blessings of the dawn be upon you. Sincerely, Mr. Massive. Aww. Thank you very much. You know yeah, what? That becomes, with every day that goes by, the here since day one accolade becomes more and more impressive. Yeah, man. It's, it does, doesn't it? Just think about that time. We've been through some eras. Lots of time has passed. They were saying on the Discord that um, the Atla hot take is now... We, we've done... So... Everything before the Atla hot take, like literally the moment, everything is all happened again in timeline. Like that's how much time has passed. That's that's nuts. Yep. Everything has happened again in like, timeline. Like, you know, I don't know why I'm struggling to explain this. You know what I mean, right, Frankie? <laughs> like, as long as there's been so the, the time that has elapsed between EFAP beginning and Atla, that time has elapsed again between Atla and now. Yeah. Okay. We're chronologically as distant from that as that is from the beginning of IFAP. Yeah. That doesn't feel right. Does it not? No. No. No, it didn't. Bank account hacked. I wanted to give more. Love ya. Oh, don't, don't fucking worry about it. Damn. If your bank account's hacked, get that shit sorted out. Hope you're alright. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Get, I, 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 get on some, get some calls going. Figure out who's done it. And then give them over to... Uh, what's the bounty hunter's name? The one about with the TV show? Mandalorian. <laughs> yes, that's who I meant. Get him to the Mandalorian. You'll fuck him up. He allegedly is a bounty hunter. Um, Robert, who did you mean? Um, Dog the Bounty Hunter, is it? Dog? Yeah. Dog. Yep. I remember Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, that was an, that's that was on back. They referenced that in good old South Park as well. They did. That, um, he bear maced. Every, that was yeah. Common bear maced everybody <laughs> he encountered. <laughs> I would not want to get sprayed with bear mace. <laughs> so, <laughs> doesn't seem like a fun time. Um, Fringy, where is your plushie? If not here, is five dollars to buy you for the day? Is that a lot of money for you? I don't know. It probably is. Oh. I don't know if that was almost a boogie reference. I hope it is. I think it was a boogie reference. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it is literally a year be before ago uh, that me and Rags first got into like a call or a back and forth email with the plushy people. So we were like, I guess it's just me and you, lad. And then by the time it was all sorted, we were like, hey, Frank, you want to be on your fat? And you were like, yeah, okay. So. Yeah, and then at that point it was too late. But, yeah, but it won't be okay. next time. No. Assuming everyone's still- you know, we haven't actually mentioned them this stream. I guess we probably should. Because, uh, they are running out of time, Rags. We got, well, like, we got six days? days to buy these, I think. That's if they want them. Who knows? Yeah, they do want them. Oh, they want them. We're close to, um, 1,000% funded. Jeez. Oh, wow. That is very impressive. For those. Well, that, that means that you can go into production. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, yes, that is what that means. For those who don't know, there are rags and moobshly plushies available on Makeship. I think Thunder's been linking them in chat, so you can you can grab them on there. I've noticed. Um, super easy to find if you don't have a link, just Makeship rags in Google would get you his, and Makeship Mauler, I think, would get you mine. Um, I think they're at the top of the website, too. Um, but yes, there are another five days and 23 hours until they are gone forever. That's true. These are limited time. They there are... will never be a Mahler or Rags plush like these ever again. They are cute little bastards, and... They are. If you buy them together, you get 10% off. Um, it seems like... So there is at least 1,900 of these little guys around the world each. That's pretty crazy. When you consider how big the world is, that is... Yeah. Mm, a lot of little plushies running around. So, um, yeah, uh... 1,900 of them each, or 1,900 in, in total of both of them? N each. Can you buy them again? Mahler, please, I've already bought t both twice, damn. Oh my. <laughs> Rags is too cute, I had to get one as a Christmas gift. I'm yeah, a, I, I, I won't lie, know. I've bought mm. a few rags for, for family members. <laughs> They're pretty mm. adorable. I've got both of them ordered. I've got neither, but I'm thinking I should. Jay, we wouldn't judge you if you didn't I, I get mean, them. We wouldn't judge you at all. I, 
No, nope. I didn't really want both of them. It would anyway, never be a cloud hanging over your presence for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. That there was partly that actually factoring in. It's like <laughs> I really should actually like buy these. Be weird to be like the the an EFAP host who doesn't have the EFAP first gen plushies. It's all right. We wouldn't judge either of you whatsoever. So yes, grab them now. Just say that, but. I don't know, I believe that. Well, this uh, this coming Saturday will be the last time we probably be able to um, tell people about them, and then it'll be right, gone, yeah. gone. So it'll be a fun little campaign. It's gone very well. Um, we 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 didn't really expect it to go this well, to be honest with you. We were kind of like we didn't. We had no guys. idea. We I remember no you clue. you were actually nervous that it wouldn't like succeed at all. I'll be like, honest with you, Frankie. I I should have thought more rationally, but it was the Quinton one where I was like, man, he didn't even fund half of what he was looking for. And he like had it is, it, a more, it like, spent. not only was his audience in subscribers, I think he was around the same as, like, me and Rags put together. Um, but he's also been releasing really long and popular videos. So I was like, so surely that should be an indication. And he didn't even come close. So I was like, oh, shit. No, he had to, so just so we're clear, he had to buy, like, 250 of the damn things himself. To fund it, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of money. Holy dude, where is he gonna dude, put 250 fucking plushies? Like, <laughs> well, in order for the the sale to go through, for them to get made, he had, had I, to. You had to. I don't know. It's it's actually one of the saddest things I've ever seen. <laughs> Having it's, to buy 250 of your own plushies. Oh, man, you're saying it, and it's making me sad for him. Like as you say, it, well, yeah, it really is actually. And I, that's a lot of money. And I thought, you know, that's like that's like six thousand plus dollars. It's a lot. Yeah. I assume he intends to like it's sell them at cons. Then I, 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 I guess he's no not keeping two hundred fifty of them. Well, but if nobody them. bought them initially, why would anybody buy them at a con? Well, he, he can know? give them like, away. <laughs> at, at, he, he could give them away at highly discounted price. The point is, he's like <laughs> over six grand in the hole for his own yeah. plushy launch. <laughs> yeah, that's it's. And you know that he's got. He's probably bought out a fucking storage closet thing and he's probably stuffed them all in there yeah because these come buried in, them like, in a landfill in the middle <laughs> of new mexico <laughs> these come in boxes and everything like yeah fuck me. I, think, I think it, it was fair to look at that and be like hmm but i think the big thing that works in favor is i just think i just think the designs are more appealing why would i want to quentin on my my bed as opposed to that is true i would flash. I would genuinely like to talk to Quentin about that. I'd be like, did you think when designing this guy and approving him that he was like, it's just a, a very normal person it's just a soft plushie? Picture. It's like, I don't see why, but you know, Ragu, he's just a golden I mean, child. Not, like the reason that I feel like I wouldn't get like a plushie going that well, because um, like my avatar is just like a stylized. You beast. would still. I believe you, that you would. Still I think you could make a really show. cool J plushie, especially with the little. Um, yeah. What's the hat called? That you often wear? Is it? Oh beanie. yeah, beanie. Because like J has something called a personality. Yeah. Mm. Charm. Mm. Like there's an individuality to J, and Quentin is just like a gray sludge of sadness. <laughs> Why would could you include a little rhino in mine? I guess. Oh. Yeah, you could sell a rhino, rhino plush. The little Ooh. rider right at flush. Now we're thinking of potential here. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, see? You're doing the thing. You're doing the thing. You were doing the creative thinking of like, what would people want? Well, yeah, that, well that's, that's another thing. You can fucking talk to your community about it and they can be like, oh, this, 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 this. It's like, Quentin, did they say they wanted this and lied to you? <laughs> this all happened. It's, it's doubly sad when you go to the tweet where he like talks about it and shows everybody and so many of the tweets are just like, uh, yeah. That is really unfortunate for him. I do feel bad for him. I feel like if I was going to do much, people would be like, more likely to go for like a shirt or something. Although like there, are, there is potential for that kind of plush. I, I think, think he'd done shirts already. Um, Damn. I guess those didn't do so well either. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the I don't know. It's... I think you should make a meaningful effort if you... <laughs> coming from somebody who's never fucking made or sold shirts ever, but I do think that the, a meaningful effort should be made to put something on the shirt that's really fun and interesting, if you want people to give a shit. You could have a little rhino that you hold, Jane, that's another option. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a rich idea. Tis, tis. I think so. 
Uh, happy 150, long man. When is the EFAP Undertale arc? It's a game that I and others are rabid in their enjoyment. Uh, but its story is balls, and it would be very funny to have it destroyed by the long. Oh my. Oh, I thought people loved that game for its story. I think I like it for the characters. Oh, okay. So maybe the story's not great. I maybe, would, I, I don't know. know. That's the thing. I have I have not played it. No idea. Yeah. Out of the loop on that one. Uh, happy three years of entertaining brilliance, you magnificent gobshites. Aw. Why, that's thank cute. you. Thank you. Yeah, that's very cute. Hi, raggers. Hello. Would you consider editing together portions from the Black Widow Rage video that specifically talk about Phase 4 characters and cinema as a whole? I'm assuming you mean edit them out into, like, separate videos? And... I don't know. At that point, if that's for the purpose of sharing them to someone else, can I just, like, share the timestamp if, if you really wanted to show them that part? I don't know. Obviously, I cut out the one Marvelous scene part because, like, when I was writing the script, it felt like I was creating that, and then I was like, this would be a funny meme. And then it was, like, an actual thing. So, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Fuck, I got, I got evicted. Eliminated, that's the word. Evicted. I was about to say, you got evicted, you just, your landlord just busted in. Get out! Get out! Why, wait, why is he Italian? <laughs> Why? Uh, look, they're Italian. Italian. Oh, they're, Italian. We don't know that there are Italians in, in Scotland. You chose that. I'm asking you why you chose it. I don't need a reason yeah, why. You wouldn't have asked for a reason if he sounded Scottish. Yeah, because it's more likely that he would be Scottish, so I'd understand why you chose so that. So there, needs to, be a, the there needs to be a reason why he would be Scottish. Wow. Okay, I, I, didn't say, I didn't say that. Awesome. I didn't say that. No, you wouldn't need a reason if he was Scottish, it seems like. I didn't say any Is of that. that. I asked you why I'm you chose asking, Italian. I'm asking... Okay, now I'm asking you a question. If I hadn't, if he had just been Scottish, question? would you have asked me why? You seem very evasive right now, Frankie. It was a simple question. It's weird that you're being so evasive, I gotta tell no, you. No, you literally acknowledged <laughs> the question being asked of you and then What's said, the well, I'm gonna again? ask you a question. I said, why did What's you choose Italian? I thought, I thought that would be neat. That's it. That's all. What's, what's so neat about Italians compared to anyone else? I thought it was neat to have a character who was just, you, you wouldn't expect it. And it makes you think about why you wouldn't expect that. I know I wouldn't expect it, because the Italian <laughs> population <laughs> in Scotland is probably not That's the, what I'm not saying. I'm saying it's not interesting to think about why you wouldn't expect it, that's all. That's not that I don't think it's that interesting, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. No, I think it's Too interesting better, to think about. Too better. Uh, okay, fine, sure. Too better. <laughs> hey, Maul, do better at grabbing the tail of that bob on little thing. What do you mean? I've, you I've won the level. There you go. And, and, and Flood said, remember to be kind to your I pets. Was, I was behind it enough that I hadn't seen that. Jay, can you please say you can, <laughs> you'll get your rent, Fringy, when you fix this damn door? Damn. Oh, it's just being said. I, I do wonder when, when people ask me to say stuff, which, which of them are being used for memes? And which of them just want you to just want to see you dance like a marionette at the end of their stream yeah. <laughs> to fulfill their power fantasy? Oh, I yes. made Jay do things. I made. He's the big YouTuber, famous man, and I. He's doing what I tell him to. That means I have power, which means I can sleep at night. Beautiful. You 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 do a good impression of a healthy person. Yeah. Fuck. That was my impression of a healthy person. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, Raggy Doo and the EFAP crew. Happy three years. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Hey. Happy, th happy third anniversary, everybody. Yeah. Happy third anniversary. We're already, already moving right along. You know, the fourth anniversary anytime now. Everyone, run. Or yeah, catches you. will sneak up on us in no time. Yeah. The moment that twenty-four hour stream ends, the timer begins. Yep. Sorry, boys. Looks as though I'm going to have to miss out on this one. Have to watch this on re-upload. Also, enjoyed the Suicide Squad episode. Wish I haven't missed that as well. Had a lot to say about it. That's all right. No problem about it. That's why they re-uploaded. You can check them out whenever you want. It's almost like a constant rags, mall of ringing, etc. People talking forever. While we go to sleep, they're still out there talking. Just talking. Talking into the void. Holy shit, I made it. Congratulations. Thank you. I hope we get another brilliant Jared review video. Oh, I think we'll... I don't know if that'll happen until episode 1000 at this point. Um, Jared is, uh... 
an acquired taste. He's in the past right now, yeah. I and he hasn't been doing any. Yeah, it's, I don't know if he's even been online or if he's in a jail on. somewhere. I mean, I was episode one thousand. How how far away? Would, that would be uh. That so would fifty be per year. Year twenty. Year twenty of each. Hey, it's right? possible. Like <laughs> I'm legitimately. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, yeah, I mean possible, yeah. I feel like metal will be punished metal by then. I guess it's interesting to think about though, like a year 20. It'll be the Fuhrer be, by then. <laughs> if it was year 20, that would mean that EFAP lasted, like it would be longer from then uh, compared to now than YouTube existing as a platform. YouTube's only 16 years old. I mean, we made it three yeah. years. Well, it might, you know, it if might I go like, beyond YouTube, it might do, uh, it might move cross platform at I one mean, point. Maybe, but I feel like YouTube's got like just cornered the market at this point on just video sharing. Well, I mean, like the other the other obvious choice for EFAP, I guess, would be Twitch. Although, I mean, they'd be, they be less welcoming yeah, of us. They'd be less welcoming yeah. of us there. And you can we have opinions. It. YouTube is well, controversial I mean, I'm on enough. And I'm allowed to have opinions. Yeah, well, that's what I'm you think. All your opinions. That's what. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's also going to be crazy if you guys lost that long. So, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere either. I, as far as I know, I mean, 20 years, it sounds crazy, but... I plan I mean, to I'm be down for it. 20 years from now, so... Yeah, I'm not like you know. Chris yeah. Stuckman or, um, or fucking whoever else, where they're like, Ugh, I'd I, if I'm still here 20 years from now, that'll be terrible. It's like, oh... That's weird if to I'm, me. I, maybe it, uh, yeah. If I'm still here in 20 years, it means that I will have been hanging out with people that I like and doing something that I enjoy for 20 years of my life, which is more than many people could ever say. But what if you hate it after year five? Then there will not be a one episode 1000 of EFAP. I'll be working as a funeral director. Wow. Why? Why funeral director? Of all because things. I could channel my sadness into my work. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Jesus. Poor Rags. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you think. I don't know. I think it's kind of nice where if I'm going to be sad, then I feel like I could share another people's sadness on the daily, get paid for it, and maybe I can help them to, you know, overcome their own bereavement of lost loved ones. And I think it's kind of a win win for everybody in a way. I feel like that topic that's just been raised, not the not the sharing and the suffering of people, the uh, oh, okay. the whole idea oh, okay. of doing what you you know, that this idea that it would be crazy to spend twenty years doing an activity that you clearly enjoy doing. Does that not say something about almost the expectations that we have in general as to what we should be doing for money, we, for like to make a living? Like, because it's not We're something not, that I. I mean, society, right, in general. I mean, this is definitely down to individuals, because some people don't agree with that at all. They'd be like, if I'm here 20 years from now, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm i saying that it's because, you know, it because some people would hear that 20 years, it's like, man, that, that huh, yeah, 20 years, wow. I think it's because, maybe generally, there is an idea that you will, like, you're journeying towards something, and right. if you find yourself in a place that you truly enjoy and find fulfilling at an early age, sort of, or you're already there, the idea that you continue doing that for 20 more years doesn't quite gel with the concept of, well, in 20 years, I'll be the manager or I'll be the boss or I will have started my own company or I'd be retired. Like you, you will have moved on to the next thing in 20 mm -hmm. years is probably generally what happens. And I will say, in right. traditional jobs. the people that I referenced, their idea is like, I should be a filmmaker by then, not a fucking YouTuber. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know that's... Um, Herman, yeah. I guess it's just because, yeah, the whole thing of, like, what's next, there should always be a next. That's that's kind of almost the attitude that... I, f I feel like that's probably just an attitude that's cultivated by just the idea that we're always wanting to progress and there's almost this idea that it's not progress if it's not changing but you can get better at what you're doing even if it's the same fundamental oh, thing yeah. oh, and I'm yeah. sure nobody would disagree with that well I mean like here's the thing no one's gonna act like it's sad that um, you've been making films for 20 years no but somebody would think it was sad potentially if you've been making YouTube videos for 20 years 
Well, like, you yeah. know, you use it about improving. It's like, I would genuinely be like, hey, Chris, do you feel you've significantly improved from day one compared to now on your YouTube review reviews? And I wonder if, I don't even know what he would say. He'd be like, well, the camera has a higher resolution. Um, so you got better equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? That's the thing. I have no idea what he thinks because it, it depends on whether he would... To, is Maybe he believes he... he maybe he thinks that the the ability and the talent and the skill was always it's always something that he's had the world just can't appreciate it oh, yet or he's not in a position that his kind of his his work can be you know put into the mainstream so that's why his goal might not be on actually improving his craft but on what steps do i need to take to get the craft that i have like he denigrated his craft I don't even know that he thinks oh, much I mean, of it like, at all. I mean, talking about like him as a filmmaker. Oh. Sort of thing. Not in terms of like his, because he obviously he, he he thinks down on the thing that got him to where he is yeah. because he's dumb. But I mean, in terms of like like anything that gets him closer to being a director in a quote unquote real movie, um, maybe that's what he sees as everything has to be building towards that. And improving the improving his ability to create content isn't it might not really even be related. That's not the goal. If it happens along the way, if he even thinks it's possible, then I mean, jolly well. Uh, but eh. it's, it's definitely more about the labels for him and the categories. Else. Yeah, I made a film and I had catering. It's like <laughs> oh, cool, bro. That means it's a real film. Yeah, it's like, up. okay. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't. What film did you make that required catering? I suppose it's good that he got catering. I mean, like, why didn't you just go run and grab some sandwiches from Five Guys or something? Why didn't you do that? Or you yeah, it does make you wonder. Filmmaking? Did you just hire someone? Did you, did you hire a DoorDash and call that catering? I guess I'm not sure. Yeah, like, I don't know what catering looks like in this world, you know? In this <laughs> like, small making. scale sort of movie making with like five yeah. people. I, I yeah, can you don't need to cater if you got for hundreds of people. people. Like if someone you got hundred people, yeah. Well, someone makes a McDonald's run, or at the end of the day, you go to a restaurant together, because it's you're there's you know. I feel like you could. It's not like I have to cater for a, a dozen plus or even a hundred people. Yeah, I don't think it would be unreasonable to be like, hey guys, do you mind bringing a lunch with you? Because, you know, I know it's all possible for everybody. I mean, I could. We'll have like backup stuff, but I mean, you know, small projects. If you could just hack some sandwiches. Yeah, we're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna try and get as much done as we can today. So bring some sandwiches. Oh, we're gonna have a lunch break, but you know, bring, bring whatever you can. Bring some snacks to keep you going. Um, but it does kind of make you wonder why didn't it, you would think that he'd want to be building up these fond memories of being a, a, a small filmmaker, where he can look back one day and say, "I remember when we were making uh, Tiffany's uh, hospital visit, or whatever the name of the film is." And I, you know, come for sport, sport spawn, and we were. It's like, oh, we. I was a little. So I, I had to go and get the uh, the lunch for the crew, and I had a list, and I ran to McDonald's, and that was the kind of, you know, thing that we were doing. And I look fondly on those memories of me trying to, you know, create a film in that kind of a setting. But I don't know. I was like, I hired catering because that's just what. You that's do. what you're supposed to do. That's what you're films have to. caterers. So. I did that, and yeah. I mean, like, if we have fucking for whatever reason recorded something, we put on like four actors, and then we had like a writer guy as well as all of us. I'd just be like, "You guys don't need me to get a caterer, right?" <laughs> like, you know I mean? yeah, like, I'm just gonna go. I hey, I'm gonna I'm making a run to the Five Guys or whatever. What do you guys want? Or I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have some pizzas delivered. What kind of yeah. you know, what kind of pizzas do y'all yeah. like? Yeah. Because if it gets to the point where I'm ordering catering, I'm like, I don't know, is this... What's Have we lost something here? You know? It's got to be a yeah. big project, surely, if you're ordering catering. It's got to be a lot of people there. Cause like You'd think, yeah, like 20, uh, 30 people. That's how I understand like, catering. If you've got like a crew of like uh, 10 people, I reckon you can just order food there. It's like, what's the... Yeah, exactly. you order pizzas. Yeah, call up Little Caesars or whatever pizza, and say, yeah. hey, can I get... You know, six pizzas, you know, three pepperoni. Three or you can even call Subway and just ask them, hey, can I get like a bunch of sandwiches, you know? 
that's what I did for my um, my Eagle Scout project was um, got a list of I had someone go and run to uh, Chick Fil A. We just got a whole bunch of sandwiches and brought them in for everybody. Hmm. Like, I look back fondly on the times when I was making like um, YouTube videos on like shitty software, working out of a, a bedroom in a shared student accommodation with seven other people living in the same flat. It's Did like, you get catering? Man, that wasn't... No, we didn't get catering. Hmm. Is it really you, true YouTube making at that point? We did a lot of food sometimes. Oh, well, that's kind of like, yeah, there you go. Like, al like alphabetically, or by food group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, once we threw eggs out of the window. I say we, once one of my flatmates threw eggs out of a window. Why did but, he do uh, that? He was, he was alcohol. Um, oh, he was a drink, he was a drinkman. Uh, yeah, he was a drinkman. Mm. Um, he threw an egg, um, try and throw it out the window, but our kitchen window was really small. Uh, so it just hit the window frame and then splattered back into the kitchen. It was a great, great time. I look back fondly on that. Also in that same kitchen had a fight with someone using butter. <laughs> Do you have butter like, swords? Recall... You guys, you guys ever had a butter fight? I can't say that I have, no. No, I haven't, no. So I, I imagine it'd be really hard to grab someone. If I have forged in butter fire. into well, many weapons. I don't weapons. remember how it how it started but there was just i remember being in the situation where both of us were just um getting butter out of the butter box <laughs> and just like trying to hit each other with the butter a butter box just like chucking the butter at each other that was a fun time butter chucker. that sounds pretty gay like what did we were you guys like oh we might get our clothes messed up we should probably be naked yeah 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 <laughs> hell yeah we, um, Lather I me think, up in no, butter. I think and... this was filmed. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the friend is like, "Hey guys, it'd be really fun if you like just you know just do a food fight, just butter, but well, probably I, take I, off I your think... shirts and trousers and well, you know go what? to the bedroom." Uh, there was a compilation that was made of um, of clips from that first year of, of uni. I'm I'm not gonna send you the compilation, but I could probably cut that clip out. And and show you guys that if, if, uh, if there's interest. The butter oh, you, fight? because oh, the rest would be too embarrassing, but the butter fight? No, that's like, okay. I mean, I understand. Um, it's like the butter fight was like the, no, the no, best no, part no, and I stuff. Understand. It's like, okay. Well, that's where all the budget what? went. I'll, I'll look to see what else is in there. I mean, it's it's up to you. It's You're under no obligation to show us your, your butter and your butter margarine adventures mm -hmm. where you and your, I don't know, your, your magical... Oh, the, the fond memories of that halcyon youth days of yore, and then that's sort of thing, so it's up to you if you'd like to do that. That's fine. That's five fine. minutes long. <gasps> that's a fight. Is it called the butter, butter fight. fight? Or is that a lot? Is that long for a butter fight? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I guess I we'll never know. I tell you, I'm not an expert on those such Rock subjects. Lobster. I think I think the video. Rock lobster. I think, I think I'm throwing the egg out the window is on video as well in this. Compilation. Oh my god, is that illegal? Will the police... Well, as long as you don't make a hate I think... crime tweet about it, you should be okay. You would have had no, a I license for the egg, right? I haven't said who he is, so... Oh, so it's a he! Hmm. Ah! You oh, just yeah, eliminated half guys. the population. So it was one of these seven guys. Damn, we've not... Uh, we yeah. really... Oh well, yeah, we established that it was now. one of the people I lived with. That does explain how gay you are. The homuloid. Or maybe living with seven guys would turn you off of dudes. I don't know. It depends on them, I suppose. Do you feel like living with seven women would turn you off women? Absolutely. <laughs> it's like no hesitation. <laughs> yeah. Undoubtedly, yes. I never yeah, want to see video. another woman in my life. Oh no. Half of everyone I see is a woman. Um, are we done with the butter fight conversation? I don't want to interrupt it. <laughs> you don't want to slide in the middle of your butter conversation. Exactly. Nice. Man, a lot of this is just. You know what? You so should buttery. make a um. You should take your butter fight and you should make like a scrapbook out of it with pictures, and you could put, you could like glue all the pictures to the insides of the scrapbook, all your favorite with you butter know, stills from your butt. Well, no, you could use butter, I guess, but you make a scrapbook about your butter fight and. And you put all your pictures in there, right. and if if later on, 
it, well, if later on you remember something that you forgot in your Butterfight scrapbook, you could always write it in the margarine. I knew that was what we were waiting for. I knew yeah. all of it was set up. <laughs> I had a feeling about that one. I, look, I, I will say, that's uh, that's some ace wordplay right there. Thank you. Uh, Samurai? What? I said Samuel Mauler. So the funny name for him is Samuel Richard McGraveyson. I think Samurai's funnier. So, samurai Richard McGraveyson. <laughs> I believe that Wiggs is a Samurai. Um, <laughs> I'm just imagining that imagery in my head. Yeah, it's he's really like, amusing. He studied the blade. That's what I believe. Uh, when you're playing Fortnite Imposter and Ariana Grande kills Master Chief and Superman before getting told about stopping racism by MLK Jr. and Kratos. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to 2021. That Jesus, that was such a stupid idea. I can't believe that that got through many people. Many people saw thought somebody thought of that. Many people thought saw it, thought of it, and were like, "Yeah, that's a good idea." Yeah. For wait, saw what? The oh, the Fortnite MLK thing. Yeah, I've still got a dog bites thing about that, but uh, I need to put out. But jeez, somewhat like that there has is to be a... proved by so many people to have. I know that's what's doubly crazy about it. Someone had the idea, had the balls to say it out loud in front, <laughs> yeah. in front of a bunch of people who are executive level and can make those decisions, who happen to agree. Yeah, this is a good move. I can imagine this is them... like the worst possible version of teaching history through the medium of video yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, might be. I can imagine them. Um, they're seeing it like first launch, and they're all like respectfully, you know, looking at the screen. They're like, "We've oh. done a lot today." And then a few few players show up and start flossing. They're like, "And it's mm. like, well, oh, here's the yeah. oh, Mother, <laughs> you you mentioned flossing. So during this presentation thing in the Fortnite MLK stuff, right?" Uh -huh. They've learned from previous things that they've done this with. They're disabling emotes and throwing tomatoes and stuff like that, right? <laughs> uh, too many people threw tomatoes at the Black Lives Matter. Oh, thing. no. They threw tomatoes but, at MLK? But no, 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 no. Oh. They have disabled that because they've tried this before, right? And they saw where it went horribly wrong. So they've disabled, like, emotes and stuff. However, the Wonder Woman skin pack comes with an emote. That is oh. still currently enabled, oh. and that emote is where she uses her lasso of truth and does a whipping. Oh animation. no! Oh no! And that is... No! <laughs> no! Oh my God. What are they doing? <laughs> it's so what was he? I, Honestly, this feels almost engineered for controversy deliberately. It's... It was like satire. <laughs> Dude, if it, if it was all accidental and you were in charge of all this, you'd be like, I fucking hate my life. <laughs> Why is this happening? Well, here's the, if you're in charge of all this and you're the one who signed off on it, how did you think in your mind, right? It, when you when you heard this idea and you pictured it in your head as to how it would go, what did that look like? What is the ideal way that... Did you think that a bunch of random gamers and 14-year-olds would be standing still, solemnly, in a video game, watching some <laughs> presentation on Martin Luther King Jr.? No. Like, what, what did you think would happen? That's the butterfly pictures, by the way. I'm proud of you, Jay. So you're just, hitting, so you're just putting butter on people? Well, yeah, we put butter on each other, and that was the fight. Oh, I thought I imagined something different. That's all right. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay that you imagined that, Rex. I guess this is a more realistic depiction of what a butter fight would really be. But in my head, it was. I guess it was more. It was just you know an open container of butter, and we were both getting some out, and we were just like trying to inconvenience each other by smearing it on on them as on you the do other. as you do as one does um what do you guys think of jordan peterson and his style of argument and principle i just thought he could help wolf even if it's just about watching it i think i, I like him and respect him but there's there's a lot of stuff i disagree with him on and a lot of stuff i do agree with him on but yeah he's he um like a really nice guy He's hit and miss for me. I like a lot of his stuff, and then I'm like, eh, with a lot of his stuff. I think Wolf knows about Jordan Peterson. Um, he's probably heard some stuff from him. I think most people have seen Jordan Peterson's stuff at this point. At least some of it. 
Maybe not like his his read his book or anything, but I've not seen any of it. Um, it seems to be I've avoiding. I've seen people talk him. about him, but uh, I don't really, I don't really know anything about him. Uh, what are your initial thoughts for the future of internet content on YouTube? I Say guess. that one more time. Uh, what are your initial thoughts for the future of internet content on YouTube? It will become more corporate, more... Um, it, w it will lose a bit of its sort of grassrootsy kind of... Um, uh, I guess that, that attribute about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, it's I, always going to be new platforms that have the sort of grassroots stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and then as like it gets it bigger and bigger, then the big companies move in and... I mean, I don't think that it will never not like this. I this style of content production, in terms of I'm a person and I make videos support me, and that's my job. I don't think that will ever get pushed away. Um, but there will be much more. There will be more of a presence when it comes to bigger channels and big companies and conglomerates and stuff who try and use this as the new kind of marketing or and things of that nature. But, I mean, I, I think that's just natural for any sort of medium. Yeah. There will always be the good stuff. It will not, I don't think it will go away. I, well, I would also say, like, the, the edgy belt is tightening just gradually over time as well. Yeah. It, it will, it, it will be buried underneath other stuff, and not everyone will be able to get a, get away with it. Um, Ding Dong Long Schlong in Rag's Mom, also Heil Rags. Heil! Oh no. <laughs> By the way, I haven't said it in a while, but love you guys, even if you're wrong about Atla. Um, I've also been around since before the show even had a name. Well, well. Oh my goodness, well. that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Where there was technically three other podcasts that kind of got morphed into one. Which is an interesting idea, right? Like, all of them were murdered in order to bring to the table this godlike podcast. The best podcast in history, by the way. We were named that by, um... Um... Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. That's a hell of a credential. Yeah. I was like, you sure? And he was like, dude, this isn't a matter of me being sure or not. It's, it's just the truth. And I was like, all right. Uh, what do you think of the latest episode of What If? I really liked it. Had a lot to say about what people will do to save those they love from dying. Um, I'm assuming it's the... seen it. I heard Fringy summarize the Doc Strange one and I thought it was hilarious. Or, well, bad. Yeah, <laughs> there was a Wikipedia entry. It sounded really bad. I've not seen it though. Could be good. I doubt it. And maybe it does have something meaningful to say about that subject. If in a way that isn't awesome. Perhaps. Um, extinct slash mystic animal, cat sized or cat personality. What? That's all it says. Oh, can you read that again? Extinct slash mystic animal, cat sized or cat personality. Or cat personality. So it can have the personality of a cat or be the size of a cat, but it can't be both. I guess so. I guess so, yeah. What is it? I don't, well, I don't know if this is a question, or if it's a statement. <laughs> Was there a question mark? No. I am unclear on your on your request, XSL. I do not know what to make of this. Um, I guys inspired to have an early retirement, so I enjoy the Sigma life, plays video games, and listening to y'all streams. Also, Battlefield 2049 with the fans when? Um. Probably never. <laughs> we did uh, we did Halo with viewers. Yeah. Maybe that'll happen. And uh, yeah, we've, we've done that already. Maybe it'll that happen on, again. Uh, my channel and our metal stream as well. Yeah, but do you have a vomiting Yoshi on your stream? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty cool. Mm, so my streams. I like the idea though of a guy chilling out in retirement, and he's like, "I'll throw on EFAP," and then if family members come in, they're like, "What's EFAP?" and he's like, "Don't, I don't want to have to explain it. Just go away." It's 
<laughs> old people porn, go away. And then the movie begins. God, I hate start. old people. What? What do they do? Didn't die. Oh, give them a sec. Yeah, too old. <laughs> give them a sec. <laughs> oh man, the stupid smallman didn't push me far enough. Um, Shemai Mola, Shemai, Minhaus, the Black Widow review, our real BBC. Do Yaun. I don't. I think they're saying that m my review was good. Go, go be the old. Um, but it's easy for you to interpret stuff that way, isn't it? Oh, they're, they're complimenting Abiv. me. Look. Fuck you. I Fuck think you. that's what it says, and Welshness is neat. So thanks for for posting I some Welsh. I hate Welsh. I did. Wow. See, this is why we can't have you here anymore. First the pineapple thing. Yeah. Then the butter incident. Really pushing it now. Do you put Welsh. pineapple on your butter? Retweet if your account is not a safe place for Welsh quote-unquote people. I'm offended. Why? I don't have to explain myself why, I can just be offended, shut up. I'm allowed to ask. I have a better question, Jay. What's your favorite roulette number? S six. Just, just six? Yeah. Alright. Do you have a favorite roulette number, Ranks? Hmm... Seven. Oh, you're just copying me and adding one. I mean, that's not really copying you, then. I don't so. know, I've never played roulette, so I don't- I don't know. I, I like really know. I don't snake know. eyes. Double zero, that's on a roulette wheel, right? Jay, you know roulette wheels better than me. Yeah, I've seen at least three. Oh, are you fucking serious? God damn it. I've seen them in movies. I'm pretty sure they have double zero on it. I don't know. There you I go, we like answered the question. And red. Yeah, I like them as well. They're numbers. Yeah, black and red. My favorite numbers. I'd love to be sandwiched between five guys. Rags. Rags, did you say that? I don't remember you saying that. It was implied. Mm -hmm. The sandwiching. Oh, I, I don't believe it again. Rags would say that. Well, I just want to make sure he said that, yeah. Rags, you want my money? I'll take the plushies. Double the plush. Oh. Double the plush. Double the fun. That was from Bully Maguire, by the way. Apparently he likes our plushies. I think that, that's meaningful. We'll be seeing him, potentially, in No Way Home. I will say, Little Caesars isn't the best pizza, but for the price, it's top tier. Hmm. Uh oh, I'm dead. Again. Why Why is these people... Why are they talking Ooh. about pizza? What do they got? Why are they... The E-fat pizza debate? Well, I mean, we did bring up pizza too. I don't blame them. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was a while ago. Yeah, so they're just, well, they're giving their perspective now, okay? It. Is that a problem, Jay? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I, love, I love games that don't in any way moderate what words... Well, like... Maybe a little bit of moderation, what words you can call yourself, but I'm on an IO, I know, an IO game, and I'm like fighting someone called uh, LGBT BLM, and I'm called Cum. <laughs> it's just, it's a fun fight. You know, Cum, Cum versus minorities, who will win? I feel like Cum's got a pretty good start and chance, especially as a lot of it can drown all the minorities. <laughs> that was a great <laughs> sentence, Mola. Nobody cut that out and send it everywhere, because that would, would be awkward to explain. Uh, has anyone on the EFAP crew read the original Thrawn trilogy, old Star Wars EU? For those that have, thoughts on it? Story, characters, Zahn as a writer? Also, Molly, your videos brought me here, thanks. Hey! Glad you're hey. here. No, I've not I read haven't. it. I doubt Rags or Jay have either. I nope. have not. Um, yeah, but maybe one day, maybe one day. Do the long man. But I have seen the Thrawn episode of Star Wars Rebels, which I'm sure is exactly the same thing. Yes. Uh, everyone celebrates it's how fucking great good. it is. I'm sure it's very good. I'm sure it's wonderful. It's very high quality. It definitely isn't key jangling that people will clap at. I'm sure it's very good. I think it's worse than that. I think they make him a shit character. Um, and they pissed everybody off. Yeah, but at least he looks like the guys. Yeah. So that, that's great. That's great. That's what I watch Star Wars for. 
To the long well, yeah, man. You know, at least they made him the right color. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's true. A white Thrawn just wouldn't have been the same. To the long man. There have been several arguments about objective assessment versus subjective appreciation and death of the author versus authorial intent. A co-worker says I should fully detail my thoughts and take notes and get references to make my points clear. Any advice on where to begin the process? Hmm. Do they really want you to do that? Do they... Are they... If this is just like with a coworker or something. Yeah, I was gonna say that might be a lot of you? effort. Do they? That, say, that sounds like a lot of effort for somebody who wants like references and shit. Um, like, are they really that interested in having the conversation and that sort of thing? Because you know. yeah, it's because like there's a lot of subjects to go over, and you have to get loads of fundamentals. And then you have to have st the, the conversation will go beyond the scope of judging the movie objectively, is what I'm saying. And it's really, do you both want to do that? Um, maybe, maybe not. Because it's going to be a tough one. And a long one. And for you to have to do all of that work, I don't know, I just, uh, just, just, maybe, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe instead you could just, you just be like, you know what? If, um... If you think like it's it's super all subjective, maybe just just try and ask them questions based on what they say about movies. See if you can derive anything. Fun way is obviously to be like, what it, what didn't work about X, and then see if it applies to something they like, and then try and figure out uh, where the differences lie. Where is the line? Because I, I I don't know. I just wouldn't want you to write down a shit ton, like essays worth, and then be like, now we shall have the discussion. And they're like, bro, I just want to talk about movies. You're going crazy. But I appreciate the passion. It's just, yeah, it's it's a tough one. Um, there's no easy answer in terms of all of those subjects. Also, hi, Fringy. Bada boom. Only 100 EFAPs. Feels like 1.2 billion. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. I don't think we could do 1.2 billion. I'm not sure if we have the time. Maybe. Ra Rags plushie will do the humping. Hmm. Oh, um, that's a feature. Fe well, it wouldn't be me if it didn't, right? I guess so. You I don't know, this one's horny. pretty well behaved. Yeah, I'm very, uh, this one's pretty well behaved. Yeah, no lines He's will be broken a, or anything, you know? It's, but... it's more passive, a bit more of an observer. Where's the water in this place? Suddenly, it's uh, not even close to everywhere. God um, damn it, happy three-year anniversary, woman haters. Yay! Uh, women still well, exist, sure so we've women. not managed it yeah, yet. Boy. But we're getting there. Um, there's a record less women now than there were when we started EFAP. I'm sure of it. Yeah, this is the fewest women there have ever been. So if we keep it up, who knows where we will end up. I'm so happy for you gentlemen. Congrats. Excited to see Clipcoin and Mark here. Looking forward to my plushies. Smiley face. Where? Be well, boys. Why, thank you. No. Welsh? No, no, be well. Why? I, I, th honestly, I'm cool with being well. I think that's probably a good thing. So I am, I am happy to say I would gladly be well. And thank you for that, you know? I want people to drink water out of me. I don't want you to be a well. That's different, Jay. Mm. You made that up. I make lots of things up. Because you're, uh, you, you're bad faith. That's what you are. Shout out to the long man, High Rags. Scientology. For... Oh yeah, what about uh, it? I am Scientology. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You have that for free. Uh, shout out to the long man, High Rags, Free Fringy, and Big Ups Liquid Richard. Big ups to Liquid Richard. Hell yeah. You know who you are. What is Liquid Richard? How do you not know what Liquid Dick is? Oh, you mean Bill the Soup? What the fuck is happening? It all made sense to me. I don't know where you lost or how. Um, EFAP was never afraid to talk about controversial takes. I respect that a lot. However, that Atla take was pretty tism. Debate semicolon man and settle this once and for all. Love you, massives. Happy 150. Hmm. Um, I did speak to ER. Uh, the conclusion wasn't that Atla was great. It was that 
it was like a, it was a, well, I mean, I wouldn't want to speak for him. He's, the, the conclusion he came would have been different to mine, but uh, I, I was, I was not at that point impressed with Atla. And to be fair, I really don't think that show is going to hold up as well as a four if I were to give it a, an inspective rewatch. Um, but lucky for Atla fans, I just don't really care about that show. Yeah. I did try. It's like Shang Chi. I'm not going to care about that. Ching chong, bing bong. That's racism, Rags. Yeah, you did a racism again. Stop doing Didn't racism. Even know. It just comes out naturally. I think that's precisely Duncan. the problem, and that is why you'll be arrested tomorrow. Like, well, that's how you that's say hello problem. in Chinese. Yeah, God. I don't think that's true. I think if you went to China and you said nothing but ching chong bing chong. They would all think you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I just realized in the absurdity of my <laughs> medical that I presented everyone with traveling to China, going through all of that effort to get off the boat or the plane or whatever, and to just start saying Jing Chong Bing Bong everywhere you go. Well, I mean, it's a social experiment, maybe, right? Uh, maybe it's the way that you say it. Like, if you're at the, the market and you don't know, like, maybe what something is, you just hold it up and say, like, Jing Chong Bing Bong? Like, like, kind of, like, inquisitively? You just gotta come or across the right someone... person at that point who'll be like, Fuck you, what are you doing? I've, you've been doing this for the past, like, hour. Yeah, you're out on the road and someone accidentally, like, they almost hit you with, um, with a rickshaw, right? And you'd be, you'd be angry, upset, you go like, Jing chong, bing bong! And, and then they'd try to run away from you, um, as they do. Uh, or maybe you're sleeping, and you're sitting there snoring, and you're just sleepy, and you just go, Ching chong bing bong. And you just sleep in a nap and like so the strange arc that you're going on right now. <laughs> yes, I don't know where we're going with this. I guess he's just... saying like it just gets so ingrained that you just replace your entire language with that. Could happen. Could. Or maybe you see maybe you see your two friends that you haven't you haven't met them in a long, long time, and you're like, Ching Chong. Is that their names? Yeah, that's their names. Ching chong and bing bong. I mean it could be. <laughs> that literally sounds like a like an old, like, 50s joke that would be yeah. a TV show. Happy three years, EFAM. Thank you all for the great content and the hard work you do. Despite all the hate, racism, and misogyny, you guys have actually increased my love for good writing and storytelling. Aww. Oh, Why, you thank you. You increased my love for hate, racism, and misogyny. You've increased my love for hate. <laughs> oh, no. You increased my love for hate. <laughs> Happy birthday, EFAP. Keep on with this greatness. Cheers. Oh, yeah, the drill be go Cheers. Keep going. I'm Why do EFAP hate? Why what? do they hate? They have to. They don't, they die. Then I will destroy you! No! Kilgrave in Jessica Jones has a type of mind control. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Inhuman Hive controls Inhumans, and Hydra in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. uses hypnosis. Hypnosis is me. Hypnosis. Hypnosis is the nice. thing about new releases and stuff. Um, yes, there is I mean, also. That's a good term, actually. I, I can totally see that becoming a thing. People saying like. I think hypnosis. it was uh, Doomcock that, that coined that. So, oh. Yeah, not bad. Uh, as the Doomer of cock. The cock Doomer. Um, there is one. There was, I can't believe I missed the Sylvie mind control when I was doing the video about how there's loads of mind controls because that was like the newest one and I didn't include it. I'm a big floomp. Yeah, lots of mind control in the MCU. Too many. Um, I don't see how the size of the floomp is relevant. I know, I think it is. I mean, you know, you're welcome to have your own opinion. I don't want to have my own opinion. Congrats, lads, on the anniversary. I'm visiting family today, but I'm looking forward to catching you reading this tomorrow. Hail Longman and hi Rags. Quick, Jay, he's not here. Hi, hi. Good job. I did it. Um, did you though? Yeah. I uh, got a cat yesterday and she adores Mauler. Been playing a Black Widow video all day and it really calmed her down. Especially when um, she had to meet my roommate's dog, so thank you. I'm, I'm amazed that me talking about Black Widow would calm down a cat, but you know, maybe there's something to study there. I think there probably I like, is. I like see video evidence of the. Not because I don't believe you, I just like to see the cat video of the mm -hmm. cat by Mauler's voice. I, I could see it happening, especially if I'm ripping apart Black Widow. The cat hates that show, that movie so much. Um, I've been so depressed of late, mostly because new media that's been coming out 
Um, and you guys have been so incredibly helpful. Keep going strong. Oh, hope you're doing all right. Of course, media can be the big gay, but at the same time, all that great stuff that would have gotten you into it is still there. And you know what? There's probably plenty you still haven't seen that's great, too. Good thing about that. Like, Jay, right. hasn't, Jay hasn't seen Lord of the Rings yet. I haven't seen Bly Manor. You have. I was there. I was watching well, you watch it. Bly. Yes. You probably haven't seen Bly Manor, though, Super Chatter. Like, there's a good chance. Oh, yeah. Go watch Bly Manor, Super Chatter. Do it. It's boring and it's not scary. Oh. Um. Stop it. Happy EFAB 150, boys. Start listening in the past year, been catching up with old episodes whilst in the gym uh, of drifting off to sleep. In the gym of drifting off to sleep. I, miss, I think they meant or. <laughs> um, the only problem now is High Top haunts my dreams. Oh. Kind of wonderful. <laughs> well, I hope you continue enjoying. You don't understand Zack Snyder's artistic vision. It's funny that I can't tell if that's a joke or not, because, yeah, but <laughs> I don't want to understand it. Three years, here's to another 50 episodes. Yeah, man. Already gotten one down, another one coming on Saturday. If you think about it, a gun is just a weird foot. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really see it. That, hmm. Uh, congratulations to all the boys on another 50. Best wishes toward the next 50. Why, thank you. Oh, yeah, you. thanks much. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. And all happy 150. Been watching since episode one. Here's to many more. Thanks for all you oh. do. Please wish my girlfriend, Desiree, a speedy recovery. Love ya. Kick chase. Ah. Um, well, since this was 150, perhaps she's fully recovered already, but if not... Desiree, hope you're doing well. Just, just, just you Desiree? beat you, you beat whatever that is. Desiree, Desiree, I, I mean, I'm not sure which one. Desiree, one is. I think. Well, Desire. Desiree. Um, yes. Ray. Hope you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she, if she's on Ray's level, she'll be fine. That's true. But yes. Hope you are well. Uh, hello friends. Have you heard the good word of Metal's delicious blowhole? Don't step in the rain lest you waterboard yourself. I'm really enjoying all this blowhole stuff. I don't know what it's about, but I respect it. I just... I hope Metal's blowhole is okay. I don't know if... Seems like it could be under threat with all this talk. I don't know if he's... He's like said that he's okay with all this, but yeah, I hope he's alright. His blowhole. Yeah. Um, I have deep concern for Metal's blowhole. Yeah. So I, I guess while it's um, on my mind, Metal blow someone home? in the Discord chat posted a link to a video uh, by someone called Julia Cudney. Some she's a pretty big content creator. Um, you said she's a pretty big cunt. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, no, she's she's a, she is a uh, she is a large content creator. Okay. And uh, um. The video is called, as no doubt you are aware, Black Widow is brilliant. She does the thing where she doesn't punctuate like a civilized person. Mm -hmm. uh, or, I, or, you know, capitalize or anything like that. I don't know, maybe style it. It's like she thinks she's the fucking reincarnation of E.E. E. Cummings. But I, I asked her this question on her video called, as no doubt you are aware, Black Widow is brilliant. Uh, and Man. what I asked, uh, what I asked was, for those listening, um, do you not think that it's horrifically damaging to Nat and her sister's characters, effectively assassinating their hero-ness, when they assault and then murder countless prison guards and prisoners with uh, smiles on their faces and no future moments given to reflect on these horrific acts? These are unquestionably evil acts committed against the innocent the film displays our heroes doing blatantly. Does the evil they commit without reflection not make you question any attempt, however pathetic, this film makes at portraying these characters as empathetic or relatable? That's what I asked, and I actually got a response. Oh. Um, he said, more beloved action movies than I can name refrain from diligently considering our action hero's righteousness upon amassing casualties. And that actually is a trend I take issue with. I do wish Black Widow's prison escape scene forwent the avalanche, but I don't find the film's indifference toward the prisoners unique, nor did that part ruin the whole for me. 
a so, much more reasonable response than you could have received. But I mean, I don't agree with it. Like the idea I mean, that yeah, the majority of action movies do this anyway. It's like, no, they don't. In fact, Black Widow is pretty bad in this regard. Like it's it was surprising that there was just no consideration. I was, was thinking I, I I was thinking about asking like so like if if mass murder isn't enough to get you to lose connection with characters, what is? But I'm like, it's he's just gonna bullshit and like, yeah, and anyway, so I just don't even. I want it said because I imagine when people hear the argument she just made, they're thinking about like. Yeah, you know what? Luke kind of blew up the Death Star. He didn't consider all the people in there. And I should be like, that, these are not the same. Valid military target. <laughs> yeah, these are not the same events. Uh, Black Widow did this to get a prisoner she wanted to talk to. That's why she did all of that. A lot of people died doing their jobs. Yeah, what Black Widow did was murder. What Luke did was totally morally justified and necessary. Well, yeah, they're about to destroy yeah. a fucking planet. Yeah, and they had destroyed one before that. Yep. So, um, I'm not saying she's referencing that specifically. I'm just saying that a lot of people do, and it's annoying. Fuck. No. Um. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad she thought that Black Widow was so good. It's great. Um. Either way, really? fucking disaster. Really? Are you, Wombo, are you glad of that? Well, I would rather she had fun with it. Then she have anti fun with it. <laughs> I don't even know if that's true, because then she maybe would have felt the need to be like, actually, no, this is very poorly written. So I'm assuming she has a video where she's saying that it's a good film. That's unfortunate. Who is this person? Uh, Julie. someone called. Julia Cudney. Julia Cudney. She has 180,000 subs, but her video only had like 12,000 views, so I don't know. Maybe they, they weren't interested was in Black really, Widow. really, really not at all impressed with what I watched of her video. It was really, pretty much, it was pretty worthless, but... Um. I find that interesting, though, that she's almost like arguing apathy. Like, I've seen it done so many times, it's just not something that bothers me anymore, and I can get into characters regardless of mass murder. It's just like, huh. Maybe, maybe that's the commentary to make is, is, have movies brought me to the point where I'm just so emotionally just gray and just despondent at the concept that a character commits mass murder and I just can't feel anything with it? It's like, what does that say about media and how I can relate to it? Like, that's a conversation to have instead of just, well, I didn't care. Yeah. Oh, Fringy's having some issues with his internet. Those Hi, emus Fringy. are up to something. They're, yeah, they're, they're chewing they're, on the wires. Yeah, they and got the, the, the big beaks. They're, they're cutting those wires with their razor-sharp war beaks. Mm -hmm. I am new. Uh, sad it took me so long to watch, but it's better late than never, right? Uh, yeah, it sure, is better yeah. late than never. We're glad you're here. Hope you're having fun. If anyone we here who's this is their first EFAP stream? I hope we've given a good impression of who we are as people. Yes. <laughs> Had a good chat about Capsicum, and... And Fringy was wrong. Completely obliterated. Gone back to his I'm wrong hole. Race and adaptation. Yes, yes, we did. It's good, good variety of topics here, you know. Race, adaptation, racism, Capsicum. Lol, imagine trying to explain what EFAP is to strangers. Okay, so there's this fat guy in Texas, and the rest is history. Pretty much, yeah. That's where it all started, you know? I didn't even really know anything about him. I think, Rags, you, you were aware of him. It was Wolf that was like, oh, you gotta see this. Jared? Yeah, yeah, I was aware of him. I'd covered him before. I think that's how he... I think it might have been coincidental. Like, oh, do you know this guy, Jared Genesis? <laughs> and I'm like, I've covered... I, I think I've covered him once or maybe once or twice in the early days of yeah i was a jared Capri. virgin you see like he is y uh, yes um as a follow-up a few co-workers have asked me for my thoughts on subjects regarding several topics a few admittedly troll me incessantly yeah just sort of pick your battles per se with that one i wouldn't want to put too much effort into something that they're not going to uh, be interested in ultimately i guess just um and it's a tough subject, it really is. 
Gonna want to save that for people who are super invested in the conversation. I'm getting sleepy, so I'm, I'm getting about ready to hop out. Very well, Jay. Do you want to tell people what you're up to or, or stuff in case they're like, who the fuck are you, for whatever reason? Um, I have a channel called JXC where I piss and shit. Uh, content. He want... pisses and shits content. It's yeah, that easy for him. That's what he means. Shitting, then, then you can go over there and you can see me pissing and shitting. Aww. Alright. Th th thank you. Okay, bye. Well, uh... And so, it was just me and you, Rags. So... It's like the old days. Yeah, it is kind of like the old days. Mostly, sort of. Um, oh, the mid days, I guess I should say. Uh, do, do, do. Movie Bob in slow motion cover when? Hi, Moodle. Movie Bob in slow motion cover when? I do not know what they're asking for there. Hmm. Oh, like we, like we do a slow mo version of uh, Movie Bob. Maybe like we slow him down. Oh, I mean, we'll probably but cover we him that, at some so. point. I think he, we still need to cover the video where he, he has, like, advice on how to be a healthy gamer. Oh, yeah, that's right. We've been recommended that well, by more than one person. The idea was to save it for Razor Fist, but I can't seem to get Razor Fist's attention on, uh, on anything. So, maybe one day. Who knows? Because I think that would be pretty funny. What do you think of Harley's 69 joke in the Suicide Squad? P.S. Watch Plus One 2013. It's a mixed bag, but definitely has less... Does he have stuff to talk about? Um, okay. And PS plus TTT EFAB Gaming when? I do not know. I do not know. As for the 69 joke, I thought it was lame as fuck. It's like it took a while to explain a joke that I think everybody got instantly. Yeah, like... I don't know, like you're almost expecting it to turn out to be not a joke. Like, it's actually referencing, like, it just happens that there were, si or she legitimately thought there were 69 people. It's, or something. Like, it was like, really shit. Because yeah, they kind of do all the motions of the joke. Like, 69 people? How is that possible? And then he's like, psh, 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 psh. Oh, They did a sex joke on me. Oh, you know. Could, could, could have been better. Could have been better. Uh, greetings, Moller and Company. I first found you through your last Jedi video, though I didn't find out about EFAP until the 20s. Wow. 1920. Been a That's while. That's crazy. Yeah, been going for a while. Yeah, it's hard to believe we've been going for that long, yeah. Um, I hope all this stays fun for you as long as it can. Oh, it still is. And to be fair, all three of us were doing this long before EFAP even started, so you gotta go- Oh, I fell through the floor, sweet. Um, I guess I think I did, but... Yeah, the EFAP's got a long, long life left, I'd imagine. For episode 200, you should do a 24-minute stream. I think people would be upset if we did that. They'd be like, where's the other 24 minutes? <laughs> uh, Wolf said he'd be quickly forgotten in his goodbye video. This intro proves that wrong. Hope you're doing well, Wolf. Though you won't likely see this. Yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna be forgotten. He's a uh, good he sells lad. Himself short a lot. Yeah. Oh. Please don't kill me. Oh no no no. Oh gosh, that's so intense. Uh Mola can finally quit his day job after becoming a global plushy tycoon. Yeah, I mean. You mean rags are clearly gods of the plushy industry, you know? We'll have to expand the plushy empire. Um, what does HBD stand for? Um HBD. How HBD? been doing? <laughs> how how about um How about this? Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, it says how, how uh, HBD EFAP. So it's like, hmm. Is that a show? Maybe. I don't know. Chat, have you got any suggestions about that? 
Could just be that, yeah. Uh, I raggle, fringle, and moldegrat. Oh, moldy. Um, yes. Hello. Oh. Uh, oh, is he back? Bringy, you okay? Oh. My internet's being super spotty today, so that's fun. Well, that's that's sorry. Awesome. I guess you didn't. You didn't hear any of that. All right. Yeah, you said your internet's being super spotty. Yeah, so that's fun. That doesn't sound very fun at all. Oh, it's happy birthday. That makes sense. Ah. Well, you know, I hope the internet behaves a bit more. Bring yeah. The, it's I'll being keep a Keep an eye on it. See if it works. Uh. Oh shit. Grats for three years, been the best entertainment for a year, caught up in eight months. You're the best channel on YouTube. Enjoy your nuggies and have a great long time, my massives. Oh, that's very kind, thank you. Yes. With nuggies, there's nothing we can't do. Alright, apparently power I'm not even my Wapik on gender swapping in movies. Okay. How so? What was that, sorry? I don't know. Apparently I'm naive and myopic about race and gender swapping in entertainment, so I'm sure I'll get a... You need to s stop stating the position without any arguments in oh, chat. Just, just if you want to do it, please put the argument in. Just throw it back. Be like, they're myopic about it. <laughs> yeah, you're not even myopic about it, yeah. I'm glad we got somewhere on that one. Um, I want to chase plushie so I can punch it in the balls. Oh my. Damn. Oh jeez. Well, maybe there's an there's an there's an industry there. Maybe he can take advantage of that. I don't know. Um, hi guys, love you three from from bomb b o m h. Maybe that's hmm. a place. Maybe it's a sh short like for a place. Well, I would assume it's a place. I would it's assume from that there it's somewhere. Well, you could be from yeah. like a state of mind. Like I used to be a. But now I think differently, or maybe I've ascended right. to a different plane of existence thanks to EFAP, and which is not likely but possible. Um, shout out to M Mootal and J Bones. Thanks for getting me through the worst times. EFAP Mini for sharp objects. Uh, does anyone know what sharp objects is? Hmm, I think no, that's I'm not aware. Uh, of that. HBO show or something with Amy Adams. I think. Not sure. Seven to eight out of ten. Good characters, not a slow burn, more a sweep, a seeping poison show. All right. Yeah, so it is a show then, right? Um, um, I'm obviously. Oh, the the follow up on that argument. I'm obviously not getting on it, but if you all aren't too scared, get Ripper on to set you all straight, bruh. <laughs> I think that was English. Um, <laughs> Ripper's wrong, <laughs> and he's just gonna do what everyone else does, which I like him. But he's not going to be able to convince We've heard us the arguments need, like, before. Yeah, you need arguments, for starters. And he's just going to make appeals to I don't like it, which I can certainly sympathize with, but that's not going to change our minds because we have a really strong position that's very consistent. I felt, fucking, I fell through the floor again. Um, God damn, stop blaming the world for your failures, <laughs> all right? Um, yeah, I, I'm on good terms with shit tons of people who do the whole adaptation argument thing. It's like... We here on, on EFAP um, are arguably in the minority, but doesn't make us any less fucking right. Like, it's, it's not something that um, we were even all thoroughly on board with at first, but it's just like, the more you argue it, the more you figure it out. Um, yeah. The more you separate. Um, the quality of the adaptation, meaning how much they adhere to the original content versus how well told the story is are two different things. They need to be separated, otherwise we're gonna have serious problems where great work is not appreciated. Yep. And that's not what we do here. Yeah, in order to destroy great art, uh, we have to... Oh, sorry. In order to destroy great art, we have to establish great art canon does exist, so... Very important. Mm -hmm. need to... uh... Rags, I'm curious. What is your carry piece? A Glock 26 is what I carry. Sometimes I will carry my Makarov with me. It is slimmer, 
It has a lower capacity, however, it is, and it is also a bit heavier. Uh, but generally, it will be a. Um, generally, it is a. Uh, Bot twenty six. Uh, second question is Mola. What is the next EFAP movie planned? Hmm. I guess that would be the the Halloween set. We're trying. We're gonna try and do all the Resident Evils. They are coming out. I'm hoping to get them done by then. It's gonna be a little, little fun, little special throughout the month. Unfortunately, Fringy will not be in those, but he will be in the streams. Um, also, for both, least favorite foods. Well, as we we talked about about it briefly, onions. I hate onions. Um, Green not a fruit, fan of cauliflower at all. Fruit. Yeah, we had the beetroot thing. Okay. Beetroot's probably something I'm not. Yeah. Um. I'm fine with cauliflower. Uh, onions, I I would never want a raw onion. That would be fucked up for me. I'd be like, yeah. Hmm. Uh, gimpy gimpy plant. Uh, that's not one of my favorite foods. Definitely on the, low on the that's list. That's not food though, so. Is it edible, Fringy? Well, I mean, I suppose, yeah, but sulfuric acid is edible. I'm that is sure also that low on my food. list, sulfuric acid, yeah. If, I mean, like, lead, if that's what you mean fan. by edible, that's not, that's not a, that meaningful of a word, really. I think so, edible means you could yeah, eat it. Yeah, because anything that you. you can put in your mouth and, and, yeah. Yeah, like, 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 like an oil tanker isn't edible, you. I guess, but, yes. Yeah, oil tank is one of the low ones, yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> it'd, take you all, it'd take you your whole life <laughs> and you have to eat bit by bit. You guys ever tried oil tankers? Just, I don't know. I'm on the oil tanker diet. Um, this is dollar for your gay conversion therapy, you massives. Oh. Oh, thanks. I'll put that to good use. Yeah, we'll, we'll get going on that straight away. Ironically, um, the only way to get you to not be gay is to have Jesus come into your heart. Oh, That's cute. That's, that's super cute. Well, oh, look, at all those, yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at all those happy villagers. I know, I saved the whole day. And possibly future days. Yeah. Um, Hero. Mola, tell Fringy about the Yumbo Wumbo plant that grows in the highlands of Wales. That's a secret. You can only... You, you have to see it for yourself <laughs> to believe it. You wouldn't otherwise. Oh. One day. Haha, <laughs> Jay's right. Struggling female actors usually do end up getting shafted. Oh my god. Oh, I see what you did there. I, I... They're often, because they're inexperienced, they feel like they don't really get the pay and the recognition that they sometimes deserve. Yeah, I yeah, know that was, Yeah, that was it, yeah. How many times would Rags have to say the N-word with a hard R on stream before you'd kick him off EFAP? Um, I mean... It's the same amount that I guess would the TOS would probably kick him out before I could even do it. I have that kind of power. Yeah. <laughs> nuggies are back on the menu, boys. Use this money to buy yourselves and all the guests nuggies. To three years of EFAPPIN. There's a lot of nuggies we're gonna get. I'm gonna use all of 150's super chats to get nuggies. Um, representing the oppressive Discord mods. Oh, that's Don Radkos there. Give him a little, give him a super chat. Got to represent for the Discord mods. However oppressive. Um, I can't believe it's been a year since we got life lessons from Tonal, but I want to thank you for another year of wonderful content you provided, and happy Fringy's co-hosting for the next one. Hey. Alright, thank good, you. Good stuff. Much, thank you, yeah. Um... I knew a guy whose left arm was a nub around an inch past the elbow, and he could play Battlefield 4 on Xbox One pretty decently. I think this was when we were rediscussing some of the peripheral stuff for uh, Jim, Jim Sterling's older video about the, um, like, privileged goggles. Yeah. Hi, Mola. Hi, Rags. Love you, Jay. Hello. Are you guys Hi. ready for all the video essayists who will worship the Tolkien Society's wonderful take on his works? Will we get some yeah. videos on the conference itself? Oh, fuck no, probably not. That conference sounds like a nightmare. Like, wasn't it like... Uh, Gondor in Transition was one of the titles? 
<laughs> it's, it's just, just like, everything what? Everything the left touches is just shit. This just says... Oh, I knew a guy, right. Congrats on three years. I joined during the Game of Thrones Season 8 saga. I hadn't been watching streams, but I couldn't resist a four-hour upload of people complaining about Danny's choice to burn King's Landing. Hard to believe there's been so many tisms since then. Here's to another year, at least. Yeah, man, it's been a while since the Game of Thrones stuff. That's, is that 2019? Mid-2019, I yes. think that happened? Yeah, man. God. It's been so long. Uh, P.S. Mola, I love the surprise uploads. They always bring a smile to my face. That's what I'm gunning for now. No more, no more of this, you know, you gotta be hyping up about a particular topic. It's just like, you know what? Just a really cool video is gonna pop up, hopefully. And, and you know, hopefully you guys will have some fun with it. Yeah, um, always neat to know people are joining at different points in history. And it's crazy to know how long it's been since a lot of them. Game of Thrones, man. That was another one of those, um... You start a stream talking about the, how shit the show is, and then like loads of people who've never even seen the channel before, and they're like, "Fuck this show!" <laughs> I needed to go on the yeah, internet I to just... say that. Yeah. Um. Oh, everybody feels the same way. I'm not insane. Yeah, Sorry. pretty much. Well, that was that was TLJ for me with a lot of people. I was just like, "Oh shit!" I am far from the only one. Because yeah. I'm so used to being like guy with with minority m movie opinion that when I started getting shit tons of people saying they agree I was like oh uh, I think this pissed, pissed off really a lot of people me. well in Vinos in Fairnos, wow in fairness um a lot of people were, were, were pissed that my videos existed too you guys may remember that early e era <laughs> just bought the plushie pair to support my two favorite creators happy 150 everyone well, thank you so much, and, uh, happy 150 indeed. Uh, Jim's pronouns are fat and ass. Now, now, Jim may be oh, enormous, man. but that doesn't play into any of the opinions about the goggles, okay? That was so awkward, too, because a lot of people, um, value VR as a way of being like, man, this can convince me to do, like, exercise in a way that's really, really fun. And, like, part of Jim's argument was, like, what about people who have, like, low mobility? This'll never work. It's like, why don't you see it as the other way around? Like, it'll encourage them. And I'm pretty sure most VR games are, um... Trying to be... They try to account for people who have, like, less mobility and stuff. Lots of options. VR, man. It's gonna be a huge industry when they get it all figured out, I imagine. It'd be like, Absolutely. um... Do you ever see Gamer? Remember that film? I've heard of it. And I, I do that. remember that film. Am I making Super shit up, movie, or was but... it, like, there was, like, a VR setup where you take control of a person, like, a convict or whatever in a video yes, game? Yes, there yeah. were real people. So, Gerard Butler was a real person, and there was, like, some guy playing a professional competitive video game. Yeah. That's about all I remember about that film. I know T Terry Crews was in it. Um, hi, Mola. Hello! Plot twist. These head pads are for free. Have a good day, Fringy. Also, can I get a few no's from you? <laughs> oh, thanks. No, but thanks. <laughs> it's, like, confusing. There you go. Well, that's that's one no. There needs to be a couple of no's. No. Mm. Oh, look at that. Another one right there, yeah. Um, you must add either Chris Chan, Hassan Piker, or Movie Bob as a permanent EFAB host. Who do you pick? You can't say none. Or, I'd rather shut down EFAP's answers. You have to keep EFAP going. Oh, uh, probably Movie Bob. He seems like he'd be the most non-criminal and interesting. Um, I don't know, Chris man. Chan's not even an option I'll consider. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I don't even see this. I didn't even think for a second about doing the whole, uh, none of them. It's like Hassan Piker in a fucking instant. I would drag him the oh, fuck yeah? on here. I would have so much fun talking to him about all subjects. He's such a fucking idiot. I'd be like... Sam, what do you think about her killing all those people in the prison? I can't imagine what stupid shit he might say. And I'd just be oh, like... yeah, maybe. I'd just be like, people, remember, okay? I was forced to have him as a co-host. <laughs> I didn't yeah. choose this. So yeah, I would assign in a, in a heartbeat. Movie Bob would be funny, but I'd get so fucking bored of him. And like, his insanity. And then, yeah, Chris Chan, that's just a... nah. Uh, Fringy, what's your favorite roulette number? 
I have no preference. Oh. What if it was a gun to your head? You had to choose. I don't know, Dad. Five. Alright, five it is. Five. Uh, Ringy, I got my anime waifu when I was 16. She was, she is 14, and now I'm 28. Is it creepy that I still have my waifu? Is it okay because she's grandfathered in? <laughs> this seems more like a legal what issue that you is might that? have to... <laughs> what kind of question is that? Ringy, you new here? This is a, we only get weird questions. <laughs> I already asked the other host this two years ago. Oh, fuck, what a throwback. That's why I can't remember this. I can't remember it's the It's freshly answer. weird. I think no is the answer. Um, I want chicken nuggy plushie. I'm going to bed, boys. Y'all have a great night. Night? Could just sell a chicken nugget plushie. <laughs> it's just a big nugget, like a pillow. Fringy, do you know about natural intelligence? Faster and more powerful than AI? Search researchers investigate decision making by physical phenomena. I'm not familiar with that, but that sounds very interesting. Faster um, and more powerful than AI. That's very interesting. Decision making by physical phenomena. Yeah, I have, I'm not sure when that's referencing, but. Sounds interesting. Okay, where are we? Holy hell, is that metal my back hurts too much to stream commander? What the fuck, dude? Gosh. Yeah, he healed up. He, he What did he say? He pinched a nerve, I think he said. Oh, did he? Yeah, you don't want to do that. Your nerves get all upset when you do that. Hmm. I bought an Adolf costume for my rags plush and an RC skull on wheels for my Mola plush, and I will use the two to destroy art. Also... Uh, fitting props. Yeah. Also, rags ass, also high rags. Hello! Mm -hmm. I've watched the ending of Mass Effect 3 and I hate almost every facet of it minus the beginning of the fight. I got a more satisfying end to the battle in ME3 in Stellaris when I was nuking a planet from orbit. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah, the Mass Effect 3 ending is infamously bad. Yeah. Do you remember when things could just have bad endings? It's just the bad ending, you know? And it was like, if only they'd made these two, instead of just the whole thing was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Those were the I days. Uh, well, it was when you could actually get upset that, like, the ending sucks, you know? Because there was something to be upset about because you cared I suppose about something good before. Part of what's funny about this is that when Black Widow was first getting its reviews, a lot of people were like, first two acts were great, third act not so much. It was like, what? Why? Dude, the whole thing. Why? Stop it. I saw Closer looked at a video for uh, Black Widow. I'd be curious what his conclusions were. Was it epic? Or was it bone chilling? What do you think would be... Um, more more insightful on Black Widow High Top, if he made a video, or Filmento. Any hey, take us? I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm sorry I totally blanked out. What's that? Uh, who do you think would be more insightful, High Top or Filmento, in relation to Black Widow? Um. No. Um. <laughs> that sounded like your brain was going to go with High Top, but then you were like, hmm. Filmento. Mm. No, I'm not sure. I don't know, actually. Insightful? Well, how many of them have said anything insightful, like, at all, really? Who has said an insightful guess, thing between the Filmento, two? Um, I guess Fumento would be like, he says things that are wrong, but I think he does try to actually make observations about what's in a story. He's just yeah. got a lot of preconceived notions that get in the way, whereas High Top doesn't do that, so it wouldn't be a fun conversation at all. Uh, some people are saying the stream was down, and hopefully it's back up. Oh, what they're saying that back. A lot of people are saying that we back, yeah. Hopefully we are. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I uh, what I will say is, funnily enough, like I really get annoyed by High Top's like hyper artsy editing. Like it's attempt to just throw colors everywhere, but at the same time, I don't like Filmento's over reliance on like over editing everything. 
And it's like, which right. do you prefer? And I'm like, oh man. And I know that's not necessarily to do with any insight, but I mean, I gotta factor it in if I'm choosing who I'm gonna watch. Hmm. I think I w which well okay which one makes you less like annoyed? It might actually come down to just how long both of them are. I hate to see it. You hate to see it <laughs> because if it's a thirty-minute filmento versus a seven-minute high top, I'd be like, oh dude, I feel like the answer's obvious. If they're both fifteen though, hmm. I think there'll be more for us to talk about in a Filmento video, because he usually establishes rules in storytelling, and then we can talk about them. Yeah. Exactly. High Top usually appeals awesome. to emotion just constantly, so there's nothing in there. Or rather, there's stuff that everyone says in there. Um... How sad and ironic it will be if Hassan throws away his old streaming chair when mov moving house. Yeah, I mean, that, that chair's been through a lot. I think it'd be really sad if, uh, if the chair doesn't get to come with, but, I mean, you know, done his job, served his purpose, uh, as you would say. Been propping up his ass for ages now. Mm -hmm. Fringy, it's okay. The wife is not real. She's a $1,350 custom anime pillow, so it's all legal. Does that help clear everything up? I'm not really interested it hurt, in right? talking about Damn, man. that particular $1,300 pillow. It must be like really high quality, I guess. How big a, a body pillow is like super expensive. Or I don't know. That sounds like something that could vary wildly in quality based off of um, the artwork on like it. Like how. Well, how, like, good the pillow part is more than anything else. Hmm. Like the actual material of the pillow. Yeah. Um, does a fring snore when sleeping? Snore. I got it. Uh, I don't know. I might. Well, you're gonna have to record to find out. That's something you need to know, um, going forward. Oh, that's very loud. I'm gonna mute for a second. <laughs> uh, can we get a Goodell plushie made from rejected spare parts of other EFAP plushies with a sound box that says random Goodell phrases? I don't even know what the Goodell plushie would look like. Should it just be like a collection of other YouTubers? Like one arm is this guy, the other arm is this guy, the body is this person, the head is a yeah. couple people. Fucking I just got up there, you evil cloud spirit. That would be pretty funny, though. Uh, spent three days trying to fix the Elder Scrolls Oblivion stutter. I gave up. I'll try again next year. Also, Rax, I just got a Ruger A5 AR556 or 556? 556? Um, 556 is yeah. the caliber. Saw it at Cabela's and instantly bought. AR15s have been hard to get. Yeah? I didn't know that they were, but maybe, maybe at certain places, I didn't know that they themselves were getting, were, were uncommon. Are there any laws that have come out against our AR-15s? I know that that one guy Maybe in some to. super lefty states, but in any reasonable state, no. Bam, 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 People are just bam. buying them up a whole bunch. A uh, lot more gun owners these days, which is good. That's why the ammo, you know, that's part of the thing with the ammo shortages. A um, lot more people buying ammo. Is there, um, is that gun just top dog? Does any gun sort of outclass it in any way, or will? In a matter no, of mean, time. It, it depends on what you mean by top dog. I don't know, I just hear it all the time, like you it's know? Like, very, very, yeah, it's very, very common. It's just a semi-automatic version of the, the, the M4. It's been around for a long time. It's been the U.S. service rifle for, you know, generations now. There's a lot of reasons why it's super popular and common. Hmm. I mean, they're cheap. There's a lot of support for them, all kinds of attachments and things you can get for them, so... There's, it probably, probably not for a long time. It probably will, like, legitimately not be until years or generations after the U.S. military chooses a different, uh... uh, rifle. And I don't think they're going to for a while. They might. They might swap to a bigger caliber. I think that's the thing that's gonna happen, is we're gonna be going from like 5.56 five, to like a 6.5, something like that. In the future, potentially.
Fair enough. Um, sorry, I meant BF Portal with fans. Also, uh, when also JU. Sorry, I meant BF Portal with fans when also JU. Well, Jay's BF been kicked. Oh yeah, so. BF Portal. Yeah, that's the cool Battlefield thing where you can set up. It's got all like the weapons from old battlefields, and you could set up crazy custom rules and things. Like one team has knives, and the other team has defibrillators, hmm. stuff like that. Is uh, is it called Portal? Is a reference to Portal, or is it just a different thing? No, it's. I guess it's because it's supposed to be like a portal to all the different uh. game modes and things, all the different like eras. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, it looks it looks really cool. Like you could have modern U.S. soldiers fighting against World War II Germans and. It's it's it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. Hello, EFAP gang. Congratulations on 150, and looking forward to many more. May your days be long and objectively good. Also, high ranks. Hello. Why? Thank you. Um, does the rags plushie fit in a jar? Probably, right. The jar is large enough, so the the rags plush is very um. How to say. It's very, I guess, it like, st not stretchy, durable, right? So you, you, should, you should be easy with it, though, because it, it like it legit is really nice and you want to keep it in good shape. But yeah, if it's like, because I use gallon-sized jars, jars to make tea, mm -hmm. so you could fit them, but I wouldn't try to fit it in, in, uh, fit it in smaller stuff. There you go. Hey, EFAP, you guys are all right. Question. Have any of you played any Mega Man games? If so, what is your favorite one? Um, I've played a couple of them. I think my favorite was a... I played a fan game of one of them, a very popular one. I was very impressed. I liked it a whole bunch. I figure what it's called now, though. I played... Um, uh, one on the Game Boy Advance. It, you played a Zero. And... Uh, I, I forget what it was called, but it was fine. I, I, it was alright, you know? Something I could sink some time into and learn. Didn't think it was bad. Doth thou have any Megaman commentary, Fringo? I would suppose... What's oh. that, sorry? Uh, Mega Man. What's, what's your, uh, what do you like about Mega Man? Who played I... Mega Man? I think I played a little bit of the new one that came out, but otherwise I'm not familiar with it at all. There you go. We got we got we're, we're limited on Mega Man, I'm afraid. Mega Man Zero could be the one rags that someone suggested. I don't know. I don't know the Mega Man names of the games. Um, Zero is the, the the edgier one, a little bit edgier, from what I understand. I think so. He's got red. He's got like red. And he's got the hair thingy that comes out the back. Yeah. Mighty Number no. Nine is my favorite. Yeah, it's a favorite, favorite choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves that one. Mm-hmm. This just says BRB. <laughs> oh, we'll see you later. See you later. Yeah. Uh, we put the podcast name on everything. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the podcast is made. Efap the T-shirt. Efap the lunchbox. Efap the breakfast cereal. Efap flamethrower. The kids love that one. Yeah, we'll make some. Oh, that's the spaceballs thing. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it would be inevitable for an EFAP flamethrower. Me and Rex just have to find the right sort of, you know, people. Do you think makeshift do flamethrowers? That would be odd for a uh, plushie company to also make flamethrowers. Hmm. That would be a little strange. I suppose they wouldn't expect you to use it on the flamethrowers, it's just a, it's just there as another thing. Popping in and out today, it's my 25th birthday, and what a wonderful birthday gift, the third anniversary of my all-time favorite podcast. I hope you have a wonderful stream and many more years to come, and high rags. Hello. Well, Happy birthday, dude. Yeah, I, I hope you had a great birthday. birthday. And yes, we would, have, we would likely have been there through to when you were having a nice little sleep on your birthday, too. Where is Blessed Pipeman? His gay erotica tales need to return. Well, that super chatter would have been happy by the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Hi, Rags. 
Hello. Been watching you all's stuff since before, EFAB, and I've really enjoyed following the podcast, though I haven't really been following the Super Chat catch-up, so please, read this on stream, lol. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 I'm afraid sometimes they end up in different places, and here we are. Cheers to 150 episodes in three years, way to go. Thank you very much. Um... Hey, you massive checked out the OT Star Wars radio dramas? The first two feature some of the original cast and are objectively good rat. Long, too. No idea those existed. I've not heard any of them. Sound interesting, though. I wonder, what, are they just like bonus adventures sort of thing? Or are they recreations? I would imagine. Ooh. Shumaito, good translation of my previous Kumraig super chat. I enjoyed the Black Widow review. Your mates clearly have Welsh envy. Not surprised. Hoylvar. Yeah. Good I plan. Don't know about that. Give me a little bit. A little bit. Sneaking in there. Uh, what is the objectively coolest arthropod? Insects, spiders, scorpions, etc. My vote is on the praying mantis. Um. Mm. I don't know, I feel like scorpions are really cool. I was gonna go with scorpions. Scorpions like, are cool. The scorpions' cool factor, for me, outweighs the scare factor, while spiders, they're just safely in the scare factor column for me. They're just like, look at them, so creepy. But, like, look how cool scorpions are. And what a cool name, scorpion. Well, maybe it feels cool because it's based on scorpions, you know? Um, I imagine that applies to all words, right? But I would go as oh, far yeah, as saying... Yeah. Is there anything that ha that is like shit that has a really good name? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of like, maybe some kind of like... There's probably like a fish out there that's like really flashy and sludgy and looks weird, but it's also maybe got like a really cool name. I'm not sure. Do not know. Maybe chat will know. Dragonflies? That's not a bad name. Yeah. Dragonfly Fastest cool insects. Name. I just think dragonflies. Dragon Mantis is a cool name, too. Yeah, I think so. Um, Star Wars The Last Jedi. <laughs> I suppose. Um... Komodo dragon isn't a real dragon. Yeah, but it's a cool name. I'm you. I'm saying a shitty thing. A thing that's is like. Is it a real cool. Komodo? I don't know. It's the ultimate question. <laughs> that's a. That is an interesting observation. Black Widow. That's all, I mean, wait. Why do we think these things are shit? I guess that's the part that I got confused by. Why is a Black Widow shit? I don't think that's shit. I don't think a black widow. Yeah, it's black and its behavior is what it is. So, yeah, I don't see. Yeah, it's mean. It can hurt people. You know, maybe that. That's that's what widows do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mantis toboggan. I don't know about these names. I'm getting lost. Um, there you go. I spent so much trying to kind of get. Bleh. I've spent so much money trying to get Frongo to engage with the waifu question. Also, the pillow is expensive because custom art and top of the line pillow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I bet that would have a part to play in it. This person very much wants your approval of the pillow, I guess, Ringy. I don't know what it means or anything like that, so that's why I don't want to like answer that question at all. I'm so sorry. I don't know what it means. He just doesn't understand it, yeah. And I don't blame him. I do, yeah, I don't understand it, and if I don't understand it, I don't want to answer it. That's basically it. Hey gents, congrats on 150. Curious as to each of your educational background in film and writing, if any. Many thanks from a grateful vet. Oh, um, oh I you. have none. Oh boy. Um, I did some media studies. It didn't last very long. And then... Yeah, for film, nah, nothing really at all. Uh, I just watched a shit ton of them. No, I like them. What about you, Fringy? Have you got film school in you, in your blood? I thought about going to film school, but uh, then I didn't. Um, so, no, I don't have a creative writing or a film school. I've done some classes on writing or read books on it. And, of course, talked about it. With these fellas. Yeah. The credentials. 
but um, I've done a bunch of art stuff in like university and everything, and then for you did law, right? Yeah. So you can teach yeah, us economics. about how Black Widow did a meanie in the uh, in the prison scene. Uh, <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. That's uh, that's the big bad right there. Where am I supposed to go next? Would you rather deal with scorpions or centipedes? Scorpions. I'd rather deal with scorpions. I honestly, my answer would just be after researching whichever one turns out to be more deadly. I guess is the the one I don't. Want to, I don't actually know which one is more deadly. Centipedes can be quite big. Some of them have very painful bites. Um, yeah, that would be the reason why I would prefer that over fucking uh, scorpion. Mm -hmm. Scorpions are cool, but like I feel like I could fend one off better than a centipede. What's like the biggest, scariest scorpion then? Oh fuck, I died. I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. It's probably some evil looking thing. Is it in Australia? I don't- I don't know that we have scorpions here. Wow. Um, apparently if you say coom with a U and one less O in chat, YouTube senses it and doesn't send it out. Unless that's a mod thing? What else is censored? Wait, cum is censored? C-O-M? No, he's, I think he's saying the normal way you spell cum is, is censored. C-U-M? Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess. I mean, it, it's 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 slang for semen. Is semen censored? <laughs> I don't know. That's a... I don't know. Hmm. Usually the smaller the scorpion, the deadlier. Oh, how about that? Yeah, I'm very limited on my scorpion knowledge. I just know they're cool, alright? They're cool dudes. They are cool. Um, I had to pick up a shift today to make money for Super Chats. The only podcast that I can say I've been a fan of since the beginning. Long live EFAP. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I hope you're having Cheers. a good day. Three years and seven months since I found you and Wolf, thanks to Rags. What a wild 28 months it's been. From Jared to Hassan, here's to another 150 to come. That's another thing, like, I have no idea what day I actually met any of you guys. Um, you just have to base it around the first EFAP. That's essentially all I've got. It's like, it's around that. It wasn't long before your, um, your stream, right, Rags? I met you right before that. We did a stream on Star Wars. Yes, yeah. I think it, it was pretty, pretty soon before that, yeah. Yeah. God, this mission is fucking lame. I don't know if you remember this one, Fringy, but you have to get the right fruit from this little fruit dispensary thing. It's the it's the one you kick into Yoshi, and then you got to get him across all the platforms. I can barely remember that one. It's an optional one, but it's fucking Sounds like pain, it. pain one. Sounds pain. Your objectives are based on your values. Whether they pass or fail is objective, but what values you have can be subjective. Love you guys. Uh, what values you have it can, can be subjective? Be. Sure, it, it can be. Like, if you just like it because it feels good. Like, I, I like this as a value because it makes me feel happy or something like that. Instead of basing it off a more objective metric. It's certainly, like, deriving it from the categorization we're dealing with anyway. Can get very mm -hmm. objective in how you try to approach all of it. That doesn't mean it ain't fun and useful to talk about how it makes you feel and why. Of course. Great example of that is fucking cuties. Um, there's a vampire character in a show I heard my sister watches too called Russell Edgington. The actor is going full ham. <laughs> Russell Edgington. Russell Edgington. That's an interesting name. Yeah. Oh, I really don't like this part of the game. Uh, gonna catch up to 150 later at two times speed. Just bought the plushies. Any plans on making a commemorative wolf plush? I'd ask about Fringy, but no. No. Um, Boy. That'll be big no on, on the wolf one. Scientific method is really gay, though. I mean, yeah, it's a bit gay, but 
Yeah, a little bit. A little more of a bit there. of gain there. A little bit of gain. That's alright. Bigger, higher platform, please. Um, happy third anniversary of pausing every frame. I've been here since the beginning, and I thank all of you very much for helping me look at media with a more critical eye. Um, let's see, this is one of six, so I'll try and catch them all here. Damn. Mola, please split these donations between you, Rags, Fringy, Metal, and Wolf. I would also like to make a suggestion, if I may. Although media criticism is important, I would like to see you guys discuss deeper topics like religion and philosophy. Oh my. It would be interesting to see Rags and Shad go at it about Christianity versus Mormonism. Oh no. Um, I'm not a Christian. Um, yeah, I'm Rags atheist. isn't even, yeah. Also, um, I don't think he would want that to be public. I don't expect you guys to do something like that, but it would be pretty cool if you did. Anyways, I have an uh, have an excellent stream and good luck making it through 24 hours. Praise the dawn. Oh, and by the way, Mola, I don't know if you remember me, but I used to go by the name of Chip Chipley. My current name is more original and pronounced Paracles. Paracles? Paracles. Uh, also, I started playing Dark Souls 3 last week and having a blast, most of the time at least. What is a good place to farm souls for the mid-game? Oh man, I am not even sure Metal could answer that question at this point. Um, I think Google's your friend on that one, I do not remember. I'm afraid it's been so long, but thank you. And um, I, it's interesting to have someone advocate for more religion and philo philosophical debates or, or discussions. Interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I realized my YouTube account name doesn't match my Discord name, so I just changed it now. I was whole horse, but now I am fixed. Excellent. Uh, annual atonement for ad block. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, any thoughts on Invincible? Congrats on 150. Still no thoughts on Invincible. Nope. Maybe we'll watch it when nobody cares about it, and then be like, it was alright, or it was shit, or it was great. And be like, oh my god. After all this time. Um, I'd like to see... Oh wait, that's not I read that one. Um, I do not expect you guys... Oh wait, no, I read that one too. See, now I'm all confused. Where are we? Uh, two molar and all guests from Florida, man. Would you rather fuck a tank, or get fucked by a tank? Rather fuck a tank. I feel like if a tank tried to have sex with me, I would die. I was about to say, are we talking, is this some of the slang here, or are we talking about an actual tank? Because <laughs> I feel like it's going to kill me. Does your answer change if pregnancy is involved? Not really. No, it doesn't. No, it really doesn't. No. no. <laughs> uh... Long time lurker, first time donator, glad to be able to give to the Toxic Brood. Hi Moriarty and Hail Rags. Hail, hi there. Thank you. Happy 150. Hi Rag, Frungus, McDungus, no stripping. Hi. Well, we didn't do any stripping oh. on EFAP 150, so it's, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, just... I didn't do any stripping. Um. Do, 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 do. Laugh my ass off it is. Coom is censored? Wait, Coom and Cum are censored? Or just Coom or just Cum? I'm not sure. Well, either way, mm. it's terrible and it shouldn't be the case. It's a horror, that's what I say. Can we actually get him to... Yeah. <sighs> oh. Still out of range. Yes, down with censorship of Coom. Wait, does this one go up? No. Okay. Ooh. Oh my god, this mission's dead. Thank goodness. Let's get in here before Yoshi dies. Um, fun fact, basement is sometimes censored in games because it contains the word semen. But honestly, who doesn't have a basement with semen in it? Yeah, you know, a little bit. A little bit here and there for everybody. Put a little smiley face after that. A little bit disturbing, but not really, you know. It's fine. And damn near forgot high rags. Oh, hello to you. I spent like $70 on Super Chats today and bought both plushies. Can you please tell my friend... Oh, damn. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Can you please tell my friend Carlos that End of Evangelion is worse than Last Jedi in every way? Oh, uh -oh. Boy. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I don't know if, if I'm saying something ridiculous. 
Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but it. I, I have no idea. I mean, it's probably is, an anime, so ranks. Do you think it's, it's it's almost a guarantee? Yeah, but it is TLJ. That's, That's true. It's true. It's a toughie. That's the end of Evangelion. I don't even know what that is. What do we think, chat? Is that is that a crazy thought or is it close to reality? Mm, end of Evangelion is a trip. You know, that could still mean it's really good. Damn, that's a take. No. It was terrible. Hmm. Hmm. But could it be worse than TLJ? I'm sorry. If uh, we simply do not know that to be true, and to say it would just. It would breach every principle this podcast stands for, it would destroy everything. Do you know how much we sacrificed? I'm something of an anime myself. Oh no. <laughs> We're better than that. That sounds terrible. Um, Efab, what's your take on making an adaptation of a work with flaws? Would you keep the flaws or change the adaptation to mitigate the flaws? I would change it. I'd change the adaptation to uh, mitigate it, the yeah. flaws, yeah. I don't, if something was just like a flaw and I knew it and I recognized it and I kept it, and it's like, well, what's the point? Mm. Making an adaptation. You know, like yeah, how I'm just gonna not. Yeah. You know, if you adapted the OT to, um, I guess a TV show or something. I don't know why you would do this, but let's just say you were, um, you know, the, the whole the approach with Jabba and Return of the Jedi. I'd be like, okay, we're gonna rewrite this so it actually makes sense and that there's a plan, and that the the, the plan will become yeah. clear by the time it's engaging. That, that's the way to do it, because I fucking have no idea what the plan was. And if we change pieces to then resemble a plan, and thus it's no longer the same as the original, I'd be like, that's okay. That's okay. Then again, it would be complicated in terms of like, I wonder if fans would want it so that you just don't touch anything. You keep everything the same, or as close to as you can. But at that point, I guess you're just wondering, what are we doing here, you know? Yeah, you have the OT. Like, why not just engage with the original material? Yeah. I would, yeah, I would hope at that point we'd be able to change stuff, and, uh, hopefully for the better. Most of Return of the Jedi could be rewritten. I mean, changed. You know, I try and keep a lot of it the way that it is in terms of structure. Start a job as releasing Han. I think all that works. Then the Endor stuff, you know, we just need to tweak all of it. Would you keep the Ewoks for you, or would you have them be Wookiees? As was originally um, intended. Uh, I think I'd prefer it if they were Wookiees. I don't mind the Ewoks, but I think Wookiees just makes more... Like, if we're gonna have them beat the Empire, I can believe it more if it's the Wookiees. I need to get an opportunity to have some stuff with Chewbacca, right? More stuff. Yeah, exactly. They should be black people. Look, I'm not Quinton Reviews, okay? I'm, I, I don't, I'm not making those changes. Uh, congrats on 150. I've fallen off recently since I haven't watched any Marvel stuff since Endgame, but watching your Hassan Tandy stream gave me joy. <laughs> I like the idea that people are like, oh, this Marvel stuff kind of... Like, oh shit, they're talking about Hassan? Count me in. <laughs> Tandy is, oh my god. Uh, discovered you guys a year ago, and you've been helping me get through life's hardships ever since. I appreciate you all and your wonderful content. Why, thank you. Hope you're doing, Thanks. Hope you're doing well. Objectivity and objective value are not the same thing. Objective value is just a tool we use to have intelligent discussions, etc. If someone had an objective value, everyone would value it the exact same. High rags. Hello. Well, I'm a little bit no. lost on what's been said there. Do you That's mean, what is an objective value if not a value reached objectively? Yeah, like a val that my value yeah, is I'm this because lost. I have analyzed that value to have like if, like if you're maybe a secular humanist, right? And you value the well-being of human, you you value the well-being of humans because it means this and that and the other thing, and it leads to all this other stuff, and it's really good, and it leads to good things in society, and people are able to like flourish and whatnot. Um. Yeah. I. 
you know, like, um, it's, it's, it's the word value is getting, getting moved around all over here, and I'm like, you know how a value can be a number on a, like, a thermometer? Yeah. So, like, if I said that was an objective value, as in the number, but that... The number is this, based on the system that we've agreed upon, so... Yeah. Not sure to, uh, what else we could do. That's like the best we can do as humans to be objective, I think. We do indeed try. Uh, will you review the Wheel of Time series Some on Amazon? I don't know if any of us here have read I don't any know books. About so, Wheel of Time. Yeah. yeah. I haven't read them now. Wolf will probably have something to say about that, but yes. well, <laughs> to me anyway. Um. Grand Tour? I love Dragon Ball GT. Fringy's still wrong. <laughs> I don't know about uh, what. <laughs> Alright. Look, all I'm interpreting out of that oh, is praise. Right. Just uh, in general. Praise for Grand Tour. That's all I'm that's all I'm getting out of that, and I agree. Grand Tour's good shit. Um M's laugh gives me life. Wish wish Chase was here. Well, we'll uh we'll try and get them both uh, for a future episode. Who knows what lies ahead? Picard and Discovery at Tanagra. Shocker when the ratings fall, fell? Hmm. What's Tanagra? Or Tanagra? Uh, there is a famous Star Trek The Next Generation episode called uh, Darmok. And it's where the Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra thing comes from. The uh -huh. story is about a, a captain of a... Uh, basically, the Enterprise comes into contact with, a, with a, a, the ships from an alien race. Who have a an unusual language, and it's and the the language is about it, the the video is about breaching the language gap between two um, spaceships because the captain of the alien ship transports Captain Picard, um, and the captain of the alien ship transports the both of them down onto a planet where they have to overcome some obstacle, and hopefully by doing so. He will. They'll learn each other's languages, and that that it's it's pretty it's pretty as long as you can accept the absolutely stupid premise of how the alien language works. It's a it's a really nice episode. It's really neat. Hmm. Um. Hi, Anna. Someone give Rags a dog treat or a beer, whichever is closer. Yeah, whichever we want. He prefers at the time, I suppose. Um, it's my truth and you can't have it. Sticks tongue out. I think we were, we were talking about the whole <laughs> my truth thing at that point. Yeah. Only ever seems to be rolled out as a way of being like, okay, so this isn't true, <laughs> but... Yeah, no one ever but says it's it... my truth for anything that's actually true. Yeah, because why would you? <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. It's not my truth. Yeah, like, it's not my truth that the sun is really hot. Like, it... it... It just is. Um, release the Sterling chat. Oh, release the Sterling oh. cut? Oh, no. No, uh. no, 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 no. Um, happy year three of EFAB gang. Keep it toxic. Also, hi, Moodle. Hi, Moodle, indeed. Moodle actually isn't around for this one. Yeah, I know. Horrifying. Uh, he was in the beginning of it. I think he went to sleep. Um, I like Rags, but his video is almost literally a rerun of EFAP 133. I don't think he said anything that wasn't said in the video. I wouldn't go that far. Um, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah, there was a couple of sections I liked in your video that I don't remember us talking about, so... Yeah. I would say so. Um, but hey, I mean, it's how long has it been since then? Like, it was a, a while. while. Oh yeah, I don't know. And and that is... If there will definitely be videos that I cover that we have covered on EFAP, but they will be like I believe my orc video is. Um, definitely distinctly different. Mm -hmm. How many have I got left? Oh, just one. I hope you remember this mission for me. This is like one of the best ones. I do remember balloons. that one. That one was a lot of fun. I want a hard mode. It's, uh, I think my truth means subjective truths like the sun feels hot. 
You know, you would think that, but that's not how people use it. That's never how they fucking use it. They use it whenever you can falsify something they've said, and they're like, don't do that. Yeah. Well, it's my truth. I feel this way. I think it's true. It's true to me. Which, it's true to me, when applied to a thing that's wrong, is just, I was not correct. Yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna still find a way to do my best to believe it's true. Or to act as if it's true. Um, I've been watching you guys since I found Mola's channel a few months ago, and you guys have been so much fun to watch. I spent a long time, or a lot of time, while working and listening to your streams and laughing at all the bad takes and terrible arguments. Here's to another three years. Oh, Thank you so much. Hope you're having, Thank you hope you're having fun. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. I would say, like, this applies to every channel ever, but, like, if you enjoy what you, you hear when you f first join us, like, you got three years of stuff, by the way. It's, it's all there. How exciting. Yeah. On objective audio, the YouTube premiere audio is too damn loud. It is so much louder than the actual yes. videos of audio. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yep, it's been a problem yep. since forever, but they just will not fix it. I don't know how. I don't think it's broken. It's, how could it have been a problem for this long? It's insane. <laughs> like, what? Well, they, that's the thing. They, they must not even it's recognize totally that it is a problem to fix. Do you think it's one of those ones where they've got, like, uh, what do they call it? Like spaghetti development where you've got so much history of coding that they can't actually access it without fucking something else up. Like they change it and then Maybe. it like fucks something and they're like, oh shit. Because like it's they such a... Have it be quieter. Nobody at YouTube has tested that thing and said, yes, this is the perfect volume. It's like, no. It is bizarre how this something that's so obviously loud. an issue exists for that long. It's, it's so absurd, you, you knock it down to like the first notch, and it's still like easily hearable. You're like, yep, that's, that's that. Every time you have to put it all the way back up when the video comes on. It's like, you gotta stop this. It's, it's wrong, is what it is. And there's no way, because I've not heard anybody say that they appreciate the fucking volume on that thing. Give us multiple music choices. That's another thing. You'd think they would have had like several tracks instead of just the one. That's not that's not as much of a problem or anything. Cause it's only two minutes, but still. Thank you for the hard work. No problemo. Yeah. You massives have been the most consistently entertaining media I've watched over the past three years, and I've had a lot of fun. Wow. Cheers. High ranks. High praise. There's a lot of really Thanks. good channels. That out is there. really high and praise. Hello to you. Thank you very much. I hope we continue to entertain. That's good, because we always talk about consistency and how important it is. So, yeah. being told we're consistently entertaining, that's like two different levels of amazing. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for amazing content, helping me understand media criticism better. How would you rank Buffy and Angel seasons from worst to best? Also, high ranks. Hi there. All right. It'll be easier mm. to split them into the two shows. So, for Buffy, worst season is one. Then probably two. Then four and seven are getting a little close to each other. And then four and seven again, obviously, but depending on how I would split those up, because I'm not 100% sure. Why does this have to be timed? I don't know where all the fucking red coins are. Um, Then season... What have we got left at that point? It's just five and six, right? Yes. In that case, five, then six. Six is a fucking beast. And then Angel. You know, worst is season four. That's easy. Then probably season one. Then... Ooh. Yeah. Season two and three are pretty close. They're both... They are pretty close. Pretty, pretty just, awesome. Um, yeah, top one. Yeah, that's hard to think of right now. We've probably done this before. Um, but, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute again. <laughs> Bro, what is that What is that noise? I don't even know what that is. I think it's people doing work, like drilling and stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh, Fringy, do you have... Are you like uh, the Clampets? Do you have... Um, bubbling Crude? that you have struck on your property, and so they are drilling all the no. oil so that you could become a millionaire no. and live in Beverly Hills? Apparently not, right? Well, oh. I could live in, no, but no. Wow, Beverly Hills, oh my God. It's crazy. I knew right. Is it? I, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, people, people want to live there, don't they? 
Yeah, well. That they do. So I can't get up there. Hmm. What would you have me do, game? What are you having me do? Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, Angel Season 5 then is the best. It just stands above. It sits on its little throne and it says hello to all the other seasons. Considers them cute. Hmm. How adorable you are to believe you could come close to my grandeur! Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hmm. Um. One day I'll know. And whoever else goes on this amazing, magical tour through the Buffyverse. Yes. Maybe this door opens now. Hey, it does! Oh, no, wait, I need this door to open. Oh, it's not even a... Okay. So I need two more red coins in two minutes. Hmm. Terrifying concept. Oh, 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 hey! I wonder if there's any up here. Um... Boop, boop. Fuck, marry, kill, EFAP 50, 100, and 150. Hmm. Um. I think we should kill 50 because you should let the pass die. Kill it if you have to. Um. Oh. 100 we gotta keep, though. I think we gotta marry 100, right? Yeah, I think we gotta marry 100. No, I'd, be, I'd be fine fucking 150. Oh, there you go. Uh, I literally do say that the sunshine is miserable, and I love heavy rain and wind. I wouldn't expect many people to agree with me, though. I remember we were talking about that. I like it as long as it ends. Like, if it's a couple, like, if it's a, if it's a rainy day or two, I'm down with it, you know? I, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy a good, proper inside day where you can hear the rain, maybe a little bit of thunder, and you're just inside, and you know you're sort of like like easy mode trapped but um if it goes on longer than that i'm like okay we've gone we've gone on long enough We're, yeah okay. as okay. much as sun can go on for way too long its limits are much less than if there were constant rain you know that's what hap that's what's happening here we got a bit of a dry spell going on uh some of the lakes are getting pretty uh pretty low pee in them which is always kind of nifty to see um when the water goes down really far on some of the lakes around here, and you, you see what was underneath, you see the little. One one, one time they had to do because I live um, around a bunch of little lakes, and they had to drain. They they decided they I guess the city spent a crap load of money to do this big reconstruction project on improving the draining and stuff of all these lakes and making sure that they would flow as they should and they, all the pipes were working things of that nature um so they drained a couple at a time they completely drained these lakes and i don't know it may be the for the first time ever they've been drained fully and i was a, i was a kid at the time and they were drained for a while weeks and weeks and um you would see how deep they were and what the little hills and ridges were underneath the lakes and then like tall grass would start to grow and you could you could go down in there and you could like get kind of like lost in the tall grass that would grow along the bottom of these uh, now empty lakes which were these huge kind of rock and mud pits and i just it's one of my my fond childhood memories was me and my friends that i would go bike riding and stuff with um we would go into these lakes and just sort of see all the cool stuff uh, yeah. that people would throw in there, and and, we, and we'd find like old wallets and bicycles and knickknacks and doodads and Little stuff. Uh, no, no bodies. No bodies is a nice neighborhood. Um, no. It has been for some time, but uh, it was really kind of cool uh, to just sort of see all the stuff that goes down at the bottom. Beautiful. Um, I live in Arizona, and we regularly complain about the sunny days. 120 Fahrenheit will do that, but at least it's a dry heat. Also, high rags. Hi. A lot of people say that jokingly, but it does make a... It makes it a lot more bearable. Dry heats really do make it more bearable. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody likes the extremes, and we all wish we could just have a little weather controller that can give us whatever we want. Maybe one day. I'm not going to, like... Crack that day. technology, yeah. 
But then again, that was that was Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. He tried to control the weather. And look what happened. And look what happened. We should watch those movies. I remember, enjoy, especially the first one. I think that one's pretty pretty darn good. Who's the um the voice actor for the main character in those? I don't know. Let me check. I assume it's somebody I know. Oh yeah, it's Bill Hader. Ah, I was actually thinking it might be him, but then I was like, I don't know if he was famous enough at that point. Neil Patrick Harris is Steve. James Caan. Steve. Andy Samberg. Hal Roker. Uh, the Folly of Man. Tracy Morgan was in it. Damn, there's a lot of people. It was a stacked cast. All right, back to six again. And of course, and of course, Mr. T. Oh yes. It was was Terry Crews in that as well. I don't think so. You might no. I don't. I don't think so. I think that was Mr. T. Maybe, maybe that was the second one. Do you think they replaced? There's no way they replaced Mr. T. Who was the the black cop? Was that Mr. T? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, I think I might mix them up. Um, Rags is no, it was Lawrence, that was Lawrence Fishburne. I oh, don't... Terry Crews was in the second one. He was Earl Devereaux. I don't remember who that is. Yeah, me neither. Uh, let me, let me Earl. Oh, that is the name of the cop. Yeah, oh. they did. He was so he went from being Mr. T to Terry Crews. Wow. Okay. That is weird. I assumed I assumed that they didn't that they wouldn't do that, but I guess they did. Wow, I can't believe they're replacing black actors. Yeah. Just the world we're in, man. Just the world we're in. I've completely forgotten how I got up again. Where is hmm. salvation? If Rags is both a bottom and a film critic, does that make him a plot hole? If what now? If you're a if you're a film critic and a bottom, does that make you a plot hole? Ah, look at you go! Yes. <laughs> um. Boom, boom, boom. Congratulations, you wonderful massives! Hi, Rags and Mola. Keep doing the Don's work, fellas. Hello. We shall do it. We shall indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm, boop, boop. Did you guys ever get the chance to play the Halo Infinite Tech Preview last month? I thought it was a lot of fun, and I'm super hyped for the launch in December. Uh, I did not get no. to play it, but I'm glad that you have good things to say about it, because Halo multiplayer is definitely something that I really want to be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Congrats on 150, which is easier to salvage. Which is easier to salvage, the MCU or Star Wars, when we'd be keeping Phase 4 and the sequels canon? Also, high rags. Hi, Star Wars. Star Wars is easier, yeah. To do. I feel like when it comes to Star Wars, you could get away from Star Wars and Star Wars easier than you can get away from the MCU and the MCU. And to be fair, you could easily fix them both to a degree in terms of the whole, like, it was all a dream. That would, it's funny, I, that would legitimately be like, I would, I would make the sequel trilogy some kind of, like, Elseworlds fever dream thing, and I would find some way to get Luke as some kind of a, like, I don't know, like, it, just something, like, I would start out my career with my name attached to Star Wars. I know it's a, it, it's ambitious, but I want, I would want to be the guy who saves Star Wars. Certainly is seen as that. But actually, I would actually do it. I'm not of this, I'm not any of this John Favreau horse shit. I would actually <laughs> do it. Would you just outright decanonize the sequels? Yes. Yeah. That's the problem though. I don't think they're allowed to. Like the, there's no capacity for anybody to be able to do that because the people in charge wouldn't let them. 
but yeah, it would it would typically be a vision given to Luke by some evil force to put him off track, but he's like, no, I would never do that. And then you said to tell your your own story, it'd be great. Um, also high Rex. Hi there. Buck Mary Kill, Movie Bob, Boogie Twenty Two Nine Eighty Eight, and Jim Sterling. Uh, we're killing Sterling. Um, <laughs> uh, Is that all obvious? It's like, I don't know. I think I would marry. Oh fuck me. Yeah. Um. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's see. Okay, who would I kill? I let's let's. Let's. Mm. <laughs> you gotta fuck one of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, if, if, uh, let's see. All right. Well, let's let's do maybe Mary. Right. Let's do Mary first. I Who think would you Boogie want to be married to, and I think I'm going with Boogie. I think he's got the most. He, he does have a nice house, I guess. And, and he doesn't you know, live that far away from me, so I would still... Like, he lives in my state. He lives a couple hours away from me. You could probably, um, like, talk to him about games and stuff. You know, it wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, like, you could probably have some, like, approaching regular conversations with Boogie on the regular. Mm -hmm. Um, And he, he wouldn't care about you having a hooker, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, Which is weird, because that's illegal in Arkansas. But, uh, <laughs> let's... Uh, yeah, I'm marrying Boogie. I'm gonna go with Mary Boogie. Okay. I get to stay close-ish to my family, remain in the state. Looks like he has, at least physically speaking, his life together. Um, in terms of a home and a place. I don't know what his financials are like, but I, I, I'm gonna go with Boogie. Marrying Boogie. Plus, he probably legitimately has a lot of cool shit in his house in terms of game stuff yeah and i and mean just cool knickknacks and doodads like legitimately he probably has a lot of cool stuff in there that's and look you cool can try stuff. and make it work if it doesn't work then you know that's just that isn't it yeah. um since it is a boogie in jail right now i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so is he i don't, yeah, I don't no, think he's in jail if he goes to jail it'll be, probably be like two years from now before the whole thing is sorted out and it probably won't be for too long it's it's not my concern plus i don't know how much longer he's got left from what I've heard, that's the same for the both of them too. Any of the any of these three could drop dead tomorrow from a heart attack. True. That's the thing. Um, from what I've heard from Boogie, the maximum he would get would be six years, but that's very unlikely because of yeah like, I, his criminal record being clean. Um, yeah, and maybe the circumstances of it. And I don't know. Yeah, Who knows? From what I've heard, uh, yeah. where we should expect one year or a big fine. Uh, that's what I've heard. I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. So, I guess we're moving on to the next one. And now that there's only two options left, here's oh. here's what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna kill? fuck Jim. Oh, oh right. You're gonna fuck Jim. I'm gonna fuck. Yes, I'm gonna fuck Jim, and I'm gonna marry, or I'm gonna kill Bob. And here's my reasoning. Okay. Bob is disgusting. <laughs> right. Jim Sterling is also extremely disgusting, but younger. So that at least, at least his big fucking rotund, it's fucking ugliness, right? It will be a bit more bearable, <laughs> I feel. Okay. You know, it won't be as wrinkly. It won't be like a fucking <laughs> elephant nut sack that I'm trying to, you know. Um, and, uh, and so I think it would be, a, a, I'm not going to say more pleasant, less unpleasant. Right. Um, so that's my thought process. Because like, I could... I don't know, like, I think I might be able to imagine having sex with Jim. As unpleasant as it is, I cannot even fathom the idea of having human intercourse with Movie Bob. I can't even imagine it. Um, so, and plus, Movie Bob is, like, evil. So right, right. I think we, I, I, he said some foul, foul things, um... And I just don't, uh, uh, yeah, if I had, if I had to pick, that's my, that's my fuck, Mary kill on that. And I think I've thought about it far longer than I needed to. That, you know what, Mary for a $2 kill. super chat, <laughs> I feel like they got oh, their yeah. answer. I hope so. Good stuff. I, I mean, yeah, I pretty much agree with the whole thing. I, I, I enjoy the reasoning. I, I, I don't enjoy the, the idea, but you know what? 
Sometimes you have to make some sacrifices to answer hypotheticals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just got done with my first playthrough of Halo Combat Evolved. Fantastic game, but the MCC is kind of wonky. The library is the worst level, by the way. Is that controversial or no? Oh. No, it's not controversial, but I guess the controversial thing is that I don't think it's a bad level at all. I quite enjoy it. Mm. I think it's just simple, mindless, endless combat, and which which I don't mind at all. Um, you never have to worry about where to go. You never have to worry about killing all the enemies and finding out, oh, which hallway did I forget to walk down or something like that. Um, very simple, very straightforward, and that's uh, that's why I like it. What's uh, what are the what's the most common complaint about it then? That it's repetitive or very rep very repetitive and bland, I guess, because mm -hmm. um, it's essentially just a a a dull in terms of its aesthetic. You just have to fight the flood for a long time as you progress through a bunch of um, big gray hallways. Right. But I like fighting the flood. I enjoy doing that. So. There you go. There you go. Assault on the control room is better. Hi, Rex. Hi. Um, no, I really didn't like that at all. I didn't. I don't like the, the tanks, the way that they control in the first Halo. They don't shoot where you aim. Um, the sections are generally pretty slow, and I just don't really like the vehicle segments, especially when you have a tank. You just feel like there's nothing challenging to it, and I just don't find it engaging. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Um. Happy anniversary. Thanks for all the long over the years. If I may inquire, what is everyone here's favorite fictional and non-fictional animals? My favorite is mice and dragons. Anyway, got to sleep. Catch you later. I mean, dragons are going to be scoring pretty high. In terms of... Favorite fictional animals. Dragons are up there. Some dragons are really cool. A lot of them are just edgy and lame. Yeah. But, um... Huh, let me see. Favorite fictional animals. I do like griffins. Griffins are neat. Yeah. Let me see. Favorite fiction. So we're talking about non-sapient creatures. Um. Uh. I would assume so. I would. I might. Which might actually discount a whole lot of dragons. True, but I imagine that. Yeah. They probably meant to include that since they chose dragons. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, minotaurs can be pretty cool, uh, the, especially minotaurs? the whole labyrinth aspect. Yeah, yeah, because they're in the, la the whether you're going with the classical one where they're in the labyrinth, you know, coming to get you, or just the, in general, minotaurs out and about. Um, fan his favorite fantasy creatures. Um, honestly, that one's kind of, that, that would be something that I have to really start thinking about. Um, cause, oh, Cerberus, Cerberus is a really nifty one. Oh, and yeah. Cerberus and That's, I like werewolves. Yeah. I like werewolves a lot. I think they're super cool. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff you could do with werewolves. I'm assuming the Balrog counts, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Balrog. Yeah. yeah. I think it has to. And if um, so, more. He's a top scorer. <laughs> he's up there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hmm. I like the Sphinx with the riddle, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like the riddle sort of thing. Pretty nifty. Hmm. Cat girls. I mean, I can see why people would choose them. But, you know. no, they're too, they're too human-like. I think for the. Well, it's so the Minotaur. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. But um, I'm just trying to think of a few quick. Some that are just thinking of some quick ones, maybe. Um... Oh, let's see. What do we have? Uh, da, 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 da. The I'm going through maybe like enemies and MMOs and stuff like that. I kind of kind of think are cool. Hmm. Nagas can be pretty cool, like the half snakes sort of guys. They can be pretty nifty. Mm. Um, 
the yeah that, that was pretty cool i'm trying to think of some others that just just sort of come because there's there's a bajillion and it's like trying to go sift through all of them in your head and then pull uh, pull out the ones that you think are really kind of nifty and cool um Some some are just like kind of lame. A lot of them are lame. I don't want to go with them. Like I don't care about mermaids or like phoenix. I just don't really care about them. Uh, don't like phoenixes? No, nah, I just it's, nah. Like like unicorns. I'm like eh, so they're fine. I guess. I don't know. Phoenix. Like I I get unicorns like kind of lame, but phoenix is like fire bird that rebirths itself. So it's kind of cool. Hopefully that was a decent enough answer, I guess, for starters. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's hard to think about all of the stuff and then pull it. Well, the other half was into... favorite uh, non-fictional animal too, but I, th I think we've answered this before. I can't remember what our answers were. Do you remember, Rags, what your favorite animal is? Oh, doggos. Mine's, uh, I can't remember what I said last time. I know sharks are up there. I think they're pretty badass. I think I said penguins. It's gonna be a whole selection, like though. Me penguin. Could literally just depend on what I'm seeing in the day. Because you know what? Baby seals are pretty top tier. The Isle of Man flag. Perfect. <laughs> Favorite one of <laughs> Yes. There was probably a whole bunch of like D and D and Pathfinder enemies that are really super cool, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't really. Yeah, wargs are up there. Wargs and uh, I guess if we can count wargs, we can count gnolls. Wargs and gnolls. They they're often kind of combined a lot of the time, or different mixes of them both. Platypus. That's true. Yeah. Fantasy creature is a platypus. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Oh, I see you, Red Coin. Happy EFAPiversary, y'all. Hi, Rags. Thank you, and hello. Uh, Kick J, done, and good day to all. Y'all have saved my mind from the clutches of boredom, even sleep, and on many work trips. Uh, special thanks to Mola for the Unbridled Rage that introduced me to the Brood. Aw. I'm really glad that you like them. I'm glad the the, the Unbridled series can, f can funnel people into our mischievous events on mm -hmm. over on efab mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um refap 50 i gave a dollar for 100 i gave two anticipate four dollars oh because oh you're doubling it every time i see yeah well they gave three so i'm assuming they're saying anticipate oh. four for 200. oh i i okay i thought anticipate was just mm -hmm. like, anticipate and then it says the four dollars yes okay all right i because i thought that it'd almost be a subversion although um yeah it'd just be mm -hmm. which is super cool well thank you very much thank you very much yeah filming a movie about a swimmer's last race any advice for what emotions i should try to capture on my 17th final year as a swimmer thanks lads hey um gosh i have no idea i assume um... it would be like um any person who's leaving a, a, a long career um, where they would just be kind of like, so have you ever, have you ever been in a position where you're like, you're leaving a, a you're moving and you're leaving a house or a home that you have a lot of memories in and you're going to just a new place. And maybe there's a, a connection there with how, um, how you feel leaving behind a, a very familiar sort of uh, setting. Um, like I, after I left my first apartment, it wasn't much, but it was my first one. And it was kind of, I got a little emotional. I mean, you know, it's my first place and a lot of memories. And I really kind of liked the space. I just felt like I finally was ready to move on. And may, maybe that's a similar kind of vibe you should go for. Like you're ready to go off and do new things, but you really want to appreciate the stuff that you're not even necessarily leaving behind um because you can always i guess you could swim casually instead of professionally but there's always going to be something that you know you enjoy and you respect about the you know the journey it took you to get where you are but i'm, I'm not really not sure that's not quite my 
I suppose an element of it would be a pride for what they've accomplished over their lengthy career, yeah. whatever it is. As much as it's it's saying goodbye, it's uh, it, you also got the whole it's it's saying hello to a new era. But that's a complicated one, and it could very much be to do more so with whoever this character is and how they feel about it. Lots mm -hmm. of different possibilities. I feel like there's probably a lot of stories as well that try and cover that sort of thing, like the um, the the, end of an era. the person in their prime sort of ending their time with that thing. Um, not in their yeah. like they were in their prime and then they had to come to an end. Um, but of course, I hope that, I hope that goes well. Sounds interesting. Good luck, yeah, sir. Absolutely. Good luck to you indeed. And um, and yeah, and this person says, uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Hydras. And it's like, yeah, I can see why. Hydras can be pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. Those are kind of nifty. In the original story, the Hydra, as we all know, it, um, whenever you killed, what well, you chopped off one of its heads, uh, others would grow and take its place. I think it was, oh, Ursus? I can't, I can't quite remember. He fires a special, fires an arrow at one of them as it was breathing fire and it melted as it like went inside of the hydra and so it killed it that way nice it turned into like molten metal man it would suck to be the hydra you're like fuck it's a little yeah, hot well, now oh damn couldn't you just cut off my head <laughs> sure you never be a dick that. about it yeah everyone else cuts off my head yeah, I like it. I like the way it feels. I have a fetish. Which, you know, when you're in fantasy, that can be a thing. Yeah, that's fair enough. Wake up meme so you can explain corking. I, oh. Corking? Yeah, no. That sounds when cool. they've mentioned the metal's blowhole so much, and now there's a thing about corking. I, oh. Strange things be happening on his stream, I'd assume. Holy cow, Twitter has paid subs, super followers. Really? Really? What does that mean? What do they get access to? Maybe you get to decide what- Exclusive when... tweets, maybe? I fucking... The idea of exclusive tweets is just funny to me. Exclusive tweets. <laughs> Only the real fans will get this tweet. Premium tweets, alright? Imagine you, you knew that that was what you've- Sort of sorted out, and now you're like, man, I gotta make some fucking great tweets for the people who are paying. Yeah, these things better be fire. <laughs> oh man, that new fucking Marvel thing, it's not very good, is it? <laughs> they're like, oh, that was a good fucking tweet. Yeah, I'm glad I'm paying to get your incredible <laughs> insight. Boy, that was worth the, whatever it costs to be a super follower. Yeah, because, like, the idea that you can... It's a form of donation service, right? It's like, that's one thing, but, I mean, it sounds like you buy something for this. On a monthly yeah. basis. Yeah. Knob Goblin, that's another good fantasy creature, yeah. Goblin. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that all turns out. Thank you for the entertainment during the doldrums of work. This will probably be applicable during the uh, Super Chat catch-up. Kick J, hi rags. Hello. J has been kicked. Um, did something happen to JC as his channel? I remember there being more videos on there back when I first found him. I don't know. I don't know if there's less now than there was. Um, I think he's got a few Patreon exclusive ones. It might be that he's um, moved a couple to that. I don't know. Christopher Nolan's Tenet is criticized because you cannot hear the actors over the sound effects and score. That is objectively bad. I mean, I would certainly make the fucking argument that you have context in your movie that is impossible for a human being to fucking collect. Like, nice. <laughs> I feel like you've failed miserably at that point. And by the way, how often do you hear people complain about being unable to hear something in a movie, be it dialogue or whatever else? It's like, and this happens this in David... Uh, David Tennant, fucking hell. Uh, Tennant from Nolan. It's like, how? And do you guys remember, he had uh, audio problems with The Dark Knight Rises with um, uh, Bane. Bane. They had to like, re-record all of it. It's just like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. 
with Nolan and audio, but it is bizarre. And uh, could you not? it's just amazing to me because like even the shittiest of movies, they don't usually have that problem. A weird one. There we go. Oh, I made it after all this time. Rags, I did it. I found all eight coins. That's great. Now, where does the star do? Oh, it's on a fucking cloud? Okay. What the fuck? I didn't agree to this. This is outside of the contract. Oh my god, that is so dangerous. Should probably have the hover nozzle for this. But I don't know where the hover nozzle is. Oh boy. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> Useful. Um... Happy 150th. I love all the work you do. Through EFAP and everyone's own work, I've discovered my love for writing and media analysis. You've all inspired me to start creating my own. Aww. That's really great to hear. Excellent. I hope that goes well and you yeah. enjoy it and make some wonderful things and become a famous director. And then uh, you make lots and lots of money and you buy all of our plushies. Audio is Nolan's least favorite fantasy creature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm riding on a on this daffodil creature. Oh, that was safer than I thought it would be. Did it? Um, only users with at least ten thousand followers will be eligible for the super followers feature. Users must have tweeted more than twenty-five times in the past thirty days. Okay. That sounds right. really strange, but okay. I don't even know that I qualify for that, by the way. I don't tweet that much. I definitely don't. Man, I guess just monetizing tweets feels so strange, but you know what? You, uh, you do what you have to do. Old Twitter. Good day to you all. Hi, Rags. Have some scritches Hello. for everyone oh, else. Thank you. I offer a firm left-handed handshake. Ringy, is any of your goo ready for purchase? No. No, it's mm. not. Hmm. Still working on it. Well, you know, just drum up excitement that way, right? Um. Oh, this was a part one, part two, so... That's kind of a weird part. I don't see how that is part one, part Wait, wait, wait. Oh. oh. You've all inspired me to start creating my own content, making YouTube videos, writing my own books slash stories, and game development. And with everyone's advice and everyone's videos, I feel like I can create content I will truly and forever be proud of. Never forget how much of an impact you've all had on my life. Aww. Aww. That was really nice. Yeah, I'm glad we had an Cheers, impact on your dude. life and it was positive. Yeah, I hope everything goes well. I hope you make all kinds of games and books and YouTube videos. Go nuts. Have fun. Thank you so much. Three years is far too short a time to spend among such excellent and admirable tisms. I don't know half of you as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you as well as you deserve. Here's to another three. That's a good reference. Do you guys remember what that's from? I don't. No. Uh, Fellowship of the Ring. One more time. Oh. <laughs> oh. The... I was about to say, I was kind of forgot. Yeah, it's Bilbo's birthday speech. He says it is birthday. Um, finished watching Raised by Wolves. It's awful. Raised by Wolves? Do we know what this is? HBO show, I think. Is it new or? Um, uh, uh, not like like new as in in the last year or so. I think. I don't know anything about it though. Hmm. Uh, I've never had any problems with Doom, Eter Doom Eternal's platforming. I assume the yeah, I I don't know how. Yeah, you you're not gonna have a problem with it. It'll just be dull and boring, and you just want it to be over so you can get to the gameplay part. That get the uh, get to the shooty. It bang. just seems like a bizarre design decision to have so much fucking worthless platforming in between the combat. Like I didn't know this was a thing people really asked for. Um, Twitter on Wednesday launched Super Follows, a feature that allows select users to charge 
others for access to subscriber-only content. Right. When they say content. So it is. Tweets? It is <laughs> Tweets, I guess. Alright. Be interesting to see how all that goes. But imagine it's like, oh, have you seen this fucking ball of tweet? You're gonna have to buy it, though. Mm. You're like, uh, oh, I'll be right. I'm good. And then, like, it goes viral, but they- and so they can't take advantage of, like, people having, you know, read it. And so, like, the public in general, and so they're like, oh no, I'm gonna have to do it again, but make this one for free. And then all the subscribers will be upset. They're not getting exclusive tweet content. Bum, bum, bum. It's a weird one. Um, Jim is the male version of a female comedian. Hey, there are some good female comedians out there, okay? Well, Jim's not funny, though. Well, I guess they're saying that female comedians aren't funny, but... That's, yeah, but if he was the male version of a female comedian, he'd be funny. I mean, not if the if you're trying to like, cause there are unfunny male comedians, am I right? I mean, there's a lot of them. Yeah, I just I think that's what the joke was trying to get across. I'm I'm choosing to defend that there are plenty of fanny whammons out there. Fanny. Fanny whammons. Definitely. Definitely. Fuck. Name six. Um, Dawn French, Jennifer Saunders. I'm running out. <laughs> You always go to those two first. Yes, I do, because I fucking watched the shit out of that when I was younger. I was like, yay, women are funny too, and then... Uh, Alison Grey's pretty funny. Oh, I thought we were doing, like, stand-up related people. Oh, timing. Oh, um, okay. Are they still going on about fucking terriers? Just shit. <laughs> get it. Hey, Rex. You'd love it if you, um... Don't get it. If don't you pretend it. you like it, maybe it's someone you'd want. I'm like... On every level. I don't understand. How can you be so bad at media criticism? So anyway. Oh well, moving on. <laughs> wait, 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 what were we talking about? We were talking about uh, female comedians that are funny. Ah. Oh yeah, I named two. Oh, when it comes to stand-up, it's a lot. It feels tougher. You feel like Connie Booth had... Cause she she co-wrote Faulty Towers, like that's that's worth a lot. <laughs> it's as a, yeah, I mean she's got to be a funny you know, funny lass. Credential is a funny woman. Doom twenty sixteen platforming was so bad, Eternal made it better. No, so Doom twenty six platforming was great because it was extremely simple and there was very little of it. Right, Eternal adds all these stupid mechanics that do nothing except make you roll your eyes and it wastes your time just so you can get to the next fight where you can actually play the game. It does absolutely nothing to make the game better. It doesn't add to the experience in any possible fucking way. Doom 2016 was like, yeah, you're here to shoot zombies and aliens from Mars, all right? So we're not gonna fuck around with this wall climbing, twist around, jumping, any of that nonsense, all right? You just, if you have to do, in 2016, if you had to do some platforming, it was just, you just jump to that thing. Oh, it's, it's fine. So, I, I just, it's just, it, it's clunky. Someone said it's fluid. It's like, no, it's not. It isn't fluid at all. It's, it's clunky. It feels like they added it in later. It's just, oh, you got, you have, you guys have fucking horrific standards for platforming if you think Doom Eternal had good platforming. I have not played like it. It should be reserved for the likes of Mario, you know? Mario's got good platforming. I feel like Doom Eternals is just fine. It's a shooter. I, I'm not a big fan of first-person platforming. You know, unless the whole game is built around it like Mirror's Edge. I always feel like that game's something else. No, platform would be fair. I played the first Doom. It was neat. I liked it a bunch. That's my full input. Okay. I, haven't played I think Quake has. To... I think. I think Quake has spoiled me when it comes to um. Uh, like the the old school shooter. Like it's tough for me to play and enjoy Doom after playing like Quake and stuff. Oh, I meant I never really cared Doom, for Doom 2016, but I also like the original Doom quite a bit. Uh, um, yeah, the 2016 one I really really like. 
I haven't finished Eternal yet. Maybe I, um, one day I'll get around to doing it. I prefer Quake. Quake's my baby, but um, at the same time, I wouldn't know what I would say in terms of comparing Quake and Doom, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Rags, do your owners leave Breath of the Wild on for you whenever they go out? You're like a suppository of RLM. Oh, it's not Breath of the Wild, it's Best of the Worst. <laughs> um, you're a suppository of RLM I quotes. I was about to say. I, 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 um, I watch them a lot, and so I do soak up some of them. Um, the, a lot of what they said. The, I probably listen to them more than anyone else. They got a big backlog of content, and it's very long. You could, it's just like hour long videos that you can put on and just listen to while I'm just laying down or resting or eating something or making dinner. So I soak it up, soak up a lot of it, and it will naturally come out here and there. But yeah, I've learned a lot from them. And I really, 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 really like it. Ring, can you see I'm doing like the best thing in Mario Sunshine to be able to do as a sport? Hi. The sport this is. I do see that you're doing the thing that ever, ever. Oh, loud noises. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do in that game. Just the movement mechanics really. It wasn't until Odyssey that they got up to this level, and then some. Rags, you taught me to open my door to criticism and to leave it open while I poo. No. No. That's not what I taught you. It's not what I taught you. Death of the author. Jay taught me about Coom, Fringy to say no, and to the Gimpy and Mola to be long. No. Do the Gimpy? Gimpy? But be long. We'll oh, go the, to Gimpy, the Gimpy, Gimpy plant. Gimpy. Oh. The Gimpy Gimpy plant that makes you really yeah. hate living or something. I thought they were like referring to metal as the Gimpy or something, and I was like, damn. The Gimpy. Oh, no. I think no to the Gimpy are meant to be read as part of the same sentence. Ah. Or the same statement. That makes sense. Uh Happy third anniversary, guys. Was always wondering, is there any deleted scenes you wish were in the final product? Easy, TLJ. They had a scene of Luke mourning <laughs> Han Solo and they yeah. fucking cut it. I don't... Uh, to this day, it... Baffles me. Baffles the mind. What do you do? What? Yeah. Holy. Just reminding me of that. It's like, what? A, what kind? Of, why would you make that decision? I'm sorry. Why? Because we. Because I, I'll tell you why. It's because we already know that Luke would mourn his death, so we don't need to see it. Oh yeah. All right. That's a top level fucking. That's like. I know that when Vader says, I want to see your face in, in Return of the Jedi, and the second he takes the helmet off, it just cuts. It's like, yeah, we know. We know what happens next. Come on. Like, oh. but, uh, that is pretty funny to me, right? Like, that, um, that... Well, I mean, we knew that Luke would fight Vader and, and lose, so we don't need to see it. We can just skip to him hanging off of the antenna at the bottom <laughs> of Cloud City. We don't need to see all that in-between stuff. It's not like that's what we're there for. Uh, just to reply, so I've been watching. Uh, when we do more YouTube videos, I've been watching you for four years. Well, first off, thanks for watching me for four years. Thank you so much. Um, but I released a video just uh, about a week ago, uh, and I will have more to come. And I was gonna put dogfight stuff out, but with the stream today, that, that, that's what I'm doing instead. But that's all right. Um, uh, so there you go. Check that. But also, what I was gonna say is, if I was gonna remake Return of the Jedi, right? I think it might be interesting for at the end where Luke is dragging an injured, a mortally wounded Vader to a shuttle to try and, you know, get him out. I think it would be interesting if they do the the angle to where when he takes off the helmet and everything, you don't see Vader's face. You see Luke in the back of Vader's mask, but you don't actually see Vader's face. It's just sort of left sort of to the imagination and Luke, you can see his expression uh, and you can hear Vader's voice, perhaps. That might be interesting. That would be something to consider. I, I mean, plan to say that I do like that. I, I, it feels to me almost like I don't imagine Darth Vader as having a face, kind of in the same way that I don't imagine Master Chief as having a face. Yeah. I don't know that I want to ever see what he looks like. That's not That's what? not something I'm interested in. I, I like uh, having people with no face sometimes. I, I like what I do like what Lucas did with that and the I, I like it but I think if I was gonna do it I would do the where you don't actually you don't ever actually see Vader's face 
I like seeing him that, smile. Yeah, you, and you can... I do like... I Well, that's the thing. There's there's things to get out of both yeah, of them. Yeah, that's, that's I, the I like thing, that yeah. too. That's the tough part about when, you, when you're working really well in terms of the story, choosing between the different options that you have that are great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, obviously the actor did a good job. Mm. Yeah, some some of the best shit in Return of the Jedi is going to be between those two. Yep. Um, EFAP One remake, do it. Oh my God, they will remake EFAP One at some point. They're going to cast a whole bunch of new characters. Rags will be a woman. It's going to happen. They'll they'll die down, dial down the, the language. Disney will have bought the IP at that point. Oh, another thing. Someone's bringing up a good point. You don't see Vader's actual face, but when you see him as a Force ghost, you do see his face, and it's like a, a, a normal person's face, so it almost implies that whatever he was underneath there wasn't even, like, almost recognizably human, but his, his Force version is him as he sort of really was, right? Um... So that would be interesting. It almost plays off the, oh, if that's what he looks like, oh, man, I wonder what was really underneath that mask if, you know, that they're willing to show me this face as his real face, but not his like, fucked up face. That's sure. I, I still think it is powerful to see the super healthy, normal Jedi man after having seen him at the end of his rope or the... Yeah, yeah. The haggard, sort of scarred burnt face as well and um i think that was a thing right he has eyebrows in the original and then the updated remastered one he took them away because they would have been burnt off like singed that makes sense. yeah yeah that makes, um, sense. yeah that makes sense i'm okay with that change makes sense to me it just makes me interested in the whole like because you clearly like you wouldn't do that unless you cared about cause and effect to a certain degree right it's just like so what about all the other stuff george yeah so yeah <laughs> like, what about all the stuff that he did? But it, this is actually a, a this is actually a form of CGIing the hair off someone's face that I approve of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. They should have let Superman keep his fucking mustache. It would have been great. You can argue that he just wanted to let it grow out. Do you think that would have caused an argument among Superman fans as to whether or not he should be able to grow hair? I don't see why he wouldn't be able to grow hair. What What do you think the argument would be against it? Like, it couldn't it break through the skin, or...? Well, the thing is, I'm pretty sure he grows hair in, like, one of the animated ones. Head? That... Oh, no, I meant, like, beard hair, but, um... I Can don't they know. cut his hair? It would just Does be... he have super Krypton he hair? He has to laser even... with his laser eyes. Because it's strong hair. How could he hit himself? Does he have to shoot all the way around the Earth and have it hit the... He shoots it into, like, a special like in mirror. A mirror. Oh, are mirrors do do mirrors stop his laser? Oh, I guess they're different. Special mirror. Well, if he if he does a super maybe? light laser, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Got to balance right. it, you know. Not strong enough that it hurts the mirror, but strong enough that it can get rid of his hair. Okay. Meme clarified this in one of your videos, Mola. I am I am not making the argument. I'm saying that there's probably going to be people out there who be like, what? That. Clock shouldn't be able to grow a mustache. <laughs> It's not the clock I know. And I would be <laughs> amused by that. Oh man, you can't get more water from the little watery fall thing here. Bad game. Um I would I wouldn't have mind seeing Superman with just like a a really good looking like beard. A nice short, well trimmed beard. I think that would look it really looks good on the actor. Like, he looked great in Mission Impossible Fallout. He'll save it for when he goes dark. Again. Oh, yeah, dark, yeah. The dark beard. The dark beard. Schlooper man. Um, boop, 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 boop. Won't people just screenshot the paid content? I mean, to a degree, you can yeah, say that's about all of it, though. Like, I know it'll be easier, but, everything. like, yeah. you can copy and links to private links and it things. It just seems like, it seems like just mega easy with this, you know? Yeah. Like, you could literally start an account that reposts everything that person posts in private. It's totally gonna happen. And then they'll be like, stop that. And be like, no. This is my calling. 
Hi, Fringy. What's the koala smell like? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Um, they smell like mammals. Hmm. Well, th like the wild mammal. I imagine it smells the same as like a possum would smell. Alright. Hi, Rags. I'm giving your plushie to my little Hi sister. There. Long man will. Oh, that's great! Long man will watch over my desk slash gaming station. That I shall. Adorbs. That's what that is. Um, I think my favorite Eternal stage is Arc Complex. I don't know that one. I'm afraid. I can't. I can't remember them by name. I'd have to see them again. Honestly, I will finish it eventually. But there's just other games I'd rather finish that I think are just better. Uh, getting into making. I need to finish. It's probably Mankind Divided. Is honestly, it, it's just been on my list for so long, and I, I liked yep. Human Revolution so much that I, I just need to do yep. Mankind Divided. You absolutely should. And if you need further convincing, I made a video like a year ago. No, no that was well over a year ago. I'm an idiot. That I was, was about to say, no, you ago. didn't. <laughs> no, that was more than three. That was, uh, that was four years ago, actually. That was a year after it came out. God damn. Out time has flown. Yeah. I remember that is that's a that's a video that's frustrating some to me a bit because it's like I do think that it, that the video makes a lot of good points, but a, I make a pretty stupid point early on that like I know that certain people have fixated on, which makes sense because it was a stupid point. It's like God damn it! Like if if I could just go back and edit out that point because I don't even agree with it anymore. Um, what was it? It was along the lines of, I'm not sure why you would set this game in Prague. Like, that just feels weird to me as a choice. But I tried to justify it, and now I'm just like, no, that was that was actually unique. That was um, that was an interesting place to set it. And um, Prague is geopolitically significant enough that it makes sense that there would be things going on there that matter, especially in the rest of Europe. So, yeah. That was a long-winded way of me saying that you should watch that video, but feel free to discount that point because I don't even I don't agree with it. Uh, I'm getting into making Doom levels with Doom Builder. So even know that was a thing. Oh, Sweet. Boy. Is that for the original game or is that for like 2016 and stuff? Um, um, I don't know. I think the new games have one of those. Like snap mode thingies or whatever. I don't know what they're they're called proper, but mm -hmm. um, I think they have something where it's like a Doom creator. Um, these two characters are a couple in the Buffy comics. Cringe, yeah, super cringe. It is cringe. I hate it. That's it's not canon. No. In my own mind. No. Uh, seems. SK's take that Luke was assassinated in Return of the Jedi? <laughs> I've seen his... Well, he, he fucking... I don't care. ...likes Terriers. I don't it, care what he has. <laughs> oh my god, that, Rags. Should we... Because we, we finished Terriers now, so... Oh, like, you did? This, How did you do it, man? Yeah, so... So, basically, yeah, the, the, the gist of that is it's terrible. Um, it's, it's really bad. I don't like to roll this out very much. It's one of the worst shows I've seen. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. No, um, would I? One of the worst I don't, you've I don't, seen. One of the worst I've seen. I would recommend. Um, you know, and talk about because I like Barry. I'd recommend. No, I don't like Barry. <laughs> I would recommend Barry. I think a lot of people would get something out of that show. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. I think it's a show that has good scenes in it, some great scenes in it, and potential. I don't see that in Terriers. No, I've seen, especially if you put me and Fringy together, we've seen a lot of shows. We're, we're talking yes. an unholy amount, potentially. And if there were percentiles, I mean, this one's easily in the bottom 20%. Um, yeah, I would uh, I would much sooner recommend, if you want a procedural, just watch Law & Order. You'll get a lot more out of Law & Order, like from the procedural aspects. Terrier's EFAP breakdown went. I do not want to see that again. No, no, I'm not watching it again. No. Um, I think, I don't think we've talked about it on like any streams, have we? The, the Mexico thing. I talked about it on my. So Mexico. So this. So for those who don't know, like Terrier's <laughs> is a is a procedural show. So it's about two private detectives who are unlicensed and admit this under oath while being 
involved in a very significant <laughs> Investigate case. as part but of anyway, a fucking murder case. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in any case, so... So, just keep that in mind, that this is a procedural show. Like, law, and just all of that is, is a relevant part of it. So... This... One of the main characters is called Brit, and he, he has a friend who's, like, used to do crimes and stuff. And they decide... They they get they get abducted and get taken across the border at San Diego. So they go to Tijuana, um, and they are tasked with helping this guy's old criminal buddies basically steal some evidence from lockup. So all the crimes that are committed in this episode. So first of all, uh, they get themselves sent to prisons. They got that crime to deal with. But then they assault a police officer, break out of prison, steal evidence from lockup to give to like a cartel, and then he illegally flees back into America. Like, okay, so... They've got all his details. They know <laughs> the he did all these things. They've got all of his details. They know who he is. They know where he lives. Um, it's over. So first of all, you can't just get into the boot of somebody's car and just get into America from Mexico. Like, they're going to check the boot of the car. It doesn't matter that there's a cop with you. They're going to check the car. And even if we assume that being with a detective is going to help you get back into America, even though police and border patrol are, like, totally different entities, as soon as you get back to America, you're just going to be extradited to Mexico for all the crimes you committed there. Yeah, if you've it's actually impeded done. the case against a cartel, they're going to be fucking pissed at you. You're and you assaulted you're a police officer. And assaulting, assaulting a police officer, yeah, police breaking officer out of their prison. Their friends. Uh, yeah, breaking out. The amount of crime... And there is a clear evidence trail for all of this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we have multiple issues throughout the show. The number one thing is that the protagonists are just really bad people. They are not ethically dubious. They do a lot of evil things, and they do it just to make money. That's their goal. Oh, can we talk about the, their interest. the one of the best examples in the whole fucking show of that? Oh, go for it. So, so oh my god, it's so bad. So, like, Brit... <laughs> is a guy just doing his thing and his girlfriend oh man you know what a great girlfriend i can't wait <laughs> to just settle down with you maybe get a maybe oh. you know i'll get a dog maybe we can have a kid maybe we get married you know and this girl she seems she seems a-okay she seems fine pretty normal as a character so she's doing some uni stuff some college stuff and um you know after a night of going out doing some drinking she she wakes up the following morning and oh no she slept with the professor oh yeah uh oh, oh that's, i know that is that stands in stark opposition to the concept you love somebody no well you know she was drunk right that's probably <laughs> the reason rags she was drunk she was uh, drunk oh, you no. expect maybe that the show is going to be like i made a huge fucking mistake i got drunk and i'm kind of i feel awful because we were just about to start our life that might be the drama but no she says, you know, I just wasn't ready to get married. That's the reason. <laughs> well, how well, well, it was lucky for you, this that, means we're not getting was, married, so... Well, but it was even worse than that. It was that you were not ready to have, like, get married and have kids, therefore I cheated on you. <laughs> like, dude... <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, no. my, my favorite part is this was well, this was not introduced. I, I'm guessing you're about to mention the that. other the it's thing like, I'm actually getting to. You know what it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Also, yeah. So you'd be understandably angry about that. You might even say, you know what, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are done. We're no longer together. That's that's option one. You know, you could. There's other options. You might be like, you know, what, I want to find this guy. And like, what's what's the what's the hippie hap here? Did you know if you guys like fallen in love, or does he know that I exist? Like, what what's the idea? So, you know, you you might have, and you mean maybe you have theories. Maybe you've seen her hanging out with different people, and you're like, maybe it's this guy, or maybe it's this this guy. I don't know. So Brit gets, uh, I think he gets drunk, right? Um, because that's yeah. that's what good writers do when they need to make an excuse for a character to do anything. Uh, so he's drunk, him drunk. Yep, and he goes good. up to this guy that he knows that his girl's been hanging out with. And he's like, hey, did you, did you do the thing with my wife? And then he's like, huh? And then Brit proceeds to beat this man almost to death. Um, wrong dude. Just FYI. And, uh, and the- It doesn't matter in any and, case, and, 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 yeah. Oh, it's just, it's just good to know for the audience, oh, I suppose. Fuck me. That so, sounds like a- you can't- so, even if it was the right guy, you can't beat this shit out exactly. of somebody. <laughs> Exactly. It's terrible. There's so many tears. It's like tier oh. one of he did it and he did it knowingly and he hates me. It's like you still can't beat him to death. It's like, okay. 
But this guy didn't know, as far as you know, that you were involved. Is just doing his fucking human rights. Just being like, hey, girl, I like you. Do you like me? Let's do stuff. Which is totally allowed. Even if they're, they're entangled with someone else. You could say it's bad etiquette, but I mean, we're talking about love here. It gets complicated. Then, of course, it's not even the guy who did it. It's just a Randy who's <laughs> connected, sure, but like, he's just like, oh, God. And like, this guy is beaten to fuck. And of course, he's pressing charges. Thank fuck the show managed to pull through on that. And our wonderful main character is like, Oh man, I'm probably gonna go to prison for like a whole year. As you should, yeah. A year. <laughs> a whole year. A year. For year. You're lucky. Man. You are so lucky that you're only getting a year. That's more than you. That's less than you deserve. He doesn't even have any remorse for the fact that he did it. The show isn't so aware that he's done anything. Monster. It's like Black Widow. They, they have no idea. Yeah. Um, and so just monster. And his friend is like, Hey, how about we just go to Mexico. <laughs> like... Yeah, like, so, so, yeah, the gist is, right at the end, he's driving him to prison, it's like, 25th hour, except terrible, instead of good. Um, and it's like, hey, I could take you to prison for a year, and then we'll get back out and get up, back up to stuff, or, we could go to Mexico. Again, once you get to the border, oh, hey, you're in trouble in Mexico, also, you're in trouble in America, oh, and you're, you're taking him to a different country. huh? You're both going to jail. Yep. Um, so that, so in, in my head, because I hate these guys, the canonical ending is they were so stupid that they went to Mexico, got arrested, and got sent to jail for the rest of their lives. And then Hank was... For all of the crimes they committed throughout <laughs> the, whole, the whole And season. they were definitely <laughs> separated. We're putting yes, different prisons. One of them is in America, one of them has gone to Mexico. Yeah. And that's it. They're, they're in forever. Awful um, people, terrible yeah, plotting, that's... complete disregard for law and order, just an ab utter disregard for how the law functions or how police operate. It's awful. Yeah, it's not misrepresenting a scene, not forgetting context, both of which has totally not been done, don't you worry about it. We just finished this show, I don't even... <laughs> like, it's... And I don't know how you could defend that. I really don't know how you could defend that. How can we talk about anything at that point? Like, we talked about that in the same way that we would talk about basically anything. That we're trying to analyze. Um, yeah. Uh, they could be bad people. The show is totally unaware of them being bad people, unfortunately. No. Joe um, thinks they're good people. Um, and then, of course, there's Joe thinks the level of plot holes in this ahead. fucking thing. In relation to the yes, law. Yes, many, many, many plot holes. Like, just... Like... It, there is so much evidence that connects these two to, like, all of these these crimes that they've committed and that they did mostly for money and, for, for whatever reason, it's just never followed through on. Like, times when they would have been on camera and when if you ask the people who were in the building, hey, did you see these two people here? It's like, oh, yeah, no, they were here. They they said that they were, like, fucking phone security. Where the fuck they were? It's just, like, throughout the whole show, is the main character meant to be deplorable? You'd hope so, but no. no. Um, no the most the show will do a, is be like, oh man, these guys, heart of gold, but they do some, they do some dubious yes. things, and it's like, nope, they're just the fucking tone, evil. The tone of the show is that though their methods may be crude, they are good people with good goals. That's, that's what the show is going for. But they're not even anti-heroes. Like, I wouldn't, I would consider them to be villains. And all of the crimes that they commit, all of it. It's like, well, what is this for? Like, what are we gonna? What are we putting an end to? What the, the the main overarching plot of the thing that they're trying to put a stop to is some property developers building an airport in Ocean Beach, San Diego. Like, I don't know what I meant to do with that. In terms of, like, considering that these guys killed freaking Ted. Like, he ran into a car, and instead of taking him to the hospital, they let him die of internal bleeding. It's like. <laughs> The worst, the other guys, they, they do some duplicitous things to try and build a parking lot, like a freaking airport in, in Ocean Beach, San Diego. This is the thing, man. You only need to see. To you need to see the one episode to be like, okay, <laughs> this is this is. Uh, yeah, and just be like, done, done, done. After done. they tamper with evidence, frame a man for murder who they don't know committed the crime, fucking. Impersonate a detective. Yeah. Uh, Aiden, yeah. Aiden, Aiden Abet, a wanted suspect. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, frame a man for murder when you don't actually know that he did it. <laughs> it was that one right at the it's end. It's like, seriously, yeah. it's, it's just bottom tier TV. 
Um, it's yeah. And, and I mean, you should just name the crimes like, what, they the... didn't commit. It'll be shorter list. <laughs> yeah, this by point. the end of the season, yeah. But, but the the big thing as well, though, is like even if you were to put all of that to one side, which would be putting aside a lot, what is it in this show that is particularly valuable when it comes to character writing? I d I'm not sure. I don't I don't I don't know what it would be compared to like in Breaking Bad. You can get some great stuff in terms of Walt and Jesse, and um, and I I can't I can't believe I'm spacing, uh. The v villain, <laughs> I'm totally blanking. Gus, like and and uh, and Mike, like you got all these great characters that are going on these really cool arcs and they're super interesting. But I don't I don't feel that way about these characters at all. There's nothing particularly interesting about them. So it's like, well, what what is it that makes this show amazing? I mean, I'd be surprised that yeah. I like it ain't getting above. A three. <laughs> you fucking struggle. A two, a, at, at best, a three, but I'm leaning towards a two. Um, Batwoman? Yeah, yeah, well, I'd rather watch Batwoman. That's fun and entertaining. Yeah, and you, at least you get Jacob. That's yeah, true. well, yeah, and, and you occasionally get, like, a good scene in, in Batwoman. Very, 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 very occasionally. Oh, well, yeah, like, but two. Still. Like, one per season. There was that one scene we liked in Terriers where a character finally called a character out for being wife. a piece of shit. That was nice. Yeah. Alright, that, that was nice, yeah. We really got that the but one after time. He had been, after he stole that guy's wallet to use his uh, credit card to frame, like, as though he was yeah. fighting prostitutes when he was going to get married. Man, what, they, a, what a great guy our protagonist is. They really make it hard to f get invested in these people when they keep doing heinous shit. Steal a, a man's fucking cards when he's about to get married and charge a bunch of hookers to it. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's not funny, man. That's what I mean. It's like all for self-interest. Usually when you've got like people who are bad people, like protagonists in Grand Theft Auto, you try to give them like an element that makes them interesting or that there's something about them that's worthwhile. Well, like, Nico and CJ are, like, loyal to their family. That's that's an important one. It's like, that yeah. helps a long way, especially when the villains are usually totally spun, like, treacherous snakes who will betray anybody, including people who help them. It's like, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that makes it easier to root for them, even though they're all bad people. And of course, the tone of those games is not, hey, these guys are good people. Like, the tone is very much, yeah, these are bad people, but in Terriers, it's like, no, it's not that at all. It's nowhere near Batwoman levels. Yes, it is. Maybe they mean Batwoman's better. It's like, well, maybe. Oh, well, yeah, in that <laughs> case, there's, again, Batwoman is entertaining. I mean, the show is mainly about the lore, and it fucks all of that up. Batwoman jumps between all kinds of things. Yeah. And, like, there, there Batwoman are times of Batwoman... To have something to say as well about... You know, the world. Well, yeah, we've even appreciated but, uh, sometimes Batwoman will have, like, a thematic throughline in an episode about something. Yeah. Like, what Executed you? not great most of the time, but occasionally there's, like, something there. Something to draw <laughs> out of the mire, the bog. I mean, I'm kind of like, Batwoman is awful, but, like... <laughs> I mean, I mean so is Terra, so... <laughs> yeah. It's entertaining, yeah. <laughs> That is that T S T W G raid? Is that that Star Wars Guild? Or am I? That Star. No that wait. Star... Are there raids on uh, YouTube? Uh, no, I don't think there's a mechanic for it. There are on could... Twitch. Yeah, it's not a mechanic. It's all organic. Ew. Yeah, I meant like the letters moved around wrong, or it's just I don't know. Hmm. I suppose that there's. I can't think of anything else I care to talk about when it comes to terrors. I'll be happy to never have to think about it. Yeah, um, it was, it was a rough watch, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and I'm pretty sure if we were to rewatch it, it would get worse, because you have to keep in mind everything that happens in future and past to, like, how it all follows for the lore and stuff. Oh, dude, the, um, mm -hmm. the radiation thing, so... Oh, the right, yeah, oh. So, like... Our characters find out that the the bad guys might be trying to hide the fact that there's a high radiation levels to the point where no one would be around in this particular area. They find this out because they are the ex-wife of the main character is an architect slash person familiar with with like these particular things. She sees the paper by chance and she's like, "Bruh, this is like super bad." 
It's like radiation and stuff. It's like, oh my god. And so. Very lucky that she has that level of knowledge, but you know, absolutely. Well, um, so he, he knows about it too. Yeah, and and, and so you're like, okay, and so they they get it out there. It's like a payoff for the episode that they get that to be public, and no one's allowed near the, the place anymore. It's like, huh. I mean, freaking kind of just accepted that on, on good faith. We're just like, I guess they did all they needed to do to prove it, and woohoo, we did it. Okay. But then they have this, like, twist where the main guy's sister <laughs> notices that it's all bullshit. She reads it and she's like, nah, these levels are actually this, and this is all, this is all wrong. And we were like, what? I wonder if you fellas in chat can notice, like, what's wrong here with this. Something doesn't make sense. Yeah, so, first thought was like why would a random girl who's friend uh, who's the sister of our protagonist know this better than the people would who have had to have verified it for the fucking government why yeah people who and then this field. turns out there's no radiation there and so we were like wait a minute you didn't check you didn't send anybody with the proper like, equipment you didn't do another report you what didn't the do it you, again? Just, you just found this report and we're like it's good enough <laughs> no one's allowed there anymore it's like what and then of course Third, if this is something that she could deduce based on the publicly available information, how would she be the only person who noticed that? Like, she notices that the chemicals do not produce this result. That That's just not how it works. You tell me she's the only person on Earth who knows this? I don't Somebody understand how they know. wouldn't have specialists to check the fucking thing. And then yeah, why would she know more than this them? This is just their life, is to check these things and know. And that's like major for pushing everything forward again. I mean, the the show is full of these, like the big events yeah. that just don't make any sense. It is the most important, like it is the central arc of this season. This one, thankfully, season. Yeah. Remember when they stole the the bonds? Uh, yeah. Remember how they they spend the bonds and then confirm that the bonds are too hot then, to sell. That was my favorite part. We can't use- we can't spend them. Wait, no, yeah, we can. Uh, wait, we can- we can spend them. Wait, no, we can't. It's like... <laughs> Remember how they needed- <laughs> the protagonist needed a big loan, and he just happens- to, the fucking CEO needs a job from a PI, happens to overhear he that he needs a loan. Like, and then, then the dude kills himself while Hank is in the room, and, and he then fucking Hank forges, forges a signature. Guy's signature to get a loan. <laughs> what, if, what? Like... What are we doing? Low, like, constant crazy levels of luck, um, just outright holes, and then two main characters that I find fucking deplorably annoying to watch. Yeah. Awful. So there you go. <laughs> if anyone's so, yeah, curious Terry about is, thoughts on Terry, would not recommend. Would not recommend, no. I would not, no. I don't think that anybody's gonna get anything out of it. Um... Where are we? Doom Milner, do do do. I think that came from SK saying that Luke was assassinated in Return of the Jedi, which, yeah, I've not heard yes. the argument for that. Um, it's gonna be a tough again, one. It, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not sure what that. It's not really worth much. I, like, I, I, don't, I don't feel like there's the, the, the most important scene in, like, the whole series that, like, everybody just missed how Luke wouldn't do this. Like, that feels like a big ol' nah. I'm not saying that it's the case, but maybe if, I don't know, people who maybe try and brand themselves on the idea of having hot takes and I'm the one who discovered this and I'm the one who really showed the world what the truth is. I don't know. Maybe if you're not good enough to justify that title you've given yourself, it will... I don't know. It's weird to go for the scene that people, like, quintessentially reference as, like, Luke Skywalker's character-defining scene as the one that assassinates him. That is an interesting yeah. fucking journey to take, but hey. Again, not heard the argument, but then again, no, I've not heard the argument for a lot of things. Um, look at Meme Repository's latest tweet. I can't do that. I'm streaming right now. Are you talking about blowholes and corks? Is that what we're doing? Uh, 
I recently rewatched all the Transformers movies. Are there any you you think are good, decent, or at least not utter garbage? I don't think Bay is a bad director besides his humor and explosions. Isn't that mainly what he does? I, <laughs> I would say one is probably going to be the best one, but I would imagine that if we watched it, it's not going to stand up well. Yeah, you're, it's probably the best, but yeah. Uh, yeah. As for Bay, I think he's a fine director in terms of you can you always get exactly what's going on. It's just his storytelling is a bit, you know. It's, it's, yeah, the priorities bit... just do not align in terms of what I want versus what he's interested in telling. <laughs> is Eve have to nine? Uh, I feel like that. Um. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say I think that every frame of painting uh, video on Michael Bay is super interesting on this topic. Like, what is it that Michael Bay actually does? What's he good at? What does he think good filmmaking is? Super interesting. Is he fab denying that there was a massive grave? Because the definition of massive is big. That's a fact. Oh, Are you denying damn. that fact? Also high Rex. Shit. Hello, hello. Uh, you long men see the newest what if? Seems like the least differently abled episode so far. That's what people are saying. Apparently, is it no. Doctor Strange one they're saying that about? Oh, wait, yes. is, that, what's that? That's, is that number three? That. Four. That's number four. Three was the Avengers all get killed by. Oh, the right. Team. Yeah, I've heard good things about the third. The fourth one, I'm hearing pretty good things so far as well, so who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about a Clarkson Kent? What would he, what would he be like? Jeremy like, Clarkson Kent. Jeremy Clarkson the Superman. I feel like that's a good choice. I wish he was Superman so he can fucking last forever. Yeah. Make everything. Just just all of the things. I need to keep watching Clarkson's farm. I do, I do like that show. Pretty sweet. Uh, if you decide to do a Soka series for EFAP miniseries next year, will you try watch some of the Clone Wars finally? I'm not interested in doing a Soka, really. Um... I don't know if you guys are. Um, me either. No, I'm not. The only worry I have is that uh, it's going to be like the MCU. I need to see it to understand when she teams up with... Because apparently the plan is to team them all up in a big series. They're literally doing like the fucking Defenders shit, in but with Star show. Wars. Because uh, we'll have Ahsoka, <laughs> Boba Fett... Makes sense with all the fucking money that the MCU is just printing. Yeah, yeah. I can see why they'd say, yeah, let's do that with Star Wars. It's, yeah, it's gonna be one of those things. So maybe, maybe I'll watch Ahsoka, but I doubt we'll do coverage of it, like, beyond telling people that we thought it was good or bad. I have a feeling I can bet on what it's gonna be. Um, but, you know, It's gonna knows? be shite! Fuck, Mary kill, Kuoka, Red Panda, Fennec Fox, also High Rag Daddy. Who's, who's Kuoka? I'm assuming all these are Star Wars Quaker. characters, because Fe isn't... Quaker. Fennec Fox is- Fennec's the wait. name of the sniper, right? From Boba Fett? The- sorry, Mandalorian show also Wait, in... wait, Fennec Fox? Oh, is that the- are these Zootopia characters? I haven't seen Zootopia, but I've seen all the porn. Is there- no, I, the I guess that's- Zootopia is Nick Wild. the fox in that- Oh, is no, the- Nick Wild, so I The know. other fox, the little one. The little fox. I have no idea. The little, um, the little right. one. Yeah, I don't know about that, then. Alright, so what are the names again? Uh, Ku, Ku, Kuoka, Q, uh, Q U O K K A. That's a quokka. Quokka. That's an animal. Oh. And then uh, what's the next one? Oh, so so the next These one is Fennec, and the other is. Oh, I thought this was. I like did a... not know that was an animal. Red Panda and Fennec Fox. I didn't realize Fennec Fox was a fox. I did, I thought it was like the name of someone. So what is the so what's the Quokka's... question? I suppose. Which one would you want to fuck, marry, kill? Oh, I, well, I wouldn't... Cause all three none because they're animals? Yeah. If we're talking oh, about, yeah, like, if they were... That. Yeah, if, if they were... I don't know, I guess if I... I don't, I don't know. If they were sentient and human-sized, I don't know. I don't know how to qualify. If they were furries, which one would I fuck, marry, kill? I don't know. Um... Uh... Hmm... Quokkas are basically, they smile all the time. <laughs> they are, um... That's, that's just what they are. They are one of the cutest animals. You're gonna want to marry they that one, very man. They are cute. They are shockingly cute. Um... 
I might, um... I marry the Quokka, I think. Yeah, I think I would... I think Phoenix are a bit too high energy to put up with all the time. The way they're zooming around, and I think they're not... turn. Well, I, I think they're loud, and... Um... I think they're, like, really just always zipping around. Stuff like that, so... I might... I might kill the Fennec Mare... Well, no, I might... Hmm. Well, no, that means I would fuck the Fennec. Take use of all that super high energy, right? I would m marry the Quokka and kill the Red Panda. There you go. I think I'd... I think, uh, I think I'd switch out the Panda and the, the Fox. Mm. I abstain. I, I'm not answering fuck, marry, kill on animals. That's, uh... Well, if, if they were, like, oh, sapient thinking, if they were in a version that was... I am, I am, like, yeah, <laughs> like, actually, yeah, that's, uh, that's, I think, I, I think I'll retroactively abstain. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I put forth my uh, initial objection Basically, and the necessary prerequisites yes. in which I would participate well, in the but, quest. Well, the thing is, the way I was working with it in my head was, do you want to hang out with this animal for a long time, a short time, or not at all? That was kind of the logic in my head. Yeah, ask us like, those. I mean, that's very hard. That's a good replacement. There you go. Yeah. Ask us those in future for animals. Long time, short time, no, uh, no, get rid of it. <laughs> in that case, I'd want to hang out with a red panda a lot. They're adorable, right? Or are they, are they not friendly? Dude, I don't know. Dude, fuckers, though. Fuckers, like... They're always smiling. Maybe I'll hang out with the Quokka for a bit, because I don't know, I, I want a, a range Maybe of emotions, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Maybe um, if, um... Yeah, like, what, hmm. how do I, if it's always smiling, like, how do I know if it's, like, sad? Or how do I want to, what if it really wants to make the smile count? That must be, you know, if you're always smiling. I guess that's a, that's an interesting point to think about. Would you want to hang out with somebody who's always smiling and just always happy? It's like sometimes you want them to get mad. Apparently, red pandas bite. I'm pretty sure all animals bite, but. Oh, yeah? Does a slug? I'm sure a slug does bite in its own weird way. Do you see that video where it consumes water? It just goes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Turns into the weird amorphous blob. Does a worm bite? Oh, a double. Well, how do they metabolize? No, I don't think so. I don't know, but I don't think they bite. I don't think they. I don't think they. They can't bite a human. They just just can't. I don't think they're physically. Well, sure, to... but I mean, there are animals that bite. But you can't tell are biting just because they're. That's just how Chat, it works. How do worms metabolize? Teach us. Well, they like ingest. They they suck up dirt and stuff from their... I guess they just their their mouth hole, whichever ends the front. <laughs> I wonder if it confuses itself. If it if even sometimes it's like which, which side is my front side? It always moves in like a third person <laughs> view. It sees itself that way, and it's like, oh, is the camera upside yeah, down? I don't I'm know. Moving, am I moving forward? What or am I? <laughs> what is life? Whims have when five hearts. Me. Is that true? Maybe they're teeny tiny hearts. Oh, probably. But I just that's interesting. I don't know. That is interesting, actually, yeah. They dig real hard. They have ganglia where the head is. Some whims have teeth and can bite humans. Oh my god. Like a tapeworm. That's another one of the spooky creations that probably shouldn't exist. Yeah. Um. Nefap Civil War debate against South Pole when? Right, I, 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 what, I can. Terriers. I'm for, gonna, for their sake, they don't want that to happen. I disagree with Southpaw on plenty. Just because I disagree with them on whatever doesn't mean there's an automatic debate in the in the wings. Winter Soldier was what you could call, I guess, an exception because I was interested in the fact that they thought Winter Soldier held up and they sort of, kind of use similar standards to us. So I was like, this should be pretty easy to translate, like the problems of it. Like, for example, if we had debated, um, I don't know, there's, there's plenty of people in our spheres if we had debated about Winter Soldier that I think a lot of the stuff we would have said 
would have been waved off as like, oh, fucking, who cares? Who cares if the German AI cares, has no cracked sense, fucking know. AI in the 70s? That is, you know, and we'd be like, oh, I don't know, I think that matters. But, um, yeah, I disagree with Southpaw on a whole bunch of things. And, uh, I, I think that he's gonna be fine in terms of me not liking Terriers. I'm sure he'll be fine. Um, and I, honestly, I do not want to debate Terriers. I just... No, no. I, I have talked to him about it the first two episodes, and like he knows that well, I think it's. Him, yeah. He knows I think it's shit, and I I, I know that it's <laughs> it's not preferable for him, but I'm sure he'll be okay. Um, who recommended Terriers? It wasn't seen on a whim. Well, I mean, if I'm, I'm just going to be completely honest, I I saw more praise for Terriers than I've seen for most things in my life. Like, yeah. And I just uh I don't know, it's just like. We should probably give this a shot then. And like, like honestly, like calling it a masterwork, saying, was it the first five episodes were ten out of tens? Um, <sighs> that the show well, itself the show is, is like, like a, nine. a nine, and then there are there are several ten out of ten episodes, like several, more than one. For how many? The, how many was there really in terms of ten out of ten episodes? <laughs> Rags. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that there was an episode that was even a five. I don't like think I would give that to an five. episode, no. no. Hmm. Um, I've never heard of the show in my life. Okay, yeah, so to be fair, what I'm talking about is from the people who've seen it. I saw a lot of it on Twitter. I think it's because South yeah. Pole might have been retweeting a lot of perspectives on it, and so I saw a lot of them. But like, man, we, we're talking... Like, I was just seeing universal praise from people talking about it. I don't even know that I saw anyone say, like, yeah, Terrors is okay. Just like, masterwork, 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 masterwork. And I was like, all right, Fringy, you're apparently teaming up for some some watch through. I was like, I'll, I can join you guys. It was after the um, uh, the Black Widow video was done and the anniversary yeah. stream. So I was like, you know what? I, I could use watching a TV show and I think that, <laughs> like, I don't know. Dude, it sucks. It really sucks. And it's not even a situation of like, yeah, but I can see why you like it. I can't. <laughs> I would struggle. I don't know. I I don't. I don't know. Aside from like personal reasons, as as opposed to like things that are you know within the the media itself, I because again, I don't think BoJack's good at all. I don't like it, but I totally understand why people like it because I know why I liked it. There's something there that is worthwhile. It's just mired in a lot of you know poor writing and bad comedy. Atler is another one. It's like I can see why people. Like yeah, I know why people like Atler. Seems like it's got a really cool world. Um, yeah. Like this show. <laughs> oh, they said I meant Civil War- uh, Sorry, I misunderstood. I thought they meant like a Civil War debate over the fact that it's Terriers, but they meant a debate over Civil War, which... I- I- I mean... I assume that's what they meant. Yeah. That, like I said, for their sake, they don't want that. <laughs> I mean, I- I, I just- I'm, I'm not- like- like- the debate ones, the Winter Soldier one was super valuable because I don't think many people, if at all, had heard the criticisms we had for, for uh, Winter yeah. Soldier. All the defenses are far from home, to yeah. be honest. Um, as for Civil War, like, I don't know, give me give me time to make a video on Civil War one day. Give me, you know, I've, I've said I'd make it since before EFAP was even a thing, I think. Um, I'll get there one day, and I can talk about why I think that movie is so well written. Uh, in the MCU, and then we'll see. We'll see what the sentiment is looking like. If it's still like, ah, oh, you got everything wrong, super shitty. I mean, I still probably wouldn't. Uh, I don't know about a debate format. It'll, it'll definitely be like one of those. Uh... Totally understandable. Why would they not want that rags? Because they'd get slaughtered publicly, and that's not good for their image. Um. Save one. The Dom's arm from being ripped off. Dotty slash Sarah from torture in one division. Or handsome man being Diana's sex toy. Us, the one division people. I'm gonna go for. Yeah, there's too many of them. The Don is a fucking hero, and he would be upset if I chose him out of the three. Yeah. He'd be like, why would you do that? Also, um, he will probably he will make a full recovery. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, and it was true. a very limited singular event. But there's too many people. I mean, even the handsome man apparently doesn't even know that it happened, which helps in a way. Yeah, um, we never get confirmation that he even, knew, right? 
Yeah, but all the people, there's, there's a lot of physical and emotional trauma for a lot of people. And this is actually, of the three options, this is the clear correct answer. And it's terrifying that they're apparently aware the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just, you've gone so far and yeah. so many people, so yeah, I would save them. Yeah. They're gonna need a lot of therapy, some of them. Yep. Uh, and it's a, just the worst thing. Uh, the show writer for Terriers is Leslie Headland. Isn't she writing an upcoming Star Wars show or movie? Listening to her talk, it's no wonder it's bad. I know, oh boy. I know nothing about any of that. Uh, I'm not familiar with that either. Wouldn't pick it as a point of pride to have been involved in the writing of Terriers. Um, I don't know, it was weird when Doc Strange killed other beings to be more powerful. They also had the Ancient One be wrong about time again, so I'd say 3, 4, 1, 2. Wait, in terms of- oh, I guess episode's best or worst. Uh, which would be 3, 4, 1, 2. Okay. Does Superman have heat vision or laser eyes? I think it's called heat vision, right? I think it's heat vision, yeah. As for mechanically, which should it fall under, I don't even... Like, heat vision, laser eyes, it's like, uh... I guess the idea is, does he fire lasers, or does he... Is it wherever he looks, it gets hot, but he can focus it into a beam? At that point, what is the difference, I guess? Okay. I'm not sure. I don't know, actually. Kill the red panda rags, you're pure evil. I mean, I gotta kill one of them. I mean, you forced him. Where was ER in 150? I'm afraid, uh, I think ER's kind of like... ...lowered his, um, I mean, we've not seen any new videos in a while. I will, I will let him jump onto EFAP the second he wants to. I'm not sure how active he is on the internet right now. I think he still retweets stuff on, um, on Twitter, so there's that. But, uh, yeah, it would have been neat to have him. I would have, I would have talked to him about how much he loves, uh, like, Loki and WandaVision. I'm sure he adores those. I don't even, does anyone know if he's got another video coming now? I, I don't know if he's said anywhere. I'll keep an eye on chat for that one. But, uh, that is actually us having caught up with today's, and we've taken a chunk out of, um, 150s, but 150s will have to oh, be done over a course of time. If you remember, Rags, uh, 100s ones took us 20-something hours. Something like that. That's yeah. A couple, couple EFAPs, couple long EFAPs. So we will get there. I think y'all said he's done. Oh. I hope not, but at the same time, I wouldn't want him to be doing shit that he doesn't want to do. Naturally. Mm -hmm. Spray the beach in front of the lighthouse. That's a good point. I could have gotten a whole other star. But yeah, we'll probably uh, stop here actually, because I actually would like to go to the grocery store. Ah, like gotcha. To sleep. Um. <laughs> I but uh, I mean, well, we did eight hours, and if we continue to do eight hours every Wednesday, I reckon we'll be able to catch up. It's gonna be great. We'll get there right on time, whenever that time Eventually. may be. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is there anything you guys want to mention before we 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 shut shop? No, just uh, consider buying our incredible plushies. Uh, buy the pair if you can. The more support they get, the better it is for us and potential future campaigns. And they are amazing in their own right. Yeah, I would highly recommend it. Um, but other than that, we'll we'll get through the super chats as we can. Thanks everybody for coming around and listening to us talk about all the things that we managed to talk about. Um, thank you, Thunder, for all the moderation you do in general, but also for linking that throughout the stream. It's very helpful. Um, I, I, I forgot to put it in the bloody description. So useless I am. Uh, but I mean, it should be easy for him to find if, if you still didn't know these existed. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I suppose that's a good night from all of us at efap.com. Um, I had a fun one. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And thank you, of course, for the donations. We shall yeah, thanks very much. see you Saturday, Thank I suppose. Absolutely. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.